We are back, ladies and gentlemen, 801 minute after 8 o'clock. Mostly cloudy with a scattered shower today. High of 62, though, possibly uh, might happen. Mainly cloudy with a shower possible. 48 for the low tonight. Then Thursday, partial sun, isolated shower. 58 for the high on Friday. Partly to mostly sunny and 63. Gorgeous weather this weekend, actually. So listen to Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, partly to mostly sunny, a high of 63. Saturday, partly to mostly sunny, a high of 58. Sunday, partly to mostly sunny with a high of 58. Ah, huh? uh, you like yeah. that? Three straight days in a row, man. That's all I got to say. Yeah, Tevin, take that. What are you doing? Don't mess with my camera. Get away oh, from the, me. It's the... yeah, we're looking up your nose. Again. Oh, we're looking up my nose again? Boogers. Three. I opened up the chasm. Are the nasal holes patent? They are patent. I like how we always check this before the show to make everything's working right. Oh, you switch it so, every time. Yeah. I switch nothing. You're like, that. I want to make things difficult. I want attention. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's uh, there, no <gasps> question about that. He fixed it. Look at that. Looking good, Thomas Bernard. You know, one thing I noticed about the fall yeah. when you have to start wearing these jackets. Yeah. In a jacket, I look like I weigh about 40 pounds more than I do. <laughs> What the hell is that? It's, some, it's the windbreaker effect. Yeah, it's the windbreaker those, effect. You're some, right. It's like, what the hell? Some, I'm leaning back. It's like, look at that. Jesus. What? I saw, I watched a video of ours that made me LOL the other day. Of the <laughs> of the morning show? Of your uh, talking about you may or may not have a sense of need for violence when we were asking questions. But you were wearing a windbreaker. And I was like, yeah, he looks twice his normal size. Yeah. Oh, so you said you noticed that? Deal. I do. I look twice as big as I actually am. Like, oh. What the hell? Must be these broad shoes. Must be these. Yeah, no, I must be what it is. Picking up the weights at the. Gym. But I was just—I was leaning back, looking, going. It looks like my gut is sticking out to about here. It's a really nice look, I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where do you want to start? Because there's nothing good to talk Ooh. about. So. <laughs> I was. Uh... <clears throat> what are you gonna do? Oh, one thing I should mention. Yeah. Is that you know I I scroll through and I check a couple of different news sources and all the rest of it, uh, and there's a there people were having a fit on I think it was Newsmax I think that's the name of the channel mm -hmm. that apparently the next Republican debate is going to take place on NBC, and they were having a fit about that because NBC is by far the most liberal network of them all. I mean NBC goes after. The Republicans like there's no tomorrow. So why would they want their debate on NBC? Does that make any sense to you? I yeah, I think so. Like you should you, I would want them to carry the opposite opinion every once in a while. Like I think that makes sense for them to. It's like the Super Bowl, like road. Oh no, no, I'm through. talking about if you were a Republican, why would you want to go on NBC? All they would do is bad mouth you. Yeah? I mean, because it's an opportunity to at least be seen amongst that crowd amongst people that might tune you out like you i think, think that'll I work get, oh no not at all <laughs> but it's i get the idea behind it like hey let's reach out to a market that normally maybe doesn't listen or right us. yes but, but i learned something yesterday from mm -hmm. it which i didn't know before i went really because i didn't notice that nbc had been all that you know way far left and all that stuff mm -hmm. and there's a reason i found out for that uh, I don't watch NBC. I never watch NBC. There are two shows that I've watched on NBC, Poker Face. But you ever see that show? Yeah. Oh, my God. She was terrific. So good. Wasn't she good? Now she's doing commercials for, like, clothing stores or something. Yeah, Old Navy. Old Navy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. Right. I love her. She's What's her name again? I forgot her name. Oh, my God. Natasha. Oh. Is it Le Legero or Leon? Leon. Leon. Natasha Leon. Yeah. She is phenomenal. Yeah, she's great. Really, really good. So I watched that, and I watched the old... Uh, extended cut reruns of the office of course it's the only mm -hmm. thing i watch on nbc i tried i went through all the shows i've never even heard of these shows so the reason i guess i didn't know they were so far left is i don't watch them but i didn't avoid them because of politics i just i don't really have anything on there i'm interested in other than those two shows i guess that makes sense doesn't it yeah yeah i like the peacock logo i love peacock see it? i'm a big peacocker Cock -cock. but I, I i had no idea Every day. I told them to lock the closet door. I told your husband, lock her in. Yeah, they put that broom handle through like, the door. So <laughs> exactly. It's exactly right. But yeah, so I, but you don't notice things like that because I guess you don't pay attention. To, yeah. Well, first, first of all, with streaming, you go to a site like Hulu or yeah. Max mm -hmm. or one of those. So you go, I don't know where those shows come from originally. But I even checked that. And I, I just, I don't know. I, I just... 
There are things I don't watch. It's things I guess I, I guess I don't really have one network that I, maybe Paramount. I might watch Paramount more than any other one. Have you ever maybe. signed into somebody else's like screen, like there's any nope. their streaming service? Nope. So you'll find out pretty quickly that algorithms mean a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Cause yeah. like Justin has his own account and I have my own account. And if I jump on his, his Netflix looks completely different that's than right, mine. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. why you go like, we probably have different peacocks. You know, well, it's all the same programming though. Yeah. I just mean like they show you, you know I mean? It's like, Oh, you like, show you different things. Yeah. Yeah. Now for some reason, cause they used to show live now and it would show all the news programs and all that stuff. It doesn't do that anymore on Hulu. Hmm. It, it just, the, I can't even remember what the hell's on there. It was like, live now and there were three shows i'd never even heard of yeah and they weren't new show it's like that used to be where you'd find everything that was live but they don't do that anymore we have to acknowledge that hulu has the worst infrastructure of any streaming service what do you mean like the use like as far as like the interface like yes. user friendly yes use? Why? What's wrong with it? It's just like you can't find anything. And then they put a lot of like filler stuff to like hide the fact that they don't have a, like always new content. And you're like, mm -hmm. you have to dig. I just don't. I would have to say that. And then Apple TV is secondly the worst. Um, Amazon Prime isn't great. Netflix probably has the best interface. By far. Um, Peacock Cock is probably a close second. But I hate the interface on Hulu. When you jump on there, it's like, hey, listen, we don't have we have we have some really great stuff, but we want to also show you the terrible things we bought 40 years ago. Yeah. And I hate the fact that they don't when you like because Netflix, you pause on a title and it'll show you like the preview. I yeah. hate that Hulu doesn't do it and yeah. it doesn't you can't easily read the yeah. description because it's like half oh. cut off. No, that yeah, is it, is a, it is a mess. And if you want to know more, you click onto it. But then it's like you're watching the show now and here's <laughs> yep. an ad. You're in it. Oh, yeah. The ad you're, comes first. I hope you're ready for the ad. You're yeah. in this. Yeah, see, I don't have any problem like problem like that with Hulu. Oh, okay. I did, but I don't pay a lot of attention to any of that bullshit anyway. Yeah, I could see that. I'm like, okay, I'm, I know what I want to watch. Although, <laughs> the one problem we do have is we watched this new show last night. Where was that again? I right. forgot. Yeah. Yeah, me and Justin do that a lot. So, uh, luckily, there's a search bar everywhere. Who's the controller in your house? Catherine. No I, doubt about it. I am too. How about you? Um, I would say me. Really? I, yeah. How about you, AJ? Um, when Sam, my girlfriend, and I watch st something, it's like a – she'll control it, but then it ends up being like, well, I don't know. It's one of these three, and then I'll just pick. There you go. So There you have it. No, we we watch a lot of it. It's kind of interesting, and maybe it's because we've been together so long, you kind of move toward one another. I think in marriage, you either move toward one another or away from one Ugh. another. I think that does happen. But Catherine and I tend to like the very same things. That's isn't that good. weird? Yeah. It's kind of weird, though, isn't it? Justin learned tennis for me. That's the closest. Like, that was pretty nice. What's like, that got to family? do with television? No, I was what saying the... moving closer. Yeah. Like, I thought that. that... No. Oh, okay. Some I didn't know it had to be sport, about uh... TV. I didn't know the only way you can connect with your significant other and move closer is television. You ever see me play tennis? <laughs> That's why. Okay, I'm just telling you flat out. You don't want to bring up tennis around. I am not... A your, tennis player. Can your ma your like hand hold a racket? I actually broke a racket once. I believe it. I swung a racket and it broke. I believe that. Like Don't. what the? But I how could it break by hitting a ball? It had to have a crack in it already, didn't it? Like yeah. somebody was using it and probably slammed it into the ground. Something and man. You just hit crack. that ball so hard the racket had. No yes, that must there, have yeah. been what it, I was so powerful that. I'm pretty sure that wasn't what it was. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a tennis player. No, I, matter of fact, I've been playing pickleball with Catherine. And I'm not that good at that either. Love pickleball. Oh, she loves pickleball. Yeah. What well, is fun? Because I'm far too aggressive because you're not supposed to charge the net. Well, no, that's where you, I, I don't you, like that. They say if you can't see your, like if you're swinging back and you lose sight peripherally of your hand, you're too swinging too hard. It's more yeah. of a forward motion than a back right. motion and you yep. overswing. And probably hit it in the net or out. But don't you want to harm somebody by hitting him with the ball? I would love to, me and Justin because Justin's terrible. I'm really good. I feel like Catherine's oh. good. I feel like we'd be an even match. <laughs> or me oh, and Catherine just take because the guys husbands on. are bad. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's oh. good. Good, good argument. You want me to lie? You want you, me to lie in front of all of our listeners? Do you grunt when you hit the pickleball like you do in tennis? Oh, please don't. Of, I don't grunt when I play tennis. I hate that so. <laughs> 
It's like really right. not everybody's Maria Sharapova. Yeah, exactly. You know? It's exactly right. I'm out there just praying it lands in. So I do this thing where I always say sit, sit, sit. Like I want the ball to sit mm -hmm. down when I hit it too high. And then I found out everybody thought I was saying shit, shit all the time. So no, I'm not out there grunting. You know who really sucks at pickleball who? is Judd. Yeah, that's true. I had no idea you couldn't be aggressive in pickleball. You can be just not really. You have to be good first. That's the problem. No, no it's it's not. you cannot charge that area right by the net. You can go into the kitchen if it bounces. If it bounces in the kitchen first. Correct. But if you're in the kitchen, if it bounces, it's already past you most likely. No, no, it has to bounce in the kitchen and then you can go in there. Why would you? Why would you just wait for the ball? Because well, like a lot of times it's a shot. short shot. Yeah, yeah a good drop shot. Drop shot. I know things. <laughs> I know things, Tom. You guys suck at this, don't you? My parents are obsessed with pickleball. Are they really? Yeah, they built a pickleball court at their How cabin. would you know what your dad's obsessed with? He hasn't talked to you I in years. Right, my dad. I said my Florida. parents. You said your parents. Your dad would be your parent. You're lying to me. I don't need your respect or love. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, sister. I'll tell you that. No, um. so Judd, do you play pickleball? Oh, no, no. And I haven't played tennis <laughs> and I haven't played tennis since I was since I was a kid. And I swear to God, I think I had a Bjorn Borg racket. So Did it you? was wood. I don't think I've ever held a, a racket beyond what Borg used. Mm, I understand <laughs> that. I, I just Catherine's really. Well, first of all, it's not fair because Catherine and Brittany are both almost six feet tall and, and long and lean. I mean, Catherine. It moves like a goddamn gazelle, for Christ's sake. It's got those long legs. Not fair. No, that's no, it's not. Place. No, it's not. But I, I long ago accepted that um, uh, I am, how can I put this nicely, very limited in what I can do from a sports standpoint. That's why you probably like, like to do sports. You're still hey, living I, the life, man. Exactly. Well, you know what? It is far easier to critique things than to actually have to do things. Well, and a good example of that is there. I don't know if the YMCA is still over there by Southville. There was a YMCA over there. I used to play basketball there. Mm -hmm. And one day I decided I don't ever want to come over here and play basketball again because there was a young African American kid, typical. Sorry. Five foot five, because I asked him who dunked over me That's mortifying. at five foot five. He could dunk a basketball. Yeah. His feet were this far off the ground. That night. Did you go God. hang up your Jersey? And oh say, yeah. I'm, like, I'm done. No, I have a similar story. I didn't, oh, get, dunked, I didn't get dunked on, <laughs> but so I did track and field in high school just because it was like a good way to stay in shape yeah. for football season. And, and, basketball um, season. and so they talked me into high jumping because I'm, the only black kid in my school and you can jump higher than the white kid so i'm like okay cool so we're at, we're at a meet i'm thinking i'm about to win my first meet i'm jumping like six foot two inches right i think i'm having a great day this kid comes up and stands next to me <laughs> and he takes off his warm-up he starts like stretching takes off his warm-ups and he's like uh, hey what are we at right now and i kind of like you know, give him a little smirk like oh six two like yeah i'm about to clear this and win because it's just down to me one other kid <laughs> he kind of looks at it he looks at me and he goes I think I'll start warming up now and takes his stuff off. And I just immediately backed up. I was like, I'm just going to go home and take second place because you are, <laughs> you jumped like six, eight or something crazy. Like, that. Jesus. I was like yeah, I'm out. Like, I can't do that. Oh, I, it's, it was a meeting to have someone do that to you. And you're standing there. Yeah. I got about that far off the ground. Though, so that was good. That's good. Yeah. But to watch somebody do that and you, they're doing it right over your head. It's no. an amazing perspective, <laughs> I will tell you that. It's humbling. Like, yeah. Jesus, kid. Yep. And, of course, had to give me the point. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. He's not going to just dunk on you and not let you know about it. Oh, yeah. man. Point at me, absolutely. Like, but you yeah. know what? There's there's those, um, those sports mo moments in, like, real games or pickup games where I think a lot of us know that's it. Like, yeah. I'm done now. And for oh, me, yeah. it just came, it came as a, as a youth, as a kid, because I was like, like every sport you tried, it, there was always something wh where you said, oh, okay, if that's what you can do, then I'm going to find something else to try and do. That's not <laughs> yeah. one humiliating. And two, um, if you can do that, I'm in big trouble because you're not going to be the only person and there's nothing I can do to stop you. 
God, I have a wonderful, very quick story, if you guys don't mind, about mm. kind of exactly what you saw. My best yeah. friend in life, Andy Fisher, just lost Andy this year, unfortunately. But he was my dearest friend. My Andy, my son, is named after him. And he was good, and I mean really good, at baseball, basketball, and football. He was just a great athlete. And no matter what he did, uh, was not a great golfer for some reason. He was really good at uh, like baseball, basketball, football, that kind of thing. But he was an okay golfer, but not great. But uh, I used to love standing on the sidelines at North High School, watching him play football, because he'd always do these breakaway long runs and all that stuff. And I'm standing. <laughs> Standing on the sidelines, and he scores his like third touchdown of the game. And these two guys standing next to me, cousins of Tevin's, and one of them goes, "Who the hell is that white boy?" And the other guy goes, "It be Fisher." So that was his nickname. Was it be from that point on? <laughs> his name became It Be Fisher. Those guys, awesome. like, son of a bitch, that guy's good. <laughs> Three sports, man. Oh, three sports, sports athlete. Yep, I I would have taken one. <laughs> yeah, I am shoulder to shoulder with you on that one. I would have been a very happy one sport. Hey, I'm really good at one thing. How many times have you sat at dinner with somebody, maybe your wife there and your friend and their wife, or at a gathering, and your wife tries to make you look better in a crowd of a like pretty athletic people? You ever had? Does that ever happen to you? No, because we're both bad at sports and we both accepted it lo long ago. And it, I don't even know she could have sold it. So, no, it's never happened to me. I honest to God, don't think it has. Well, you can't sell it anyway because we're, I wish I could remember the name of the damn restaurant. It was an Italian restaurant. You know where Dentcraft is out there on Highway 12 or 394 or whatever the hell it is out there? There used to be an Italian restaurant there. It's now an, an Indian restaurant, I think. Okay. But we're sitting there, and Kathy's just trying to fit in. Had never met, but the guys we were with were all really good athletes. You know, I played golf with them. They were all better than me, of course. What a shock! But Catherine tries to fit in, and she goes, "Kendall Norbert, who is my best friend." I just talked to Kendall last night, and she leans over. She goes, "Kendall, I don't know if you know this or not, but Tom can bench over three hundred pounds." And he goes. Ooh. <laughs> See, that, yeah, that, just no, we don't need this. Book. We don't need this. Yeah. I got the over me, uh, I got the under me, I got the ooh, who cares? That's great news. It makes it worse. Oh, yeah. It does. There's no question about it. Like, it makes it worse when you're trying to be like, you know, ooh. man, once in high school, I scored two goals in a hockey game. Ooh. ooh well, I scored six. <laughs> That's one thing I do love about competition, though. There are funny sides to competition. Like I said, he got the nickname It Be Fisher because he was so good. So it be. Tim Laudner to this day still refers to him as It Be, which I really like. That's a great nickname. It Be's a great it is. That's, it's a, it Be is a great nickname. Where where speaking of, of that, when it comes to nicknames, where as a society did we go wrong when we decided that shortening up a person's name was like a nickname, you know? Yeah. Like, like that's not a nickname. Like Tom like, instead of Thomas. Yeah. Or, yeah. or like last names. Ho hockey is famous yeah. for it. Yeah, they are. Yep. And they shorten up last names and use them as, you know, the old school real nicknames are, are like it be that's, that's right. creative as hell. No. It be is very creative. Yeah. There aren't any really good modern day nicknames. Mm. Back in the day you would have like, Billy White Shoes Johnson or They're something great. like that. I you love him. Like, he annoyed the shit out of Bud Grant. I love that about him. Remember, he would do that. He had wore white shoes because White yeah. Shoes Johnson and Bud wasn't having any of that on his team. You had to wear all the same shoes. So he would literally go in front of Bud Grant and start doing that the, his dance that he always did. <laughs> yeah. And you could just tell Grant's like, "Get the hell away from me, God!" You could tell it just pissed Grant off. And back then it was, you know, rare. Like, like he was, yeah. he yep. was the one guy basically. Yep. That's very, really white very Johnson. he was a damn good player though, man. He was he fun was. to watch. He was in, was that Houston? What the hell was that? I think it was Houston and Atlanta, maybe. Houston and Atlanta. I'm Definitely. pretty sure he played for a few teams. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right about that. But I loved watching him play. The guy was damn good. No doubt about that. No question. So what do we got to speaking of that, by the way, we're now only a couple of days away from the weekend. Is there anything? My baseball season is over. God hates me. 
I just like to point that out. <laughs> no, did, did he call you and tell you? Hey, Tom, <laughs> God here, God here. I'm never letting the twins win again <laughs> because of you. Just going through my notes, <laughs> meaning to call you. I hate you, and therefore you're a baseball. I hope you enjoyed '91. Wouldn't it be horrible? The one phone call you receive is, Tom, this is God, and it really is God, and I hate you. Goodbye. That would be a horrible phone call. That would not be great. I'd, I would have a hard time leaving the house. If God hated you? Yeah, because I'd be like, well, oh, I don't think this is going to go well today. Yeah. I mean, you might as well at that point just like leave and see see what happens because you're probably screwed either way. Plus, he can get you in your house, too. That's right. true. So like, like it's probably, but here's, here's my thing. Now, if God didn't text you, I don't think that the majority of people would actually get the call. That's true. No, Cause he tried to call you and, and you'd be like, what number is this? I ain't answering it. Even the text. I'd be like new phone. Who dis? Right. No, I think <laughs> I would hope that he would have like a good enough sense of humor where rather than calling you and telling you like, Hey, I made your twins lose. Like he'd wait till he's like right. checking you in at heaven and be like, Hey, you remember uh 2023 when you thought the twins were going to win? You're welcome. It's You're welcome. Not a problem. Checks you in. That was some payback right there. Right. That'd be so great if you actually could, uh, if there, if there is a God, see, I'm not one of those people that goes, there is, or there isn't. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. We'll work it out one way or the other. These people, there absolutely is not, or there absolutely is. How do you know? Yeah, that's a good mm-hmm. point. I just, we don't know, so work with both, right? Yeah. That's a good thing. <laughs> that's a really, I love that. It's work, yes. Work both ways. Work there with is, both. Yeah, I mean, if there is good and if there isn't, you're not going to pay the price anyway, so what the hell's the difference? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Don't understand people, but I do wish if there is a God, if you're listening, God, call in. 952 600 2575. Call in. Catman. Oh, you changed your name. You're not at the queue anymore. God just discovered I left. What do you think? He goes, I thought you were retired. Right. Like, What's the app call? I have to download? I can't wait like Mike Bryant calls in or something now. Oh, yeah. Michael. Yeah. I talked to Michael this morning. Like I said, it was great. I got to, so I'm talking to Michael Bryant. He called, he texted me at 5.30 this morning. Then I called him on the way in about quarter after seven, something like that. And we're talking, having a nice conversation, all the rest of it. And Michael Bryant goes, okay, well, I got to go. I got to hop in the shower and get going to work. And I said, really, your last words have to tell me you're naked right now? Thanks. Yeah. I really appreciate that, Michael. Thanks a lot. Good friend. (laughs) That's a good buddy for you right there. So what do we got now for the winter? Because I, I don't know anything about hockey. I like hockey players. I just don't know anything about hockey. I'm yep. not a basketball fan anymore. I used to be, but I just am not anymore. Uh, it's a whole different game. There's no strategy anymore. It's I'm going to shoot whether you like it or not. That's what basketball is now. Three point three point shots. I like that. Yeah. That's that's the thing. It's not yeah. and yeah. I, and they're probably you know, there's strategy to a certain point, but it's changed so much. And like the shots that the shots that back uh, in the day that your Celtics took are no longer shots that players yeah. are encouraged to, to, uh, to take. So, yeah, the three-point shot has become the overriding, like, if you don't take a three-point shot, you're stupid. Um, I got bad news for you, though. I don't know what, there's, what there is, uh, because unfortunately with the Vikings being two and four and their right. two wins coming, coming against two teams with a combined one win, um, <laughs> it might be a long winter. <laughs> Could be a long winter there, Tommy. What else Could, is going on in the winter? Any other winter sports I should know about? Tevin, do you got anything for him? I, I'm I'm at a loss here. No, um, I'm probably just going to watch a lot of Lifetime movies this this uh, Christmas season. Solid. This winter. Yeah, I don't know. There's nothing really to get excited about, it feels like, in Minnesota. No. I've, I've been no. checking the 2024 draft order for the NFL draft. Than <laughs> we do that a lot. Playoff yeah. pictures. <laughs> so, yeah, we're wow. – uh, it's going to be a long one. You watch Lifetime movies of all the know. things on? I don't know. I'm just I'm scrambling for anything at this point. Okay. But, but no, I'll probably watch a lot of basketball, a lot of Wolves games. Because unlike you, Tom, I try to support the local Absolutely. team. But I love those Lifetime movies. I'm never coming home for Christmas again. Yep. It's like, really? Oh, That's the name of your yeah. movie? And they all have the same plot. Some <laughs> guy do. some guy from they like do. out of town got stranded in a small town for business or came home from the military, met small town girl no, that works at the antique uh, shop. No, you're messing it up. The new, the new algorithm is different. 
it's a woman who's a businesswoman and she will never live in a small town ever again. And one day she runs into her high school crush at a coffee. I can't believe you're serving coffee. That's crazy. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe I own many co coffee conglomerates. I'll never fall in love. Well, maybe you'll fall in love with me. I love Christmas. The end. That's it? Yeah. Wait. Wait, hold on a second here, because I've seen yeah. ones where where it turns out that, that her job is crazy, and so is she, and oh, he ends I up think. in a death trap, and then he gets killed, and the police they see see there's there's Lifetime, yeah, and then what I've learned is there's Lifetime Movie Network, yeah, well, yeah. Right. Right. And Lifetime Movie ne Network is where like the mom and her daughter, who's a popular high school um kid they combine to like kill the boyfriend yeah and you have to watch out so like i have um done clinicals in a long-term care facility and you have to make sure that at eight o'clock you kind of check what's on uh lifetime because they does get a little dark so sometimes you got to switch <laughs> it up for 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 uh you know Ethel, elder care because yeah. you're like i don't want them having to watch this but like in the daytime, it's it's a nice form formulaic movie. And then once like eight or nine hits, you got to watch out because Lifetime original movies can get dark. Well, well, hold, on a hold on a second. If I'm an old person in a care center. Yes, sir. And you're coming through and I got I got a dark film on and I'm 75. No, 85 years old. Don't be turning my film off. Right. No, I would never. I just mean like. If they're in the vibe to watch Warm and Fuzzies, I just make mm. sure. I would mm. never. If you're like, I love dark stuff, I'd say, I'm bringing my dinner in yeah. here. Well, I'm chilling out like. with you, Edith. Like, <laughs> you sick bitch. I'm in. Judd's watching, like, Saw 7. In the <laughs> Isn't it Saw 10 now? I think so, yeah. I think it's Saw X. I think Tom's Saw right. 10. Judd, if that was the case, if I went in your room and you watch that, it would take me... 30 minutes to get your glucose numbers because I'd be sitting there right with you watching mm -hmm. it. That'd be a grand old time. Mm -hmm. All right, Home Smoke, you got anything else? <laughs> um, Not really. Not really because I, I, you know uh, what? Mm -hmm. it, it, well, I will say this. The, uh, the league championship series, which is what? Texas, Houston in the American League and Philadelphia, Arizona in the National League. Both series are two rip. And Philadelphia won a ten nothing last night. Jesus. So, yeah. So get come on. Let's get some. Let's get some competitive baseball games here. Yeah, you're right, Judd. We will talk to you tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you. Sounds sir. good. Thank you, Judd Zolgad, ladies and gentlemen. Score North. Take a break. Be right back. Got Chris Egger coming up next, and Ed Bagley Jr., one of my favorite people in the world, will be our guest this hour too. Let's uh, take a second to talk about my bank, North American Banking Company. You've heard me talking about them for a long time now. When they opened in 1998, they made a promise to deliver a better banking experience for their customers, where you know your banker and they know you. Well, a lot has changed since 1998. This commitment to being a true community bank in the Twin Cities has not. So if you're looking for a better banking experience, why not bank with my bankers at North American Banking Company? Go to nabankco.com or stop by any one of their six Twin Cities locations. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Recently, Jim Paul of Valley Buick GMC was contacted by a company that does on-site sales. Jim was confused. Wait, they don't know anything about us. Our staff, our reputation, most importantly, our customers. Hey, pal, no problem. We do them all over the country. You know, get the manager off the roof sale, inflatable gorilla sale, and our favorite, the 13-hour sale with a giant clock that goes to 13. Urgency, baby. We bring our crew because, well, your people are, let's just say, a little uh, laid back. And the pricing? Nothing special, sport. But Jim thought, we price competitively every day. Our prices are special. We definitely don't need these guys. But sale does convey some urgency, so we made a bold decision for his fine dealerships. Announcing the Valley Buick GMC 365 base sale. And we can even extend it a couple years or so. I got the Air Dancer guy, scratch offs, plastic keys, bubble machine. Box. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley or Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Hurry. In a world that's racing a mile a minute, a split-second distraction can change everything. I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. Every day we see too many people, heads buried in their phones, unaware of the dangers they're in. Texting and driving isn't just reckless, it's playing Russian roulette with your life and the lives of others. 
In just four seconds of distraction, you've driven the length of a football field. Is there any text message that's worth your life, that's worth the lives of others? I've been fighting for the rights of the injured for over 30 years, but I'd rather you never meet me in a courtroom. So hear me now. Stop texting and driving. Pay attention. Value your lives and the lives around you. And if you won't, know this. At Bradshaw and Bryant, we're relentless. We won't back down. We bring justice to those that need it. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. With Mike Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. Guys, if you want to reignite your intimacy once and for all, listen, just give Twin Cities Premier Health a call for a discreet and confidential in-office evaluation by their highly trained staff of medical professionals. Acoustic wave therapy sessions are 25 to 30 minute treatments with no pain. And I'm here to tell you, uh, no downtime afterward. That's true also. And right now, Twin Cities Premier Health is offering a free treatment and a free consultation when you book today. Receive this $800 value when you use code word TOM at TwinCitiesPremierHealth.com. You may know that age-related erectile dysfunction is most commonly caused by a buildup of plaque in the arteries that supply blood to the erectile tissue. I sound like a doctor. What do you think of that? So smart. Acoustic wave therapy can rescue your relationship, has been clinically proven to break up plaque and improve blood flow to the penis. Definitely take advantage of this limited time special offer. Receive a free treatment and a free consultation when you book today. This is a savings of $800. Yes, I did say $800 when you use code word Tom at TwinCitiesPremierHealth.com. Be sure to use code uh, Tom, code word Tom, so you get credit for sending you. That'd be good. I wouldn't recommend a service like this unless I knew that they could help you too. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. News brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh for your free 48-minute financial evaluation. I did. Josh does a hell of a job. Again, Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold, bringing you Chris Eggert. Uh, when did you become a lumberjack? Oh, this is uh, – this. no lumberjack would be caught dead in these colors. Oh, they would. Oh, really? Blue and gray is way out yeah, of line? Nah, it's, it's too <laughs> – it's too fancy for lumberjack, and it's uh, you know it's one of those fancy shirts. I love Monty Python's "I'm a Lumberjack and I'm Okay." What a great song! Well, uh, I was just um, <laughs> the the guy from Monty Python, um, John Cleese. John Cleese, yeah. yeah. Yep. I just heard an interview with him the other day because it doesn't he have um, Parkinson's disease or, yes. or he's got something. Um, but man, uh, he is just such a funny dude, and Great he sounds guy. like he's he's handling that situation with as much grace as he can. Um, you know, given all the challenges that are going to be coming his way because of that. So, well, I'll be honest. The last time I talked to him, because I've interviewed him several times, very yeah. nice guy. But you could tell a couple of times ago that something was wrong because we were talking and having a good time and laughing and joking and going. And he all of a sudden goes, "I have to ask you a question." I said, "What's that?" Are we ever going to get to the point? I'm like, what? Dang. I was like, what are you talking about? That is aggressive. So I don't wow. know where his brain went for a second there, but apparently he, we were talking, laughing, joking. All of a sudden it was like, God damn it. I'm like, what? Oh. Whoa. Yeah, that's and that's, that's when I first was like, uh-oh, John's got something cooking. Yeah. Great guy, though. Just a really very funny man. Great guy. All those guys at Monty Python, every damn one of them was a really nice guy. I there was a point in life where I could quote probably the entire uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, like from the beginning to end. And I found now that most of those references, when I break one out every once in a while, they're lost on, um, you know, anyone under a certain age. They just they don't get it, which is sad. One of the great jokes of all time. And it was very laid back, very simple, very easy, but funny as hell the way he presented it. These, you know, wizards are always like Baltazar the wizard and all have all these fancy wizard names. Yeah. <laughs> John Cleese playing a, a wizard. And I can't remember who asked him a question. He goes, do you, wizard, have a name? And there's I a pause that. and he goes, some call me Tim. Tim? <laughs> <laughs> Tim the wizard. <laughs> yes. Very scary. There's no doubt about it. That was right in the right in the part of that movie where oh. the the rabbit comes out and uh, like decapitates half of the. <laughs> exactly. God, like, a great show. A rabbit. 
And then the rabbit comes out. What a great movie. Anyway. You know, this is a true story. When that started on Channel 2, I believe in 1970 was the first year of it, I think. I was living in Grand Forks, North Dakota. I drove home every weekend to watch that with my brothers on Sunday night. No wow. kidding. That's a total of about 650 miles. So that's that's a bit of a haul. <laughs> so I came home every weekend and left. As soon as Monty Python ended on on uh, Sunday night, I left to drive back uh, to Grand Forks. Isn't it funny the driving that you could do and the lack of sleep you could do when you when oh. you were young? Oh yeah, most definitely. I remember having a girlfriend who at the time was living like maybe two and a half hours away from where I was living, and I would I would work. A couple nights during the week, I was a reporter. It was my first reporter job in Sioux Falls. I would work throughout the day. Some nights I would wait tables at night. So when I got done with my shift, I'd go wait tables to make some cash and like leave there and drive two and a half hours to stay overnight at the at the girlfriend's place. Oh, yeah. And then get up at like 530 the next morning and drive back to be at work by like eight. And I'm like, how in the hell is that crazy? That? <laughs> yeah. Right? It's true. God dang. I would I try it. to have that kind of stamina now. One more thing about Grand Forks, and I think I've mentioned this to you before, but maybe not. Right out of North Minneapolis, I'm 18 years old. I'm not in Grand Forks, North Dakota. I could not understand one word they were saying. And they probably couldn't understand you there either. Yeah, I, I, guess. I think you're right. I think you're <laughs> honestly got to. Uh, say, listen, uh, I, I'm looking for what, what's a good neighborhood. I'm like, what the hell are you say? I could not understand them. It was unbelievable. I got around to it. Eventually I could, I'd go, Oh yeah. Like that after every sentence. There you go. What do you think? Grand Forks people are some of the nicest though. It's a, it's oh, they a were great. They it's were. A, I really, I, we went up there couple years ago my kid was thinking about playing there and i i really like grand forks a lot it was mm -hmm. but we were there in the in like you know when it wasn't cold cold season yet and it's crazy how much colder it gets it doesn't seem that far away but right. we talk about winter time even tevin between like fargo and grand forks i feel like mm -hmm. it's always yep. colder in grand forks isn't it I mean, I haven't spent a lot of time in Grand Forks, but I can't imagine a colder place on this planet than Fargo, North Dakota. That's it's what just, I mean, but it's it's, it's like, it is. It's crazy. Well, the good thing about it is, is that they don't have to have two different words. They can either use summer or July because it means the same damn thing. <laughs> the summer is one month long in Grand Forks, North Dakota. I'm just here to tell you. Yeah, I loved yeah. it. The people were great. One thing about, and I didn't drink at the time. Well, I couldn't That's go to the bars anyway because I was too young. Yeah. But, uh, man, they can drink up there, boy. I'll tell you. They can drink some booze up yeah, there. There's not much else to do, to do yeah, again, true. in North Dakota than That's true. drink. There was a bar when I was in college in Fargo that whatever the temperature was the day before, that's how much drinks cost. And so it would be Ooh. like three degrees and we'd go down to the bar with like 25 cents and be like yeah we'll take a, a round for everybody in here today and slap 50 cents on the bar i'm sure the bartenders hated it because they probably made no money but it was a good time if you're in college oh god yeah that's uh that's awesome if you're a college kid man that's a good thing don't you think have a good time hang out yeah for no and, and be able to do it on a college kid's budget hell yeah <laughs> Right. I mean, that's the whole other thing. Yeah, you're right about that because prices are cheap, or they were. I don't know about anymore, but they used to be a lot cheaper. I don't know if that's true. Did you guys know you you moved around the United States quite a bit, didn't you, Chris? Yep. Yep. Like when you were, where did you you were in here? Well, you're from Huron, aren't you? Or is that well, you went from a different part of South Dakota? Um, went to school in Huron, had jobs in Sioux Falls, Rapid City, Omaha, Orlando, Seattle, and then here. Really? So you yeah. were all over the United States just like yeah. I was. Yeah. I kind of like that, though, to tell you the truth, living in all those different markets and all that. I, I actually look back and go, how lucky was that? That was Well, for sure. And you're young yeah. then, and before a lot of times it's pre-kids, and when you can do that, and... um I, I'm I'm where I want to be now, but I definitely, you know, it was a lot of fun. That there, there's no doubt about that. No, no question about it. And the people are totally different. 
No question about it. Oh, and anybody from the Midwest, man, they they got no clue. People no. on the East Coast <laughs> or really the West Coast. The West Coast was a yeah. little different. They were at least kind of aware that like Minnesota, South Dakota, North Dakota, that we were over here. But East Coast, Florida, knew. They, they're like people tell people where you're from and they're like, I, I, don't, I don't even know where that is. And, and I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, one thing yeah is, i know they know where south dakota is now you know how i know that because the who's the governor there right now you got it yeah. she, she puts a, quite a figure for it she's very is she that pretty in in person uh i've never actually met her in person she's a very very pretty woman yeah um although i i do know some people who have worked for her at different points Uh oh um no, not not necessarily bad. Oh, good, good. Glad to hear. No, she just, you know, I think she's pretty upfront on where she stands. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of people who appreciate that. It's about Christy Gnome or whatever. Christy yeah. Gnome, yeah. Yeah. You don't and find her good looking? I didn't say that. Did we just, I just saw that look did, in your eye. Did a little Google search to make sure we're all on the same page. Was it a good picture? Oh, yeah, she's cute. Oh, here we you go. Don't, your voice is lying. You don't think so? I know that's a lie. I'm not gonna just objectify this woman on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. You yeah. just told me that all yeah. of the Golden Bachelor contestants are hideous. <laughs> and now you can't have an I opinion. I did not say they were hideous. I just did not say they were all like angels like you were. Angels. Yeah. Mm. Honest God. Chris, we were talking about this morning. I know we only got about two minutes to go here, but we're talking about this morning. That whenever late fall or winter comes, I look like I gained about 70 pounds. Look how big I look in this shirt. I look like I weigh about 280 pounds. Well, I, I wouldn't say that, but I think our natural our natural reaction at this time of year is just <laughs> to like dress warm, to not really quite care as much about what you're eating as maybe you do. <laughs> well, that's true. Um good point. I'm not cool. saying you, you know, and then you start like digging into things like uh, chili in the crock pot and roast beef and all that kind of stuff. So. Phenomenal. Great stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Eggert, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, you guys have a good rest of your day. Thanks, Pat. Bye, Chris. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Eggert, news brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Uh, call Josh for your free 48 minute financial evaluation. Chris Eggert on Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Take a break. Be right back. Very, very special guest coming up right after this. I'm so happy to welcome back our longtime friends, Saber Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning, to the show. I've known Steve, the owner, for many years, and I completely trust Saber to keep my house comfortable. Why? Saber does everything the right way, and they always put the customer first. I love the team at Sabre because their service experts are experienced NATE certified technicians. They're not salespeople. Their pricing is completely upfront and they fix only what needs to be fixed. Nothing more. Sabre is de dedicated to giving customers what they need when they need it and at a fair price. Keeping your family safe and comfortable without breaking the bank. Give Sabre Heating and Air Conditioning a try. I know they'll take care of you just like they've taken care of me and my family. Whether you need a new Bryant furnace or air conditioner replaced or just simply need a service call to get you going again, go to SaberHeating.com. That is S-A-B-R-E, Heating.com, Saber and Bryant, whatever it takes. You need to know a guy for your auto repairs, legal issues, banking, and more. The same goes for investment advice. You need a guy to help you be successful, someone you can trust who gets results. Well, I got a guy for you. Josh Arnold. Josh gives you straight talk, not sugar-coated advice about your financial situation. Josh has seen it all when it comes to economic and market conditions, and Josh can make sure that your retirement objectives match your investments. Do yourself a favor and call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll get a different point of view for your investments. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That is 952-925-5608. You'll be glad that you did. And tell him his, his guy, Tom, sent you. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. You horn tootin'. Tom here, and I just read a success story from MN Fat Loss client Elizabeth, who just completed the program. Elizabeth writes, I am a 54-year-old woman who has struggled with losing weight. I had almost constant heartburn, trouble sleeping, and brain fog. 
I tried counting calories, eating bars and shakes, and several other programs in which I would lose 5 to 10 pounds after months of struggling only to gain it right back. After 60 days of the MN Fat Loss program, I was down 25 pounds. MN Fat Loss had really empowered me to believe that I can control my eating and my weight without having to sacrifice foods that I like. Let me assure you that the short 60 days is totally worth it. If you're thinking about finally committing to improving your health, this is the time to start. You won't regret your investment in yourself. Well, great job, Elizabeth. As a matter of fact, I'm starting the program again today because I took a pause there after the 60 days, and which they encourage you to do. So I'm getting back. I started back again today. I'd like to lose about another, I don't know, 15, 20, something there. So yeah, great job, Elizabeth. I'm so happy to hear about your success. Are you ready to lose weight and feel better? Go to mnfatloss.com and schedule a free phone consultation. It's so easy to see if MN Fat Loss is a good fit for you. They offer a free phone consultation to learn about the program. You don't have to take time off work or get a babysitter for the kids. It's as easy as getting on a quick call with the expert staff. You can share your goals, learn about the program, and see if it is a good fit to help you lose weight and feel better. They also have virtual options to help you if you live far away. To schedule that free phone consultation, go to mnfatloss.com. The only thing you have to lose is that unwanted weight. That's www.mnfatloss.com. I cannot wait to hear about your success story. Let them know, please, that Tom sent you. Yeah, uh, 8.48 now, 12 minutes until 9 o'clock. You know, it's kind of interesting in life as you kind of go through it. And I know the COVID situation uh, came and went. It's been, what has that been, about three and a half years now? Yeah. Yep. Something like that. So, you know, the world kind of shut down and all the rest of it. And and I, you know, I used to, my friend Ed Bagley Jr. and I used to talk a couple times a year. And uh, I just haven't heard from him in a while. Oh, wait a second. Ed, how you doing, Pally? I'm so happy to talk to you again, Tom. Thank you for having me, buddy. I'm telling you, Ed Bagley Jr., one of my, And by the way, I'm assuming you didn't write the first line of the descriptor, but I agree with it 100%. It says, beloved actor. Huh? <laughs> I don't know about that, but God bless him for thinking that. <laughs> Maybe somebody will agree. Definitely I, not my wife. <laughs> God, that's why I love talking to you so much. You're a very honest man, beloved actor, and environmental activist, Ed Bigley Jr., known for his countless roles over the last five decades, most recently in Better Call Saul and Young Sheldon. Two great shows, as a matter of fact. Shares hilarious and poignant stories of his improbable life, focusing on his relationship with his legendary father, Ed Bigley Sr. It's one of the things that I'm very, very proud of. I got to interview your father and you, so how cool is that for me, Pally? So cool. It's a great connection we have, Tom. Thank you for that. You're a good man. So now we have a book to the Temple of Tranquility. And <laughs> Excuse me. I almost made it through the title, Ed. <laughs> Ed Bagley Jr. has a book <laughs> to the Temple of Tranquility and Step on It. <laughs> I love Did I you? I tried to do it. I tried to rush serenity. That's how crazy I am. <laughs> I tried to even get serenity out of, out of a bottle of vodka. I wouldn't recommend that either. Oh, you and I have been there together, Ed. There's no question about that. <laughs> Full disclosure. Yeah. Full disclosure. So um, how long did it take you to write the book, first of all? It started innocently enough. My daughter, Hayden, came to me with her smartphone in hand saying, you know, I, I want to record your whole, you know, 50 some odd years in show business, or at least as much as my battery pack and data plan will allow. So let's get to it. We started to record it, but she wasn't available all the time, so I went, let me take some notes from my daughter about my crazy life. And that's when it happened, Tom. The keyboard of the computer became like a Ouija board that actually worked. <laughs> right. You know, it started drawing me into these different stories and saying things to me I haven't thought of in 50 years, but I knew they were true. And fortunately, there's, there's enough people still alive and different ways to verify these things actually did happen as I recall them. So it was a great learning experience for me at this period of discovery and writing it. It took me just three months to write 80%, the first 80% of it. It just poured really? out and I tried to get it down before I forgot it, you know, half of it. And, uh, and then the other 20% I did it in over the course of about three or four more months to get it just right and fill up a whole book. Now that I do have to ask you, cause it says in here, focusing on his relationship with his legendary father, Ed Begley senior, I am assuming, because he always said really, really nice things about you, so I'm assuming he said those to your face, too. He did. He was very careful Good. with his praise. He wanted me to grow 
as a young man, and he, I think he was happy that I was beginning to work as a cameraman and a little bit less as an actor, but I, I know he was happy with that. But he threw compliments around like manhole covers. He was not given <laughs> throwing a, a lot of praise my way. So when he did, it was a big deal. It was a 20 megaton bomb when he did say something complimentary. When I'm so proud of you, boy, you're starting to pay your own bills. Aww. And it's good you're working as a cameraman. You'll be you'll be in good shape for life after I'm gone. He was couldn't have been sweeter about it. He was a good dad and a great role model in many, many ways. And is it, it's got to be somewhat difficult to, uh, you know, you have a very successful, very well-known father, uh, and you're stepping up, you're in the business now. That's, there's special pressure on a guy like you, I would imagine. It is, and I just looked at the negative of it, which is that, you know, sure. people are going to compare me to my dad. I'm not my dad. Don't compare me to my dad. Right. All that stuff. When the, the positives of it, the pluses are much more powerful than the minuses. The pluses are, number one, they're going to remember your name. If you're Rob Reiner, Liza Minnelli, Ed Begley, you know, yeah. there's so many sons and daughters of famous people that are doing very well. The so one, they're going to remember your name in a job interview, which is essential that they remember your name. And two, they got something to talk about to make everybody relax. And the, you know, I worked with your dad on patterns that Rod Sterling wrote. And yeah, we did 12 angry men as a teleplay years ago. And, uh, Top of page eight, Eddie. Good luck. I love the old man. What a great way to start a job yeah. interview. People are rooting for me. Yep. And relaxed, and I'm relaxed. They made me relax. So it was all a plus having Ed Sr. as a dad. And I finally realized that after a few years of thinking about it the wrong way. Uh, the book is called To the Temple of Tranquility uh, and Step on It. Ed Begley Jr. with us this morning. You know, Ed, since, since you popped on, and hearing your your lovely, wonderful voice again, and I over the year, I'm in my 52nd year of doing doing radio, uh, about 40 years now doing morning radio, and I just over the years the thing. First of all, Ed Bagley Jr. is the only person I've ever interviewed while he was riding a stationary bike the whole interview. Oh, nice! <laughs> I thought that was terrific, Ed. <laughs> You still I doing... forgot about that. I was running my generator bike. I there's yes. a little yeah. bit of a lag in the sunshine for a while. I needed to charge up the batteries so I could have a, a speakerphone call or something, have enough power. And I rode that exercise bike. I forgot about that. That's great. Thank you for bringing that up, Tom. Honest to God, it is one of the great. I am having all of the, this flood of memories of talking to you over. I don't know how many years it's been now, but I, I've always been a huge fan of yours. Anyway, you you are, and one thing I I will tell you. I don't know if you got it from your father or improved on it from your father or where it came from, but you are sincerely one of the nicest people I've ever talked to. You're a very talented guy, very well known, all the way, but you're such a hell of a nice man. Yet we need more Ed Bagley Juniors. That's all I have to say. Right back at you, Tom. You're always a delight to talk to. And in every other part of your life, it's, it's just great to know you. That's well, a very nice thing to say. And by the way, you might be the only man I ever watched prance through a bar naked in a movie. You thought you were invisible, but That's you right. weren't. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I played Son of the Invisible Land, and I can see why I got that part. Me taking off my clothes is definitely good for a laugh. Ask my wife to confirm that. That's another thing if you want to... There's going to be some laughter. God, it's wonderful. Are you going to go on a uh, Are you going to go on a tour with the book? Do you think uh, in, in the future? Yeah, I've been doing it already. I went to New York and did some press there, the CBS Morning Show, and did a book signing in New Jersey, and did some ABC uh, their YouTube show, and just been busy with everything. I'm going to Powell's Books in Portland, Oregon. I'm going to the Chicago Humanities Festival. So I'm all over the place. So I'll be kind of close to you there at the Chicago Humanities Festival. That's the 28th of this very month, October. So that's not so far from now. I say I could just meet you in like Madison. We could meet in the middle. You got a deal. We'll meet in the middle. I love that. <laughs> what a great town that is. No, it is a great town. You're absolutely right. No, Ed, uh, seriously, there, because, and I'm very serious about this, during the pandemic, uh, not a lot of interviews. My whole career I based around doing interviews with people like you. And for a few years there, I nobody was doing interviews everybody's staying away you certainly didn't have anybody coming in the studio with you so to have people like you back with us uh it's just wonderful I, I cannot wait to read your book and and if you happen to lose your way driving home from chicago and you had a little little northwest 
just keep coming to Minneapolis. I'd love to buy you dinner sometime, pal. I would love to do it. You got a deal, pal. I'd love to get together live and in person. So when I next get that way and got a little bit of time, I promise I will do that. We'll get it done. Ed, please come back soon. As the book goes along, could you come come back and we'll talk more about how the book's doing, uh, the To the Temple of Tranquility, and Step On is the name of the book. So please come back very soon. You made my day, sir. And you made mine. Thanks again, buddy. Thanks, Ed. Ed Bagley Jr., he, honest to God, is one of the... This guy, I mean, he grew up with a very famous father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And his father didn't have the same sense of humor he did. I will tell you that. His father was a very serious, dramatic actor. Uh, whereas Ed can do some brilliant, Ed Jr. do brilliant comedy. When he thought he was invisible, prancing around oh, a I, bar naked. I can't even. Because, <laughs> you know, I know him from so many things. Like, he, you know, there's you, you can think of like a million shows he's in. The idea of him being running around naked is like. <laughs> and he's doing the, he's doing like lifting up bottles. Uh, like, oh, make it look oh like the bottle's God. floating. <laughs> no, you're holding it up. <laughs> he does. He did so well in Arrested Development. In oh, Arrested yeah. Development, mm -hmm. he had like uh, alopecia, and he would buy like eyebrows oh, and different gosh. hairs and things like that. And it was just he was so funny without trying. That Absolutely, hard. he yeah. doesn't even try to be funny, no. and he's funny. And then that bike thing, I remember that. That was such a wild. He was riding a bike the whole time he was talking. He wanted his house to be <laughs> net zero when it comes to efficiency or using right, any electricity, right. and so. But he had, yeah, he was like, well, we got to, it was, it's a cloudy day and I need, it was so funny. You know what I do have to realize? Cause I, I do watch a bit of news. I don't watch any, anywhere near as much as news as I used to, but I kind of like keep an eye on things cause things are getting worse by the day and everybody hates everybody else and everybody's pissed off and oh my God, blah, blah. And I sit back and I go, why can't you just enjoy your life? Why don't you just calm down? Yeah. We'll try to make things better. But then things like that just happened. Ed Begley Jr. came on and, and told me on the show that he missed me after, you know, and I missed yeah. him. There's no question about it. Maybe I can be a lot more tolerant because I have had a magnificent life. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. So do you think that's part of it? Maybe you should go out and meet somebody and fall in love and get a job you actually like and stop blaming your problems on everybody else. I love that. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. And enjoy the little things more. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, the world. Don't focus. Don't sit and watch CNN or whatever news network all day long. Any of them, because it's yeah, it's all negativity. Go get an ice cream cone in like some <sighs> park or something. Let's like, get an ice cream cone right now. Last thing I need is more ice cream. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a buyer. He's just down the road. Can I tell you the sweetest thing? Our uh, so we have an ice cream truck that comes every Thursday. Ooh. Her name is Penny, and we are obsessed with Penny. It's a whale of a treat. She has a big whale on the side of her. Oh, I've seen I think that. I've seen, no, I've I think seen, I've seen her food truck yep. down by like the Stone Arch Bridge. Yes, yeah, she's amazing. Um, if you ever see her, just give her money and get the ice cream. It's just so, she's just so delightful. She came by our house last night and just knocked on the door and goes, you know, I have some treats for you guys just to get you through the winter and gave oh, us God. some ice cream treats. Came to our house. Penny Very came smart. <clears throat> I was like, yep. Penny. And we, um. I just, it was like, she was like, I, didn't, I felt weird knocking on your door. I was like, you can come in. And I, and I made her take a picture with Gogo. She's never out of the van. So I was all excited yeah. that I, I was like, you have legs. Um, it was so sweet. And it was like that ice cream base That's what thing. That's we're looking for. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's what we're looking for. Just the fact that she thought of you. We need more of that. Look, mm -hmm. I know people have, you know, I've had times in my life that suck too. I understand that. And I just... I really don't understand taking such a strong political position that you can't agree on anything. Why do you want to live like that? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, both sides, far left, far right. Why do you need to be so extreme in your beliefs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there something religious about that? I mean, they're treating it like a religion, not a oh, hundred percent. Right. So you, you on both sides, it's a religion to them. It really is. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. I think there's like a fear I feel like everybody's scared they're living the wrong way or like that everyone's not living like them. I don't really know what the basis is because if Tevin told me he came in here today and said every day in the morning, I like to stand on my head for 20 minutes and I feel closer to God, I'd say, that sounds great. I'm not, that's not my Good. journey, Good. right? but I, I'm happy that you are finding something great for you. Yeah. 
And like, I have no problem with people having any sort of religions that differs from mine or mm-hmm. whatever our views mm-hmm. or want to have this or that. So I don't understand that obsession with, no, 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 don't do that, Tevin. Tevin, don't right. do that. I know that you like that and enjoy that, but no, I don't do that. So you need to not do that. Yeah, because I don't do it. You shouldn't do it either. Yeah. That makes no sense. I don't get it. No. Honest to God. No. And I worked with a guy that was a flat earther and like oh, extremely religious and like to the point where like every like every conversation he had That's was wrong. based around religion. And there it you was go. like, is there it you are you the most fun person to have just a generic <laughs> conversation with? Not really, but like I don't hate you because no. you think the earth is flat or whatever else. You Where did you work with him at? Uh, I worked, he was at a, well, so my friend owns Peterson Craftsman Meats. It's a family owned meat processing oh, thing. Where? Uh, <clears throat> they're based out of Wisconsin now over in Os- uh, my hometown, Osceola. Oh, okay. But they distribute to like, you've probably eaten his meat. They distribute to a lot of restaurants Why here. Why you look at me when you say Yeah, like, right? I was you, like, like, you go out to no, restaurants and eat? You've probably eaten his meat. Yeah, right, okay. it, I've, I'm a married woman. Okay. Anyway, go <laughs> oh my Peterson God. Craftsman meets best meat ever. Anyway, worked yeah, worked there and Did he they was, sell it here. Oh uh, yeah, they mostly distribute to um restaurants and stuff. Oh, the restaurant. Okay. Yep. So then damn it. But yeah, I'm sure I mean he I'll I'll hit him up and you want some bacon or something. <laughs> oh, I know I know up. I know a guy. Oh, don't start with the bacon, man. I love bacon. Damn. You know, there's not a bacon I don't like. I like thin bacon, I like thick bacon. Oh hell yeah! yeah candied bacon, like <laughs> it's you, phenomenal. You Canadian bacon, it doesn't. Oh yeah, any kind of bacon. I couldn't agree more. It's a magnificent setup. There's yeah. no question about it. But ah, what the hell? It all works out in the end, doesn't it? It does. And I do have to say that even though I just said that you people should do what they want, that I do not love when you were talking about your coworker who's obsessed with flat earther. I just don't want to have to hear about it every day. Like, give me an yeah, every other day yeah. kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to hear anybody's stuff every day. What is the point behind Flat Earth? I don't understand that. I don't know either. Like, it's, there's, you can watch, there's, I think it's on Netflix. There's a documentary that you can watch where they're trying to, like, t- convince you that the Earth is flat. And you can, I went into it open-minded, like, you know what? Yeah. Convince me. I want my mind to be changed. And I got five minutes in and I was like, yeah, this is not nothing you guys are doing makes any sense. Well, but, I, yeah. I, I've seen the it's a YouTube video of this flat earther guy trying to like prove it. And so yep. he, he it's like a football field or whatever or something far away. He puts two like stakes in the ground at the same height and then he has a little hole and he's like a. If I go over here, I should be able to see this red light because there's no curvature of the earth. Mm-hmm. And then on camera, he gets up there. and He's like. I don't. I don't see the light. I, th- I think oh. I know. I think I know I which that. which video you're talking about. I think he spent like twenty thousand dollars putting together oh. this like experiment where it's like, yep, this is going to f- once and for all prove that the Earth is flat. And so he goes through, and then at the end of it, he's like, and right here, shit, nothing. He's like, yeah, well, oh. <laughs> video's over. But did he actually think that a hundred yards was enough curvature in I, the Earth? I think. I think <laughs> I I think I underestimated it. It's it's further than it than is. that. Yeah. I was just throwing out a number for the sake of sh- showing that there was a distance. But um, he he rented out like a giant field and like set it up in a different oh, way. Okay. And right. yeah, he's like, I should be able to see this light shining through this hole mm-hmm. at this angle, blah blah blah. And then he gets over there and he's like, I uh, so I don't see the hole. And it's just like <laughs> and then the video just ends. <laughs> I mean, here's what I don't understand about that though, because you can see. As you're driving down any highway in the world, you can see the tops of buildings in the distance, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're just about at eye level, but you can tell it's the top of the, the building because of antennas or whatever. And then as you get closer, you see more of the building. How is the earth flat if that happens? Or like, right. you know, when you fly, yeah. you can look out a window and then yep. you, eventually it like drops off. But do you really think that the world just ends at that point where it, it drops <laughs> off? Like you know, a hundred miles to the West. No, like, yeah. come on. Now. Or like people, cause technology has come so far. Like I can go purchase a GoPro and a weather balloon very easily, tie it to a string and up in the air it goes. And you can see the curvature of the earth. Like yeah. you yeah. can, or like um, my favorite is like, well, what if you're going to fly from like one part of the globe to the other? Are you telling me like they go the long way now. So your trip from like California to right. Russia <clears throat> is going to be 24 hours because you got to go the long way. No, come on, guys. I like what your we- connection. Commie-ass California and Russia. I like that. Yeah. 
good connection. Well, tomato, tomato, from what I'm Toma- told. Like <laughs> California is <laughs> just <laughs> Moscow. Why, why is it important to some, for some people to think that the earth is flat? I, I don't think understand. They just want to be quirky. Also, different. sometimes I think there are things that are too overwhelming for people in their brains. Like just, the earth? Yeah. And they're, pretty I mean, overwhelming. The earth is overwhelming. That's what I'm it's pretty yeah. overwhelming. Gravity in general and like the fact that everything is relying on like a, uh, mm-hmm. a spinning piece of earth, like that is terrifying. Yeah. So sometimes your brain just goes doopy doopy doop flat. Maybe you just answered my question. Maybe it's fear. Yeah. Well, yeah. And like if, yeah. if as a kid, you were told something by your parents, like this is the way it is. And then you went your whole life believing that like it's to then all of a sudden have that not be true kind of shatters your existence. So you're trying to hold on to That's what happened to me. Yeah. My father told me his whole life that he was around me. I was an asshole and I believed it. Um... And then later on, I found out it wasn't true. Oh, thanks yeah. for arguing uh, on my side, all three. Oh, sorry. I, they all stay AJ, silent. AJ turned my mic. I can yeah. turn it back on. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah sorry. Okay, I was, I was yeah, screaming nice. at the top of my lungs yes, over were, here. No I, th- I thought that it was going to be like one of those stories where it's like my dad left to go get milk in 1984 and never came back. Well, Tom believed it was a flat earth because he's like, he must have fallen off the side he of the earth. Off. You know where all that water's falling off? That's yep. where he is. First of all, where did the water go? Do we have enough water that you can just keep dripping uh, off the side no, of the a, planet? They think it's an ice cap. So like Antarctica, essentially they believe that it's not a globe, but like if you squished a globe and Antarctica was around like the outside and then all the land is on the inside That's with a, like the water. So it like holds it in. Well, get, wouldn't we run out of snow melt sooner or later? Uh, maybe that's why global warming is such a big deal because oh, now our, uh, be. our ice wall is going to melt and we're oceans are going to be drained. Yeah. Again, I'm fine with people thinking that because, like, there's a lot of things that I just know on a very basic level where I don't want to know more. Mm-hmm. Computers. I don't really, really know how the internet works. Oh, no. Like, <clears throat> reproduction. Like, does I only anyone? know, like. Yeah, does anyone? Like, know? there's just, like, a lot of things in my me where I go, I accept them. And if this person, if that, they, the mechanism that they need to get the, throughout the day is just believe that the earth is flat, fine. I probably don't want them teaching science class. Yeah. But... I don't want them watching my kids, but they can... I mean, honestly, they can watch Go Go for a little bit. So, what was it? 19, like home computers, the internet was what, late 90s? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere in there, like 98, 97, 98, something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will never forget the first time Andy fired up. Now, he was only 10 or 11 years old at the I time. Betty was happy. He fired up the internet and, and it's going, yeah and i'm like what the hell is this i'm supposed to stand here for an hour and a half while that comes up the, it took forever the aol sign on was the most <laughs> uh, was oh, that really? screeching sound and trying to get on oh, that, that deal, yeah. yeah and like know that your school report is relying on that thing to connect <laughs> and you're just like please and it'll go beep beep beep, oh, beep. Yeah. and you're like mother trucker i need to i need to look up Native Americans in Minnesota. Like, I have a report due in an hour. And then somebody like, you're using oh. that, and then no no phone calls can happen now because oh. you're on the internet. All oh, of a yeah. sudden, my yep. stepsister Andrea picks up the phone, and I'm kicked offline, and I'm like, <laughs> no! I had like 40 songs downloading from Napster. I was gonna, I was gonna have the whole album of Eminem. Ugh. So Andy's nine, he's got a neighborhood buddy that's 11. His buddy comes over. I go downstairs. What's his buddy watching? Porn. You got it. First thing I ever saw a full picture of on the internet was a naked woman. And Andy's like, and well, you're... like labeling the parts because he's like, well, I might as well learn something. <laughs> you know, the femur. Here's the labia. <laughs> <laughs> femur. Doing research for health class. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, But honestly, God. But then I pictured in my mind. They had to sit there for about 10 minutes oh. while the line went oh. back and forth yeah. before oh. she even appeared. And yeah. it was a very exciting time for them. <laughs> yeah, collarbone, collarbone. Is that nip, nip? Oh, oh wait, no, no elbow line, still? Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they were doing, too. Yeah, probably. They were commenting as the as the naked woman appeared more and more. It's a very yeah. exciting time. How would you even know where to look, though, if you've never been on the internet before? That's the whole fun of it. The, back then, it was a wild time because nobody really knew what was going yeah, on, true, what we were true. doing. We're just out there. And we were out in freaking chat rooms talking to strangers left and right. Oh, my god! That 
that blows my mind. Lucky everybody didn't get killed. Uh, me and my friend <laughs> Michelle are, this is so bad. Our number one hobby, Tom, is we'd go to a chat room and we'd have like a name that was, could go either way. Like, oh, I don't want to use Alex. What's a, what's a boy or girl Sam. name? Sam. Thank you. We'd have like a Sam and we would kind of convey like, they would say like ASL. We wouldn't say, you know, what we were female or male or whatever. Mm. And we'd start talking dirty to them. And then we'd be like, and then I'd turn you around and insert my penis in you. And they're oh like, my. you're a man? Oh, Jesus. my God. And we would die laughing because we would just, like, get them so close to a point and then, like, reveal that we're a man. And they're like, yeah, aren't you? Like, that's what we were here for. And they're oh like, God. don't ever talk to me again. <laughs> and we're like, I wonder how many people we infiltrated going, am I kidding? <laughs> well, it's true, though. It's like, Jesus. It's so funny. Yeah, and we people... were like... 13 14 oh, oh we were we would die laughing about it do they still i i gotta believe i don't know because i don't really go on that much other than to research something but do they still have porn everywhere on the internet i suppose they oh, do yeah only yeah. on Tevin's computer. Oh, well, I mean, that's <laughs> why no one's allowed to use that right, one. it's just Tevin. my home computer um <laughs> exactly. yeah well and now like social media like everything is just out there now yeah i suppose and again because they've like really tried to like destigmatize like the sex worker industry so you'll get more sites that like porn stars will have their own twitter account or instagram account because they it's promoting a business so yeah it's all you can find whatever you want on instagram facebook except for what i liked most about having a screen in the basement playing pong good old pong yeah, yeah game yeah. When ball, that was the ball, best ball, game, ball. just watching the ball go side to side. <laughs> exactly. That's all it did. He went, Ooh, look at that shot. Oh, how about this shot over here? Or even like yeah. I remember as a kid playing Madden and being like, Oh my gosh, oh, these yeah. graphics are so real. You, you can see his <laughs> breath. And now you look back at it and you're like, This looks terrible for how far <laughs> technology has come. Pretty much true. Yeah. But look at where we are now. We're, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's taking the place of broadcast uh, that's what the internet the internet has gotten to that point now where mm -hmm. it's just blown up huge and it is what it is right uh -huh. yeah no technology uh, although i was at the apple store yesterday because my computer crapped out on me while i was trying to edit some stuff and so i'm sitting there as they're helping me reset everything and behind me i hear uh, like a younger guy going like and you can use your phone to store your debit card and use it to pay for things Ooh. and i turn around because i was like who doesn't know about apple pay right and it's just a group of elderly women like nodding oh. in agreements and like oh. writing stuff down and it, oh my gosh if you ever want to just like have fun and see people not like completely out of their element go to the apple store and because like these guys like yeah. put your password in and the ladies like well i don't know my password We're like we're well, gonna have to reset it like yeah but what's the email like right i'm like dude right. some people are so technologically like last time i was in the apple store i almost had a mental breakdown it's it's insane it's i almost lost my mind on them because you know airpods you like those little mm -hmm. yeah, those sure. wireless headphones yeah. you put in your ear i uh run with that and i had the charger on the stroller and i lost the charger okay that's not that expensive part the charger is like 30 40 bucks right the headphones are the expensive part I went in there and I said, hey, I need to buy a new charger. They're like, I was like, here are my AirPods. I just need to buy a charger. They go, do you know the VIN number on your um, oh, charger? Oh, God. I said, N no, I didn't even know they had. Like, I didn't even know. Like, I, what are you talking about? He goes, well, we can't sell you that because these could be stolen. And I was like, if they are stolen, it, what are you going to do? Like, what? What can you, I buy a charger? They go, no. And I was like, what do you mean? I need to know. There's a secret number on this charger that's got to be the, like a what a size of a tic tac, yeah. like I like was twitching. I was like, no, I didn't write this down. Like I right. have a life. I don't know what you're. I almost lost my mind. Right. Also, like we can charge these on your guys' chargers you have here, and yeah. when I try to connect, it'll say Britney's AirPods. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is not hard to find and, out. And I bought them through you. Do you have the number? They're like, no, sorry, we don't keep that. Same. <laughs> <Right>. Yeah. <laughs> why? Why would anyone? Why would anybody like these? Are not a seventy thousand dollar investment. I didn't get home and put it, you know, on a little piece of paper and right. then in my safe. Can I please charge these AirPods? Like, fine, you're right. Like, I can just go to your display model, put my AirPods in there, and just wait. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I was like, I was so mad. Yeah. And especially because like, do people probably steal AirPods and then try to go buy a charger now they got free AirPods? Sure. You can buy it on but, Amazon. But yeah, like you're not going to, what, you going to turn me into the police if these were stolen? So no. yeah, I you can buy like off-brand chargers for it on Amazon mm -hmm. for like 20 bucks. But I was like, well, I might, might as well go buy the their kind just in case or something, whatever. So I was like, fine, make me a criminal. Fine. I'm going to go to Amazon and buy a knockoff version. Fine. And if they're stolen. What do they care? Why do you what, I, at this point? Yeah. There's nothing the, that person's walking around with the charger. Maybe they'll come in later and buy AirPods. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't, I'm helping you. We're, we're buying to, more stuff. Like, I, at some point, we have to use our brains here, people. Like, I don't know my VIN number for anything. No, as the, which should be the correct response for everybody. Like, they, nothing. No, I, mean, I don't I, know the VIN. I have no idea what my plate number is on my car. I have no clue. No. What if I spit yours out right now? Just out of my I had, a, fr I I had a friend no. that he knew all of our cars in high school by our license plate number. Oh my God. Yeah. A little that's creepy. A, that's a good friend. I like those kind of friends. I think that's a creepy friend. <laughs> that's what I think. No, I VIN number. I know my VIN number. On I, even on your car, it's up there in your I know. Uh, mm -hmm. in your windshield. Yeah. I have no idea what no. that number is. And no, that's not what a, clue. What, a car in a house, one of those are some of the biggest investments you made. AirPods are maybe, maybe mine were 100, 150 bucks. Where I was like, sir, the shoes I'm wearing might be, my running shoes might be more expensive than these right now. Right. Like, and I'm not saying they're cheap headphones. I just was like, this is insane. Like yeah. at this point, what you're telling me, I, 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 fine, fine. Yeah. I just was like twitchy. I was like, yeah, it's a weird hill to die on. Yeah. Like, why is this, this is the line that you're drawing in the sand? Is it AirPod chargers? It's not like I'm bringing in a phone case and asking for the phone. <laughs> like, I found this right. phone case. <laughs> right. Can I replace it? If I fell, my phone fell out. I'm like, literally have the meat of the electric. And it's like, you're right. Like, if somebody did steal my AirPods, at that point, they win. Like, you can go buy a charger. I don't care. Like, you just have to at some point draw a line and go, this is insane. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I just wanted, I wanted to flip it. You know when you get so mad and you know they have no, like, the person working there is just the face. It's just the messenger. Yeah. And so you know they have no, they're not in charge of protocol. They're not in charge. And you just don't know. Like, you're like, well, somebody bring Steve Jobs here so I can lose my mind on him. And he did. Yeah. Thing is, though, it'd be a little difficult. A lot of people don't think that way. A lot of people think the person, like the the genius or the person behind the counter, is like that's who to blame right now. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So like, kudos no. to you for not thinking that way. Yeah. Well, I had my kid with me too, and at that point, she had hand, foot, and mouth, and was like, like really cranky, and so it was just like. I was like, the the meanest thing I can do right now is just stay here and let her scream. <laughs> she's, she's just like, you're just rubbing go go up against all like the display phones. <laughs> I was just like, I, I was twitchy. And you're right, like AJ, you're right. Like I have to keep that in mind because it's like there's no that person working there is just having to convey this. And you could just tell she was like, I know it's ridiculous. Yeah. I was like, can I can I steal the model? <laughs> yeah, stealing. Bring up yeah. stealing. That's a good idea. All right. You just want to put Target out of business some more. Apple. Well, I mean, but it never mind because Target closed because people were stealing. Never mind. Oh, okay, I get what you're saying. Anyway, um, <laughs> why me? That's all I know. I was irate. You were irate. Yeah, you would have felt. You would have. I. W I really was tapping into like, I need to walk away, Tom style, just like rub my beard and go. Oh. You can cancel my genius bar appointment and walk out. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, I I don't know. Well, the the biggest problem, one of the biggest problems we're also developing is nobody's polite anymore. That's true. No. It's very hard to find somebody who's polite. It's all everybody is always in it. What do you want? Blow it out your ass. Goodbye. I'm not going to shop at a store if you're a prick. Yeah. Who needs it? Yeah. And when customers are rude, like any job that I've had, yeah, who needs customer that service? Too. I'll be like, listen, I don't make the rules here. Yeah. I'm just here to collect this check and go home. Like. You, I can go get the manager if you want to yell at somebody. You think I woke up and chose to wear this outfit? No. They're right. making me wear this outfit. They're making me talk to you. Like, this is all right. this is all just choreographed. Yeah, like, sir, I also think it's egregious that you're paying this price, but I don't <laughs> set the prices. So You're the one that willingly walked in here. So. Right. Do you want no, this you, or yeah, not? It's your fault. I, I do love that. <laughs> it's your fault that I'm in a horseshit mood. That's yeah. really great. So. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand why. Well, I'll give you an example. I, I might have mentioned this yesterday, but I don't know if I did or not. But I had dinner with Dave Bialki and and 
What's that sales guy's name again? Pat something? Don't Ebert's, even. I think it is. Yeah. But anyway, we had dinner at Baccio. Okay? Love Baccio. When? Monday night. I just said Monday night. You think you'll ever listen to what I say? Grant was there Monday night. He was? Yeah, it was his birthday him. Monday, and he went and ate at Baccio because he, really? he had a trouble pronouncing that name. I was just like, had a deja vu moment. How do you have trouble pronouncing Baccio? He didn't say Bacchio, does he? I think he panics and just doesn't say it. He goes, you know, <laughs> and then he spells it. It's actually kind of cute. Baccio. So we're done, and we get up, and we leave, and I ran into a couple of friends of mine on the way out. Met some listeners on the way out. It was very nice. And I walked up to the front, and I said, um, are you the manager? And she got, like, very stiff. Yeah. Which means her, when people ask her that question, it's never good. Yeah. Yeah. I said, she said, yes, I'm the manager. I said, well, I want you to know that uh, Natalie did a great job and the food was wonderful. And, you know, I just want you to know that it was really, really good. And she said, could you come back more often? (laughs) (laughs) Nobody ever does that. And I, I learned from my mother and it was from my mother. I said, Tom, if you had a good time, tell the manager. I love that. Tell her, hey, you know what? I brought my car in for service. You guys did a great job. Thank you. Uh, no one does that anymore. I love telling people how much I like. I that's like a weird. I love doing that. I do too. Mm-hmm. It makes me happy. It makes them happy. But do you know what I hate? And Tevin probably did this as a manager at a restaurant. I hate, and it's because I was a server. I, I to this day hate this. Is when the manager comes around to tables and go, "How's your meal going?" Because it feels like I just want to be like, narc, I'll never tell you. <laughs> well, he's just making sure you're okay. Yeah, but like I would never, I'd, even if it was a problem, I'd never tell this manager just because like I was a server. I was on the other side of it and I used to hate when the manager, <laughs> especially like an awkward manager would come oh, to the table. Oh, because you sucked at it and they because always said I that? I had like a vibe with my table. And so when a manager comes, it's like, it's like, I don't know. It just feels like a little bit demeaning does this make any sense i know exactly what you're talking about yeah. like uh when i like when i'm playing playstation sometimes the game just crashes that's how technology works but then playstation is like hey we see that your your game is no longer working do you want to send a report about <laughs> no. it being oh bugged? i hate and that i'm man. like oh my i'm not God. telling you anything <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly how i feel you I, are not gonna I, get that info i don't care if the server straight up put boiling soup in my lab <laughs> I'll never tell you, manager. <laughs> like, get out of here, narc. I'm on the server side. No, I, Sticking to the man. Never. I, get out. I worked as, at a couple places as a manager where that was like a primary part of your was you had to go to every oh, table and hey how's your, how's your dinner? How's your dinner? And I'm like, it's it feels so unnatural. I'm gonna interrupt these people's dinner just for them to go. Good. Like, okay. And also, I'm walk away. Like Tom, you'd hate it. You'd hate it as a server because it also feels like a power move. They're like. I'm actually dad here. I'm at, hey, you know, I'm the manager here. I just wanted to check in how your meal is going. And it's like. But he's been told to do that. Oh, know? no, I know. But right. I still like the part of me that's like. I, See, get out of here. I think I think you would have liked me because I was on the side of like the server. The server. Of Cause course. we had like, yeah. I remember there was one time where a guy ordered a steak, got it well done, complains about it being dry. And so the server tries to politely explain to him, hey, that's when well you make a well done, done steak, you press all the juices out. It's going to be a little bit drier. Yeah. Guy, nope. I've been eating well done steak my whole <laughs> life. And so the server comes and finds me and he's like, I was like, well, what did you tell the guest? And he's like, I have to explain to them that when you press it, the juices, blah, blah, blah. Okay, perfect. I go to the table and like the guest or the guest kind of looks at me like he's going to be on my side. And it said verbatim what the server said. And yeah. the guest just like sits now he's eating his dry steak. I was like, we can get you a regular cooked one but yeah no i'm on the side of the the server i like to drag the the customer through the mud a little bit oh that's nice <laughs> it, only if they deserve it yeah. only if they deserve, they, they deserve, they deserve yeah. it because yeah. yeah. you get people that will complain and you'll be like well what can i do for you and they'll be like nothing you should i just wanted to make you aware and it's like well don't fight me then like i yeah. don't know what do you want you know it's much less likely if i had a bad meal that i would complain about it oh for sure by just just like I would either if it's that bad, I probably would never eat there again. And mm-hmm. if it's just kind of bad, I go, eh, whatever it happens. I feel like I would be more likely to tell the server, like, hey, I didn't like when you said this, than ever tell their manager anything. I would never, never. What is it with you and managers? Because I was a server and you're, you're not 90, very good. But ninety-nine percent of the time, you you had nothing to do with the problem because you're just oh, yeah, delivering you their food and like it was, you know. Uh, the the cook did something wrong or they didn't get sat long enough or it took a long time. Like, and you're just the deliverer of this thing. Yeah, but what if it turns out you have a horseshit personality? That's, that was my problem. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 
I was a great server. No, oh, I was a where, great where server. Where were you a server? Uh, I don't want to say because they were very, they were quick. A&W. Like I talk a lot of shit because they were very corporate. Oh, really? And they don't exist. The one that I worked at doesn't exist anymore. So you're protecting a company that no longer is around. It's still here in Minnesota. This is not the one I worked oh. at. Is it like a it? chain restaurant? Mm -hmm. Is it at have... 50th and uh, Highway 100? Was it a Perkins? I oh, I thought Perkins. for sure she was going to say Perkins. Yeah, is it like a diet? Like, what, what type of food do they sell there? Um, A little higher end than like Applebee's, but definitely corporate. And it was like we had uh, we had undercover. TGI Fridays. We, every, every week. We TGI had, Fridays. Nope. Every week TGI we had. TGI Saturday. <laughs> yep, Saturday. <laughs> every week we had every undercover week. customers. To the whole week. And like, it was so corporate. And so, and then they were quick to like, if a customer complained, they would just take it, you know, the price off their meal. They'd be like, mm. oh, we'll just, you know, uh, comp you that, which always was annoying because then they tipped less and people would treat you like crap. Like, I see, I was right. And you're just like. Mm. Settle down, everyone. Okay, we'll continue this, but I do have to take a break. I know. Because I'm about 13 minutes late. So, oh, wow, break. sorry. But we'll get back to it. No, it's all right. You guys are. You don't have to pay attention. You don't do a professional show. You don't, don't worry about being a professional. You know, right? Tell us what to do, Dad. Hey, Dad. <laughs> you all have helped support my pillow and their employees in these tough economic times. Mike Lindell knows this, continues to give back to listeners with deals on his most popular products. You've heard me recently speak about the My Slippers, the Giza Sheets, My Pillow 2.0, and more. Great news the My Pillow six pack bath towel sets are back in stock. The proprietary technology makes them extremely absorbent, yet still provides that soft feel you look for in a towel. The set comes with two bath towels, two hand towels, two washcloths. Regular price is $79.98. For a limited time, you can get this six-pack towel set for only $39.99 with promo code TOM. That is a 50% savings. I said 50. You heard me, 5 -0. Go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM to save 50% on the MyPillow six-pack towel sets. That is just $39.99 for a set. This deal will not last long. Enter promo code TOM for this special and many more. In a world that's racing a mile a minute, a split-second distraction can change everything. I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. Every day we see too many people, heads buried in their phones, unaware of the dangers they're in. Texting and driving isn't just reckless, it's playing Russian roulette with your life and the lives of others. In just four seconds of distraction, you've driven the length of a football field. Is there any text message that's worth your life, that's worth the lives of others? I've been fighting for the rights of the injured for over 30 years, but I'd rather you never meet me in a courtroom. So hear me now, stop texting and driving. Pay attention, value your lives and the lives around you. And if you won't, know this, at Bradshaw and Bryant, we're relentless. We won't back down. We bring justice to those that need it. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. With Mike Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. The new Tom Bernard Morning Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com, keyword partner. It's Tom Bernard for Flagship Ford in Baldwin, Wisconsin. I'm happy to say I purchased an EV Mustang from Flagship and have friends and coworkers who bought new vehicles and used ones from this family-run dealership. That's just 20 minutes east of the metro in Baldwin. Still says west on there, by the way. I'll change that. Thank you, sir. Uh, whether you want to compare their used car specials, claim Ford financing options, or simply book an oil change or tire rotation, they have you covered at Flagship Ford. New vehicles like the Ford Escape, the Edge, or F-150 pickups with special engine options. Flagship Ford can answer all your questions on your next vehicle. The month of October is tire month at Flagship Ford. Fit your tires for your specific vehicle, any model car, truck, or SUV, and get your tires before the snow flies, just $5 over cost. That's a purchase of four new tires with a $70 rebate gift card on top of the $5 over cost on most brands of tires. Flagship Ford, east of the metro in Baldwin, Wisconsin, and online at FlagshipFord.com. That is FlagshipFord.com. 
We are back, ladies and gentlemen. This is from the Wall Street Journal. I'm looking at a headline, and I don't know what this means. Wall Street's latest obsession is an unknowable number. Okay. So what does that mean? No idea. I don't either. I have no clue. The debate centers on the unobservable term premium that models say is surging. Does anybody know what the hell they're talking about? Still very lost. Mm-hmm. Where's Josh Arnold? I, better get him on right? the phone. I have no idea what the hell they're talking about. No idea. Live markets, P&G earnings boosted by higher prices. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to click on the story and go into it because it might just go on and on and on about stuff we have no knowledge of. I don't average annual change in family health insurance premiums. I, I just, first of all, have you ever known a period where everyone was on strike, where prices were all going up? Nobody wants to pay anybody. Everybody wants to make at least twice as much as they're making now. How did we get, I mean, our politicians have failed us miserably in this country yeah. for the last 250 years or whatever the hell it is. I don't even know anymore. Completely. The, nothing is right now have you no matter what you do nothing goes right anymore because people have dropped the ball every step of the way i know and then there's like they really break it down in a weird basic way or they're like people just don't want to work and it's like no that's that's just like a we that's not that's that's a very umbrella y thing to say and it's not mm-hmm. true well you got to finish the sentence though people don't want to work with you that's true you see what i'm saying it's not different no i People don't want to work. Well, if you didn't have to work, would you work? No. I would. I may, Okay, that's, I guess my answer was quicker than I thought because I get a lot of joy coming in yeah. here. I love doing this job. I love. That's joy. That's this is my version of joy. That's my version of joy. You're welcome. Anyway. Um. So, yeah, but like and I, every, most people, most people don't feel that way about their jobs. Right. I would have to say that going to their jobs are not like. So in other words, sitting here bullshitting is not a normal job. It's not work. <laughs> it's no. not work. Like if you had to ask somebody that's working in like yeah. a factory, hey, yeah. would you rather not have to come in here every day? They'd be like, yeah, I'm not really getting that's true. fulfillment out of this. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose that's true. I worked in a couple of different factories. I was not good at it. Got to be honest with you. Yeah. But yeah, I, I just, I don't know. Where, where are we? I know where we're headed with all this stuff. Apparently, they're going to vote on a Speaker of the House. They can't get that right either. Uh, let me just point something out to all of you, the Democrats and the Republicans, the Speaker, uh, trying to elect a new Speaker. Maybe you should get your head out of your ass and do the people's work instead of your personal opinion what it should be. Yeah. Get, out, get out of the way of the American people, because that's what you're doing right now, is you're blocking the flow and good handling of our problems by pushing your personal agenda. Get out of the way. Serve the people. That's your job. Not to make more money for yourself. Not to hate uh, McCarthy or Jordan or whomever it is on the left or the right or the whatever. Your job is to serve the people. So get your head out of your ass and do that. Wait, it's mm-hmm. not to grandstand and to have a sound bite that they can use forever? Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. Uh, look, I just went through my, and, and you know, I'm very open about this. I always have been very open about this. Minnesota needs to take uh, a step back on this tax situation. Mm-hmm. The taxes in this state are psychotically high now. I just have to trust you on that because that's kind of all. I've only ever been an adult in Minnesota. So it's kind of like this is all I know. Oh, God. Yeah. The taxes here are insanely high. I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm not going to give you the numbers, obviously, but I'll give you an example. Federal tax was blah, blah, blah. Let's say I'm going to just give $100. I'm going to say my federal tax was $100. Okay. And that tax rate is what, 39% when in the upper rate? And Yeah, okay. That's pretty much it, isn't it? Okay, so follow this then. If that's the truth, my federal tax was $100 and my state tax was $65. How the hell can my state tax be two-thirds of my federal tax? Yeah. How is it? You know what I found out? What? At the federal level, they dial back all these things. Minnesota won't do that. They just uh, charge you a flat out. They don't try to help the taxpayer at all in this state. I did learn this, though, about taxes recently, and it kind of blew mm-hmm. my mind that your income. So let's say you make let's say you make one hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. And if you make fifty thousand, you get you get uh, a certain percent off or you get the you get taxed at a certain percent, 20 mm-hmm. percent, let's say. 
Uh, Is on a federal level? No, it's like any, any whatever level. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like you get your first, until you hit that mark, that first income gets taxed to that point. And then yeah. once you hit more, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Cause I was like, the people that make this much money, why would you even make that much money if you get taxed that high? And I was I like, oh, it's that true. first chunk of money is is all <clears throat> your if you when you hit my until you hit my salary we all get taxed at the same amount and then once like above it there's a different tax bracket like yeah. that's that blows my mind you mean same percentage not amount yeah correct yeah 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 you're saying you just didn't know there were tax brackets well i didn't know that not <laughs> No, like that was sorry, very I calm. No, that was no, very no, I think good. I'm explaining okay. it wrong because I I didn't know that like like technically Tom gets taxed at my percentage until his income like his the his fifty thousand will get taxed at the our fifty thousand will get taxed at the same amount. Oh, okay, but then once he reaches the next benchmark, and that's then when that he switches that over to the second next, chunk of yeah. money that's above mine gets taxed at a different percent. Oh, okay, but like I didn't know because I was like, oh, your whole income is thirty. It's like no, the first yeah. hundred thousand is at you know whatever rate mm -hmm. and then the next chunk is at a different I rate i didn't know that oh. i thought it was like your your income in general just gets yeah. taxed at that higher rate i know that seems basic but i literally learned that this year when well, i was no, doing taxes a lot of people don't know that i didn't know that very I, true. Yeah. well because yeah taxes are just so confusing unless you're like somebody that studies and is your tax professional because i remember like putting in if you have two jobs and it's like well my first job well, i'm getting all this money back <laughs> no. and then the second job no. you put in you're like I have to pay in now. We're just going to pretend I didn't work that second. So like, yeah. it's, it's everything is confusing, oh. especially like what you can write off, what you can't write off. Yeah, it sucks. It's so amazing because the middle class pays all the taxes. Correct. The low end doesn't pay any taxes and the high end doesn't pay any taxes. Well, it's true too. In the high end, I found this out, you know, with by being bribed by proxy to people who had made money. A lot of people know how to get past a lot of those taxes. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, love him or hate him but trump mentioned it he's like well you're stupid if you're paying that tax like if you're you're uh mm -hmm, and right. it's it's i mean it's a very like oh i see so if you have enough money to know the system you don't have to you can figure out ways not to pay money when you pass money down to relatives or, don't pay any tax and that just like hurts to just go oh, I, oh I see there's like you can be rich enough to just know that you're going to get away with like, you know, all yeah. the loopholes and all the things. But then at the same time, I can't remember who the like millionaire billionaire was, but they like released his tax, like how much he paid in for taxes. Mm -hmm. And it was like more than the entire state of Wisconsin. Yeah. So it's like you do yeah. get other sides of where it's like, OK, yeah. yeah, some people are paying their quote unquote fair share. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Not many. No, not many of them, though. I, I will tell you, it just. It's an unfortunate situation that, uh, and I don't, why do we need to have such high taxes in Minnesota? I can understand it in New York and Chicago and, and Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. There are millions and millions and millions of people there. Why do we need to pay, have such high tax? Minnesota has the third highest tax in the country. Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. No, because, it doesn't. I mean, Minnesota is a great place to live. Don't get me Love wrong. Minnesota, but it's yeah. like, there's a lot of things that seem to not get done that you would think we should be paying for with our taxes to get it done quicker. I would think so. That would be kind of nice, but look, I, I just have a lot of problem with there's a, I love Minnesota. I was born here. I was raised here. I love living here. There's no question about it, but I am the older I get, the less I like that passive aggressive horse shit that Minnesotans love so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hate that passive aggressive deal. You won't be aggressive to my face, but you'll go behind me and stab me right in the back. Yeah. I hate people like that. Stand toe to toe. You don't like something I did, then stand toe to toe with me and tell me that, and we can talk it over. But if you go behind my back and go, hey, did you see what Tom did? You didn't talk all your stupid ass friends. I don't like that about Minnesota. And I've never, you live in New York and did that, they'd shoot you in the head. Yeah, right in the head. <laughs> it would. It's true. <laughs> what do you think? Just one gunshot? Yeah. Turn sideways, kill shot. I do love, I love an aggressive king or queen. Like I love, I love knowing where you stand with people. I love that. I just tell them flat out. And when I say things like get the hell away from me, I'm serious. If you, mm. if you hear Tom say that, you should probably get the hell away from him. Yeah. It's time to move. So if you say it as in jest a lot too, like when I like say something that you're annoyed, like you'll go get the hell away from me. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's yeah. a, it's obviously a joke. But right? if you have like dead eyes. <laughs> If you have dead it, eyes well, and you said not. that to me, I would be out of this room. I would literally, dead I don't eyes. care where we're at. If you were like, you need to get the hell away. I would literally go, headphones down, bye. Like, Time to go. 
I'd no, probably leave too. Just, I just really just, wish <laughs> that we were much more fair with people instead of buying people's votes with my tax money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I really am sick to death of you buying votes for your dirty bag, dirt piece of shit self with my money. How do you really feel? Poor shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you want it's me just, to do. No, like, I don't there's know. There's nothing you can do no. about it. It's our system. We should have never allowed them that much power. We're so far gone. We are in way that, far gone. I don't know where to go from there because it's like, man, you just got to stick to basics. Like picking up trash on the ground because like that's the extent you can change your environment when it comes to these things. There's mm. not what do you what what the whole system is insane and, and the we more have you, to eventually take these politicians set them all down and go you're not that important here yeah you're right. doing our work get your head out of your ass stop taking our money to advance your career make our lives better not your life better right yeah how about we all go rise together yeah. how about that there needs to be a level of accountability and transparency like yes. hey where is all this money going exactly what yep. is and then also like if you're a politician you're making all that money like i don't really have a problem with it but like we could incentive like do some sort of incentivized program like oh you actually did your job and yeah. got things what accomplished. about that now you get to make a little bit more money like yeah. i don't get to make more money at my job for being a horseshit employee why should you I know. And I look, I, I it just I don't understand it. They particularly around here. And again, I love Minnesota. I'm not don't tell me oh, I should move then blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever. That's not what I mean. Has someone said that to you? Even everybody says that. Oh, if you don't like it, if you yeah, complain you know, about it being too cold or the winter sucks right. or this sucks, move. You can go to somewhere else. Like, OK, like you think that everything's great here. Yeah, calm down for crap. You like it when it's 35 below, do you? Idiot. (laughs) No, I I just, everybody is all about themselves now. And it's been building since I was a little boy. Every year you could see people becoming more and more and more self-important. And they followed the lead of our our, our elected officials, of Hollywood. I mean, my God, the ass kissing that Hollywood does toward politicians. And you know why they do that Yeah, to get the rates cut for making movies. The, yeah. the, 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 the basically I know it costs a lot to make a movie, but how does the government make any money off of that? Because you, if you don't make any money with the movie, they're not, not going to see a dime of it. Yeah. So Hollywood thinks they can do or say whatever the hell they want because they can. Also, like, I don't care how much I love you as an actor and actress or even Taylor Swift. Like, I love Taylor Swift. I'm so, I, her and I do not live the same life. I would not be like, I wonder what Taylor's uh, views are on childcare in Minnesota. Like, I don't care what a celebrity <laughs> no, says ever. Not. Personally, mm-hmm. I'm a little offended. She hasn't issued a statement about what's going on in the Middle East right now. I... <laughs> You want to know what Taylor yeah, Swift yeah, thinks I about? Stance. I, yeah, I don't. It's funny. It's like I always laugh when they're like, it's time for my speech. I'm going to give a speech about how this needs to change. And you're like, we don't live similar lives. Oh, now here's no. the difference, though. Who are you and Taylor? Just anybody who wins oh, an award anybody. and okay. decides to take that time to like. There are people, though, that I do respect, like when it's the everyday job, like the third camera guy gets a chance and he t- speaks on something like he mm-hmm. believes in. Okay. But when like Meryl Streep talks about making change, I'm like, I'm sorry. Like we don't live the same lives. I It's hard for me to take your opinion all that seriously. Sorry. Like you, you can say like, Hey, let's do this. Let's do that. Like you have the money and resources to have security, to have, um, you can bring, send your kids to school in a private school. You can, you know, avoid, you can vacation in places that you've decided are safe because you bring your whole, so we don't live, dif- we have different points of view. Mm-hmm. So I don't really care about your point of view. I, who are you talking to now? Meryl Streep. Meryl. <laughs> I just think about the, like them all singing Imagine and like, that's, that's going to fix the world during, yeah. during the pandemic. Hey, it's yeah. like, it got guys, me through 2020. <laughs> it It's so, they're so disconnected from just everyday oh, they people. Are. Like, yes. And, yes. Sorry, and that was the joke I was made about like, I don't no, care what Taylor Swift has to say about it. She, totally I, totally she shouldn't, she, she shouldn't have to make a statement let alone any athlete. Totally. No, or, I know. Yeah. Like, mm. I don't care about your stance on that. I don't. Know? I right. don't. But like, if you do make a, like, if you have a cause and it's something is you're passionate about and you oh, speak yeah. up, like, good for you. Like, I value your opinion the yeah. same as anybody else's. But, like, I'm not going to now all of a sudden 
follow whatever it is you said to the letter of the law because yeah. you're LeBron James. And there I shouldn't would, be an obligation for them no. to like. No, no. and I, you're right. I'm not like mad if they want to yeah, take that time, exactly. but like I would have, I put more weight on like what Tevin, AJ, Tom say because we live similar lives more than I would say like Meryl Streep and I have anything in common. <laughs> right. That's and it's all. like when you mentioned the pandemic, it was like when all the celebrities made those videos, like we're all in this together. Yeah, the Imagine St- yeah. song he was talking yeah, about. Yeah, like you're in a 12 bedroom mansion. Yeah. Like calm down. I'm in a one bedroom <laughs> apartment. Yeah, with, with your little dog. school pod <laughs> yeah. that they've been like yeah. doing where they're like, my kids oh, can't go to normal school right now. I had to get a tutor. And you're like, my kid is eating paint. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right. Is there anybody that we have in the? Because I want to start writing bits for the show. Okay. So we need a man and a woman to voice our bits. And the first bit I want to do, you just inspired me, is Taylor Swift complaining. I don't understand why people are so upset about this Middle East situation. I mean, I like hummus. I eat it all the time. There you go. Just have to go on and on. Oh my gosh! Just a bunch of hummus <laughs> commercials. <laughs> These Hollywood hummus is great. How is it dangerous? I don't. How is hummus dangerous? I, I don't get it. I eat hummus every day. Well, you did every day, and I'm <laughs> healthy as hell. I think it'd be wonderful. We got to find somebody to be good at Taylor Swift's voice, though. I don't. Yeah, I feel like I'm I, trying to. I'll try to think of it if anybody I know. She doesn't really have like a distinct voice. No, she either. doesn't. I yeah. know. Like yeah, really, she, any average person probably voice it all right you're probably correct about that but i i i don't know it just i the the self-importance in this world it's not just the united states it's everywhere mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i am so important no you're not no i'm not none of us are can we just work together and can we have the people who are in charge or at least they think they're in charge our politicians in this country are the worst they've ever been not all of them but i would say 90 percent of them they're all in it to make money, to get their name known, to take as much money home as they possibly can. So then their next job will pay even more. I mean, I have a friend that was involved in politics, made a decent living doing, you know, doing his job, left, got hired, made $4 million in the next two years promoting something. Yeah. yeah. So don't tell me there's no value in being a politician in the United States. There's a ton of value in that yes you can make a lot of money after you leave office and that's you know maybe you guys should be grateful for that what do you think yeah yeah maybe a little bit yeah maybe work your ass off for the people represent the people not just yourself that'd be nice yeah right? mm-hmm. i don't know i still don't understand like i said i just don't i'll close by re referencing this, this whole situation this matt gates should be kicked out of the country for what he did there's no doubt about it yeah and for them to like because they arrested his friend right or charged his friend but then they want to say like he didn't do anything it's like you can't be with the 17 year old girl yeah yeah Yeah. like you can't be that close to all of everything that's going on and then now all of a sudden no i had no idea what was going on over here it was nothing to do with me and again i'll go both sides those eight that look i don't know mccarthy i don't know jordan i don't know if they'll be any good or whatever but that's who you got you put up your puke the last time and now they got their puke. What the hell's the difference? I just don't understand how these eight guys think, well, this is what we need to do to just kind of hold everybody up. And then every single Dem- not one Democrat thought to vote. Yes. Why don't you serve your people? Not you, not your party serve the people. Are we ever going to get back there? No, because the focus is so <laughs> much on winning. Quick. The the focus is so much on winning the race. Yeah, that I think they yeah, get lost in what they're actually like fighting for. I think that kind of co- that should be where like the term limits come into place. Just because I agree. If you don't have, yep. if you don't have to worry about winning another election, then you can focus on just doing the job right. Mm-hmm. That's what should happen. So you talking two term for everything? Yeah, let's, I let's do couldn't it. agree more. Just like the president, that's you can be point. president for two terms. That's it. Yeah, all of you should do two terms and get out. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And you should just like your driver's license. You should have to take like a uh, hey, how with you? How with it are you with? Uh, kind oh, of like test. competency test. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Competency. We'd have nobody working. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be here. There'd be nobody on the road <laughs> every day. No, you no, get- I'm talking about in politics. I yeah. wasn't throwing you guys under the bus. 
<laughs> she's looking at me like, yeah, Zach right. He's just so triggered that he has to respond. <laughs> to every... Sometimes I forget that everyone can see the video and I just glared at you going, no, they'll get you it. Did. You glared at me. That's true. What do you mean not everybody can see the video? Everybody's got a phone. I just mean like sometimes they just listen. And they need to go watch it on YouTube because there are some great moments that have happened on this show recently that you have to see. Oh, they're up there? Really, yeah, in order to really. I don't like it. the way YouTube restructures it the way they want it, though. I don't like that. What do you mean? Yeah. There are things on there from like five months ago that are well, yeah. the third item in. Yeah, well, we had like, some stuff pinned to the top that was like how to watch the stream, how to download the app. Right. We can get rid of that if you want. And, that's, and not only that, but I mean, a woman we had on the show six months ago, that's great, but that was six months ago. Yeah. And she's number two in line. Why do they do that? Well, we had the shorts. We had like, you when you go to our YouTube page, there's going to be a playlist for full episodes and a playlist for like segments and stuff. Oh, okay. And so the segments playlist was above the full episodes one. Oh, now and it so, looks good. So yeah. I switched it. So oh, now you did? It, yeah, good. now it should good. be the Yeah, full now episodes. it's like, like 10, 17, 10, 10. 16, 10, 13, 10, That's 12. 10, do, you, 10, 11. do I have to do that at my house? No, it'll and automatically no, do it. You now. Already yep, it uh, yeah, I took care of it. Well, so. Why do we do it that way? I never understood why we do it the other way anyway. It was, it was just the way that it was set up. So, yeah, we switched it around. So now every day after the show, I'll upload the new phenomenal. Video. That's if you're going there to check it out right now, make sure to like, subscribe, and uh, hit that bell so icon so you can get notified every time a new episode of, of the uh, show is uploaded. See? Is smash that, that like button, baby. Oh, look at that sales job he just Holy did. Holy bucket. Proud to know you. Matter of fact, I have to take a break just to catch my breath. We'll be right back. This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take personal care dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Recently, Jim Paul of Valley Buick GMC was contacted by a company that does on-site sales. Jim was confused. Wait, they don't know anything about us. Our staff, our reputation, most importantly, our customers. Hey, pal, no problem. We do them all over the country. You know, get the manager off the roof sale, inflatable gorilla sale, and our favorite, the 13-hour sale with a giant clock that goes to 13. Urgency, baby. We bring our crew because, well, your people are, let's just say, a little uh, laid back. And the pricing? Nothing special, sport. But Jim thought, we price competitively every day. Our prices are special. We definitely don't need these guys. But sale does convey some urgency, so he made a bold decision for his fine dealerships. Announcing the Valley Buick GMC 365-day sale. And we can even extend it a couple years or so. I got the Air Dancer guy, scratch-offs, plastic keys, bubble machine, box. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley or Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Hurry. Tom Bernard is back. Every weekday, you'll hear Tommy B, Brittany Arneson. Yes, that Brittany Arneson. Along with Tom's pals, Kent Herbeck on Fridays, Bob Sansevier, Mike Stretch Gelfan, Tim Lammers, and from Channel 5 Eyewitness News, Chris Eggert and Kristen Burt on entertainment and pop culture. It's Tom and the crew with opinions on news, opinions on life, opinions on entertainment, and of course, opinions on opinions on other people's stupid opinions. The Tom Bernard Show is a podcast, so you can listen when you want to listen. In the car, on the way to or from work, at home, on the job site, or wherever you need your Tommy B Show fix. Hear the show on the Tom Bernard Show app in your app store, as a podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts, or see it on YouTube on the Tom Bernard Show channel. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, 9.57, three minutes until 10 o'clock. What a coincidence this is, because I hadn't uh, 
checked in with Tom's news stories. We have Tom's news stories and we have, you know, the complete sheet and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did not know that because I pointed out this. The only two things I ever I watch on NBC would be the office reruns, the special edition reruns. And I watch Poker Face on there, which is, I don't know. It's no rerun because we just watch the eight, ten shows, whatever it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I don't watch NBC. Not on purpose. They just don't have programming that I care about. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. More evidence of the revival of the office. That's the story this morning. Do we want this? Why not? Because no. I'm sometimes scared when something like oh, this is worse. touched. Yeah. Like mm. AJ's well, shaking right. his head going. <laughs> let, it, no. let it be. It was a great show. Exactly. And I don't want that like I the know. memory of how high it was on top of the mountain to be tarnished with <laughs> it's like. true. Because they're not, they're not going to get the same star power. You're going to have to return people. And like even if you bring back some of the cast in like a minor role for like small cameos. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't. That's not. That's like uh, I'll give you a bite of the pasta, but then I'm gonna take the bowl away. You can only have that one noodle. Well, Frazier's doing it. That's true. That's true. Frazier's doing it right now too. And by the way, uh, we always turn this over. It's the best line ever on the office. We turn it over to Brittany. Um, I I'm not superstitious, but I'm a little stitious. That is one of the greatest written lines in the history of television. Did you get that meme I sent you that yes. a listener sent me? A listener yes. sent me this meme that was like just <laughs> it was on Friday the 13th. And it was like how I feel on Friday the 13th. Is uh, and it was him going, I'm not a little stitious, or I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. A little stitious. And I sent it to Tom and I was laughing so hard. I knew you would not respond to me, but I knew you'd like the meme. Oh, you know? it was phenomenal. My <laughs> favorite scene from the office is when uh, one of the employees gets hit by a car in the parking lot. And then oh, Michael yeah. Scott's like, hey, guys, you know, this employee got hit by a car, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then at the <laughs> end of his, like, explaining what happened, they go, like, well, how did you get to the scene so fast? And you're able to help her out. Like, And they're like, did you hit <laughs> Pam with your car? No, did or you whoever hit- it was? <laughs> oh, were you the one? He's like, I was in the car that hit her. And then yeah. they were like, they stopped and they said, wait a second. Like, Michael, were you driving the car that hit her? Yes. Yes, I was. And it was so (laughs) funny. It's a great show. And then she ended up having rabies. And he was like, they found it because she (laughs) was in the hospital for getting hit by the car and got a broken femur. And he then started talking like he saved her life by hitting (laughs) with her car. It was so funny. He did save her life. (laughs) <laughs> Our Dunder Mifflin's employees headed back to the office. Rumors of a revival of the office have circulated since the show concluded. That show has been off the air for 10 years already. Yeah. 10 years. That's amazing. Now the uh, original series showrunner Greg Daniels has offered a comment. In an interview with Collider, Daniels couldn't def- uh, definitively confirm or deny the recent reports that we'd be returning to Scranton, though details are paper thin. Well, I think that's very speculative. Daniel said the fact that it kind of blew up based on one line and a puck piece was kind of cool, I guess, in the sense that the fans still care a lot. I absolutely love that show. Yeah. It was one of the best cast shows of all time. Just watched it last night. Was, yeah, we, was there a reason that it ended? Did they just were like, oh, we just had enough? Or was there any like behind uh, the camera drama? Well, Steve Carell left like about three, right. yeah. three seasons before it ended. And it oh, was our, like that probably was when they should have ended. There were some funny things a little bit. They tried to have Will Ferrell come in and he didn't commit that to, was terrible. he had like four episodes and his character had like some funny stuff, but it was, it just was not flushed out enough or I don't really yeah. know. I'm with you. It was terrible. And then they had, um, God, that big time actor come in as well. They 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 tried so hard, and then Ed Helms kind of took the annoying role of yeah, boss. And didn't work. Didn't work because it's like <clears throat> they they fell into that trap of they had to make every character a little more zany. Like they leaned yeah, into yep, like like yep. oh like Meredith used to be kind of an alcoholic, and now she's a full blown like promiscuous alcoholic. Everybody went farther into whatever realm they were leaning towards. Yeah. And it was like the last few seasons were just rough. But, I mean, I still watched them. <laughs> God, I'm continuing with the read, and I really hope this guy's name is not pronounced the way it's spelled. Oh, no. Daniels was referring to a recent report by Matt Baloney of Puck News. Matt Baloney. His name, B-E-L-L-O-N-I. Baloney. Probably, yeah. So How else would you Bologna. pronounce it other than Balani, maybe? My Balani has a Bologna. last name. It's... My Balani. And we got it all, baby. 
uh, say that the former showrunner would ink a deal to revive the office uh, once the WGA strike officially ended. However, no such news broke when the strike concluded earlier this month. Daniel's next comment did suggest the revival may be in the works, but that it's far too early to discuss any further. The thing I would say is when there's something to announce, I will definitely announce it. He told the outlet. Andy, what do you think? I think everything is getting revived, rebooted. It kind of is. Yeah. So we're talking about Frazier. I wouldn't be surprised at all. God, I, I, the only problem with that is, is that you guys were pointing out when they, when they bring back a show, like I was worried about Frazier. I've only seen the first two episodes. I think the next one comes out tomorrow night. Christian says it's like the best thing on television and mom says it's okay. Uh, I thought it was pretty damn good. I really did think it was really good. Yeah. First of all, he's a tremendous, well, anyone who speaks this way to you <laughs> every time he sees you. I mean, what a voice he came up with for that deal. It's good. I, 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 yeah, it's not great yet, but it is really good. Well, the first few episodes of Frasier weren't great either. So there's that. No, the original. Yeah. It's like every sitcom. It's always very rough in the beginning. No question. So what do you think about The Office? Do you think they should bring it back, Andy? Uh, probably not. Yeah, because, you know, as, as Brittany pointed out, they tried three different iterations, and not only was it not good, it sucked. Yeah, I don't think you yeah. can capture the lightning in a bottle again. No, probably not. But so after 10 years, they might. Do you think they will actually do this, or this is they just will. a piece? Do you think they will? It, well, I mean, it depends. That's the thing. It's like Steve Carell left. Mm -hmm. so would he even be interested in coming back if he wasn't even part of the end of the show or would it be like him managing a different branch of people no oh, yeah. it really all depends but there's also the fact that these people are all much older now right mm -hmm. and i don't know the dynamic for the same cast just because in the very beginning of the show you know you had like jim and pam and dwight who were all pretty young i think they were like late 20s mm, about right yeah and then you had people all the way up to stanley who i think was like in his 40s or 50s now the youngest person in the cast would be probably like 40. so i don't know the whole like wacky hijinks thing wouldn't make any sense with a bunch of middle-aged people well i suppose that is true they'd have to change the show well let's see how what what's what's uh jim's real name uh oh my god why don't which I one know? is jim oh jim halpert his name is uh, I can't remember. Oh my God, I know it. He's married to John Krasinski. John Krasinski. Oh, John Krasinski. Yeah. John it would Krasinski. be funny though if Creed was still there because Creed was the old one that like always was scared they were going to discover that he's super old and not yeah. doing anything yep, in the yep, back. It, yep. If they were to like just keep him, just like, hey guys, what's up? Did anybody watch Friends last night? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, have him saying funny things with Creed Bratton. Uh, John Krasinski is 43. So yeah, the youngest people on the show would be in their mid forties. And he's kind of busy anyway, right now. He um, produces every damn thing. That yeah, comes out. Like, yeah. That's the other thing is his Jesus. career was, his career was brand new when the office started. Yeah. And now he's like Mr. A list. I don't think he'd care. No, I don't think he would either. Uh, I, and I tell you another thing, I think that streaming television is phenomenal. Uh, you give me an example of that. Do you guys ever watch Abbott elementary? So mm -hmm. good. Uh, couple episodes. Terrific right. show. It's really, really good. You seen it, Andy? No. Yeah, give it a whirl. I think you'd really like it. She is terrific. Oh, everybody in that show is hilarious. Yeah, they the are. principal is immaculate. Oh, what a pain in the ass. She I love her anyway. She like makes fun of one of the teacher's outfits. She's like, Why are you looking like a nerd around here? And it's oh the outfit. She always picking on the outfit. Oh, she's always making fun of that one teacher's like, oh, when you come in my office, I'm always like, get out of here. It's just like <laughs> She's so funny. I mean, I like LOL during that show. Oh, when she come, walks up to me, she goes, so what's with the outfit? Yeah. What do you mean, what's the outfit? Well, I mean, like everybody else looks really good in it, but you don't. But you look terrible. <laughs> like, it was so funny. Great show. Yeah. So there, there are some good uh, sitcom things out there. I love the fact that we, because of streaming, have shows from all around the world now. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. Catherine and I watch a lot of Australian television, some, you know, England, all the rest of it. Um, but TV right now, because the streaming is, the, I think it's the best it's ever been. Yeah. You, I mean, because you even have like old TV shows that if you missed or if you were young that were, you know, popular in the 90s or early 2000s right. that you can watch now. And so, yeah, you just, everything's at the tip of your fingers and you can discover something that's old that feels like new. No, no question. Like, and I already mentioned Poker Face earlier today. 
she was incredibly good in that. Are there other comedies out there that you guys have been watching? I like nope. um, uh, Shrinking. I like that I, one. I did want we watched that. That's what's his name, the big tall comedian. Uh, like Jace or Jason. Jason. It is Jason. I think it is Jason. Siegel. Jason, Jason Siegel. Siegel. There you go. Um, yeah, that was a good show. I like that. I thought mm. the writing on that was funny. Um, what was some? There was another one that we watched that we were finding joyful recently, and then we were kind of bummed when it was an. Oh, um, I know the. Uh, um, the Righteous Gemstones. Oh, God, that show is good. Super funny. We watched that. We're still behind on that, so we still have some episodes You guys left. watch that? Nope. It's, I don't watch anything. You don't watch anything at all? No. Why it's not? a new show. Don't even ask if I've watched it because I haven't. Why don't you watch television? I don't know. I just, I really haven't in years and years. Really? You still watch, like, Nickelodeon? Not really <laughs> so much. <laughs> like, when you were a little kid, you watched Nickelodeon. I don't really watch that much like at no. home we'll watch an episode or two of something maybe like every other day something like that at most the reason i'm asking that is because Catherine and i discovered a very very famous i think it's a british show it's very very famous but we just started watching the first episode last night and continue it's called black mirror oh that's oh, not yeah. a yeah that's i told you to watch that oh, i did, did watch you? black mirror although i watched it like the, 10 years ago or yeah. whatever Oh, you did? did. You, okay. Did you start at the beginning? Don't yeah. start at episode one. No, I, I, I skipped episode one. It's horrible. The pig one? Yeah. I, I was told not to oh, watch then that. Maybe I was in a different deal because that was not oh, good. the first one. Because I, I think that would have thrown you off. It, it actually is a very interesting commentary mm -hmm. on the world we live in right now, but it's such an abrasive episode that I always say, like, Skip the first episode, go back to it later. Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking opening the series with that. Because the rest of it is so good. I think you're going to love it because you talk about a lot of the things that they touch on all the time. So yeah. why would they be stacked in a different way? Because I watched episode one of season one, and it was about a guy. There, there's a, a an ear implant that you put in, and you could push a button and see... The oh, memories, the memories. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was such about. a good one where he finds out. That was yeah, phenomenal, amazing episode. But that was the first episode on our list. You could be because I don't think that's season one. I think he just might be in a different season. And it that said was a, season one because that's. I don't think that one is season one. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the pig. You would know the pig episode. Is that the one with the like? Is he the mayor or the governor or something? Yeah, like he's kidnap a his daughter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. politician. Yeah, I think you yeah, watched that, it a long time ago. Okay. That looked terrible. Here's the thing: I think you started Black Mirror a long time ago because I was like, you would love it. There's oh, a lot okay. of commentary, All and right. you started on episode one, season one, and I learned real quick. I was like, that is, I gotta start recommending. Yeah, like, that was terrible. Go to the second episode. You watched the third episode in season one. In season one, yeah, that's so good for season really? one. Really? Yeah. So I thought season one was. Mm, quite mediocre how many episodes in the first season three yeah there's only three episodes yeah and so, so that might be why it's stacked so that's the third episode. episode yes and you could have just been continuing from a long time ago and not realize that you push play yeah, maybe and it doesn't i mean it doesn't yeah. matter but like um that's a good one and there's a lot of it episodes like really that good. that go if you take, take take technology and just go a step further and mm -hmm. what it can be used for it's not like the like you know thousands of years in the future it's like 20 and you go yeah. that is so interesting the way those dynamics can play out if that existed are there any other episodes i should avoid um yeah I, once you get farther in the seasons there are but i oh, think there are i think a lot of them are are pretty good yeah because that I think, pig one was terrible yeah the yeah. pig one that is by far it's jarring the most yeah. traumatizing <laughs> I, don't, I think the first two series which is the i think Series three is when it stopped being British. I can't remember. Oh, really? Did it stop being British? It stops at a certain point. Yes. I didn't know it that. gets picked up by a different studio. The first two oh, series okay. I didn't really like so much. Uh, the one with the um, the AI guy that they grow in the tub, that one was pretty good. They grow mm. a guy in the tub. Yep, it's a series two episode one. Really? Are yeah. the one where they. I don't want to say much about it, but it's where they're getting chased and hunted. It's called mm -hmm. White Bear. That one I think you're going to like a lot. Which is one of my favorite suburbs. Yeah. Um, I, like, I like the one where you had to, like, they were locked in, like, the compound and had to ride the bike for points. And he oh, like, the yeah. second episode. That's yeah. Really the minutes. second one. Yep. Yeah. Episode one. Or the season mm -hmm. one. Oh, so that's the second episode of season one. Yeah. He rides a bike for what reason? So it's like he's in, they're in some sort of, like, I would say, like a, 
jail cell, but it's very technological based. And he earns points by riding these stationary bikes. And then he buys, you can buy these like experiences and stuff. And out. it's really, yeah, it's a, it's a weird, hard to explain. Yeah. But. It's kind of like, um, if avatar world was like actually, and it was very depressing in a lot of ways, like they live in these like world where it's just the, the walls are screens and their whole thing is based on digital yeah, points. Yeah. Um, there's another one, season three, episode one. If you're feeling like you want to watch, yeah, that's the grow in the tub one, I think. Oh no, it's se no, that's no, season no. two, season three. Oh, Se season three is episode one is the one that got the series in like the. I remember everyone talking about that one. Season three, episode one is like if Facebook, st if Facebook could you could walk around and judge people and give them thumbs up thumbs down and what your life would be like if mm -hmm. you accumulated points out in the real world by like oh i like your outfit oh, is I'm that the give one where the points. lady's trying to like be friends with the super popular yeah yeah, like she, whatever? yeah. she ha everybody wants to be friends with people out of higher numbers and you can see what number they are by looking at them so oh, i'd be okay. like today i'd be like oh i'm gonna give uh tom a five Tevin a four, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you get a four and a half and you rate everybody with every experience you have and then you can see their number. So yeah. it's like and it's the higher your media. number is, the more like privileges in society you have, basically. Yeah. But you gain them by impressing other people. Exactly. Yes. And being that's fake. A bad nice. idea. That you, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You would love you this would episode. Because you would fake everything. Yeah. yeah so they would all, the idea, they'd yeah. walk up and be like, hey, I made you cupcakes. And you could tell like their number was low and they're trying to like <laughs> suck up to everyone. <laughs> so you would love this I'd like episode. That episode. I that's would like that. Season three, episode one. Yeah. Watch that, that one. That was probably, I think, the best episode of the entire show. I agree. I would say. I, I would say because the social commentary on it is so interesting. Because yeah. the problem with Black Mirror is that a lot of the times it has like a good idea. It's like, you know, what if this technology got taken too far? Yeah. But then they don't really understand like oh. why that would be a bad thing. So they write a completely dog shit ending. Well, the robotic dog one was also terrifying. I don't know if I saw that one. I feel like wasn't there one where there was like the people that were like date speed dating or dating in like the cabin in a woods type of thing and oh no yeah oh, oh yeah I think so but yeah, yeah. There's, there's enough a lot there's of a lot episodes. of good episodes on I there. saw there were what like seven seasons something like that six mm. or seven it depends on what you qualify as a season yeah like the first two series are only three episodes most of them oh okay three and four are six episodes five is three again and then six is five. So five is the most they did in the year. So yeah. let's see. That's six, 12, 18. Tw it's like 26 episodes total for the entire thing. Yeah. So and that's like over one. a five year period, six year uh, period. No, that's over a 12 year period. Tw what? Yeah. Yeah. So they do like two to three series of uh, uh, shows a year. Uh, like one every other, basically. God, that's amazing. Well, I will give it a whirl because I'm telling you uh streaming makes television the best it's ever been because you're seeing things from a lot of other markets and i still love the fact that i'm watching that uh what the hell is an endeavor? endeavor is it endeavor yeah the hour and a half hour and a half things. every episode's an hour and a half long mm. <laughs> it's like, what? but it's really good it the guy who stars in it is really really good so i mean it's kind of nice to have that kind of entertainment at home now mm -hmm. where you have so many choices and, mm -hmm. and great stuff yeah. yeah well we've come so far from the days of sitting down in front of your tv having to watch the tv guide channel yes. or yeah, yeah. I remember that. More channels to scroll through watching it yep. slowly scroll up what's on the next yep. channel i wonder oh it's crap what's on the next channel? oh it's also crap well i do remember when i was a kid you had channel two four, four. five and nine we had nine. fox nine but how about 11? Was there 11. any 11? 11, 11, 11, yep. yep. 45. But I think when I was a kid, 45. there were only three of them. Yeah. But I can't remember which one wasn't around, whether it was 11, 9. I know 4 and 5 were always there. It was probably 11 that wasn't there. If I that wasn't there. That's what I'm thinking, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to this day, I still wish it weren't there. Yeah, the, yeah. When you brought it up, I was like, there really isn't anything that's great on NBC. No. there's like I, You got The Office. Right. And they, again, uh, it's that's it. That there was poker face. That was Let's it. see highest liked, rated NBC shows. I like Thirty Rock. Yeah, I guess Thirty Rock was on there. But yeah, like, I never watched NBC that. doesn't really carry a ton of like sports or anything like that. They don't even. They have, started like, this year streaming. carrying more football, I guess. Yeah, I, I think they know. do I Thursday. Think. It's pretty Tuesday. much all uh, reality kind of thing. Oh no wonder I hate it. Weakest Link is still their number four show. Is it really? <laughs> Jesus, With that's a point been... two six in the eighteen to forty nine demo. Oh God, that's bad. Well, their number one summer twenty twenty three show 
was America's Got Talent, 0.56. Oh, my. How do they still in business? That is a well, the 18 to 49 demo just doesn't watch TV. Really. No, they don't. That That is very true. Highest and scripted shows, Chicago Fire, Chicago Med, Chicago PD. Wow. They really like Chicago over there, apparently. <laughs> well, that's uh, D- Dick Wolf. Mm-hmm. Law and Order, Law and Order SVU, Law and Order Org Crime. Wow. Not a lot of originality over at NBC. I'll t- say that much. No, no. Jeez. No, NBC's not a it's good like, network. It's like when CSI was like, it was CSI Miami, CSI New York, it was yeah. CSI <laughs> over here, CSI <laughs> over there. <laughs> That's very, very true. Were you either one of you two around? Well, you weren't, I know, but were you around when Dick Wolf called into the, the KQ Morning Show? Yeah, I think so. Oh, Remember God. what I asked him? Yeah, the last name thing. His name is Dick Wolf, and I said, you do realize in the phone book your name is Wolf Dick. Yeah, well. I've been putting up with that my whole life, Tom. <laughs> yep. Oh. Like, Tom, you are not the first nor the last person. The last. Also, that's that a that power up. move, name Wolf Dick. Oh, it's that's like- yeah. true. That's like something you'd expect Charlie Sheen would name his character. Yes, in, uh, like yes. A movie. Yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, we got to take a break here because we yes. got Kristen Burt coming up next right after this. This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. It's Tom Bernard for Flagship Ford in Baldwin, Wisconsin. I'm happy to say I purchased an EV Mustang from Flagship and have friends and co-workers who bought new vehicles and used ones from this family-run dealership that's just 20 minutes west of the metro in Baldwin. Whether you want to compare their used car specials, claim Ford financing options, or simply book an oil change or tire rotation, they have you covered at Flagship Ford. New vehicles like the Ford Escape, the Edge, or F-150 pickups with special engine options. Flagship Ford can answer all your questions on your next new vehicle. The month of October is Tire Month at Flagship Ford. Fit your tires for your specific vehicle, any model car, truck, or SUV, and get your tires before the snow flies, just $5 over cost. That's a purchase of four new tires with a $70 rebate gift card on top of the $5 over cost on most brands of tires. Flagship Ford, east of the metro in Baldwin, Wisconsin, and online at FlagshipFord.com. That's FlagshipFord.com. In a world that's racing a mile a minute, a split-second distraction can change everything. I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. Every day we see too many people, heads buried in their phones, unaware of the dangers they're in. Texting and driving isn't just reckless, it's playing Russian roulette with your life and the lives of others. In just four seconds of distraction, you've driven the length of a football field. Is there any text message that's worth your life, that's worth the lives of others? I've been fighting for the rights of the injured for over 30 years. But I'd rather you never meet me in a courtroom. So hear me now. Stop texting and driving. Pay attention. Value your lives and the lives around you. And if you won't, know this. At Bradshaw and Bryant, we're relentless. We won't back down. We bring justice to those that need it. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. With my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. You need to know a guy for your auto repairs, legal issues, banking, and more. The same goes for investment advice. You need a guy to help you be successful, someone you can trust who gets results. Well, I got a guy for you, Josh Arnold. Josh gives you straight talk, not sugar-coated advice about your financial situation. Josh has seen it all when it comes to economic and market conditions, and Josh can make sure that your retirement objectives match your investments. Do yourself a favor and call Josh now for a no obligation, 48 minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose and you'll get a different point of view for your investments. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That is 952-925-5608. You'll be glad that you did and tell him his, his guy, Tom sent you. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. The new Tom Bernard Morning Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com keyword partner. Don't be waving back and forth with Brittany. 
Cut the comedy, sister. I like Britney. You look gorgeous. I like the shiny uh, top. It's very cute. Thank you. (laughs) Who's talking to me? Tom, you also have a shiny, loud (laughs) top. I do have a very shiny, loud top. Do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's running at an incredible speed. Honestly, God, Kristen, we were talking about this a couple hours ago on the show. When I ever have to wear these jackets when it's colder out, I I look like I weigh about 80 pounds more than I They're not slimming. They are not slimming. Yeah, winter clothing in general, not not the most flattering. (laughs) Oh, it's winter clothing is amazing, Kristen. I love a good sweater, but it does when you're short, it totally adds a solid 10 pounds to my frame. (laughs) Like I got good hounds tooth jacket. Like oh, there's dude. so many cute things. I, I own so things. many jackets that I never wear because today in Los Angeles, it's going to be 92. You and my mom say that to me and it makes me irate, but she'll go, it's kind of fun. You know, you guys get to wear layers. I don't get to wear layers because I live in Florida in the winter and I'm like, get out of my house, bitch. <laughs> what? You went from crying. I miss her so much. Yeah. I love my mom so much. Oh, you big baby. Yeah, you don't miss her as much as I miss my mom. So shut up. Are what you if I tried to dead fight? mom card? Like, what if I argued with you? You about can't that? argue that my mother's dead. I know. You can't argue. That's what I'm saying. Like, how do you want someone to respond to that? Shut up. Yeah, you can never you can never trump the dead mom card. <laughs> no, you cannot. No, you, you, really win. you win this round, sir. <laughs> Ah, what the hell? So, Kristen, we've been talking about streaming television and the fact that Frazier came back in a big way. I had just started watching Black Mirror, um, which I watched apparently a few years ago, and there was a pig episode that I just hated. And then you dropped it, and now you're back to it. And now I'm back to it. I'm not going to watch the pig episode again. That that episode was horrendously bad. I love your viewing because you're just like, I hate one episode, so I am never looking at it again. And then you're like, oh, maybe I will pick it up. <laughs> it was six years later. You know, it's a whole different I, kind of, I, I did that with um, Parks and Rec. Oh, yeah. I remember oh. a long time ago when it first started, I watched the first episode and I was like, this is one of the worst episodes of TV I've ever seen right, in my life. Right. And then years later, I came back to it. First episode is horrible. Yeah. Don't watch it. Just skip right to the second episode. It's way better. It's the so whole good. series is wonderful. I mean, as a whole. And when you look yeah. at that, and but I think sometimes you have to be in the right frame of mind sometimes to go through a series. Yeah. And also your sister is Leslie Nope. Mm-hmm. So like you have to watch Park and Rep. Like they are the same person a hundred percent. I love Leslie that. Nope. Leslie Nope. Yeah. 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 Amy Polar. Yeah. She's the Steve oh, Carell of that up that her show. last name is Nope. Yeah, K-N-O-P. 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 She's and really she, stupid. And she is like optimistic about everything and very oh, excitable about is. everything. She literally, Alex dressed up as her for Halloween. And I said, this makes the most sense I've ever seen. Oh, she acts a lot like Very Alex. meta. <laughs> she, her and Alex are exactly the same person. Like they're so excitable. We'll make a sign. They're like, okay. I'm the, when they commit to something, they're like very excitable mm-hmm. and hilarious and just optimistic about everybody and everything. And yeah. all in. Yes. All in, man. So they look a lot alike, too. No, well, they mean, don't look alike. I don't think Amy Poehler and Alex. Oh, I mean, is that Amy both, Poehler? That's who it they're is. Both, I mean, blonde, but other than that, guys, but like, yeah, no, I don't. I but sh- it's the same person. I don't care what you say. That that is Alex. Really? Gee. Yes. I'll have to watch it. I have to give it a whirl. Yeah, does, Amy Poehler's great. Does Amy Poehler sit in judgment of her father? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I actually have a tie to Amy Poehler, my best friend from childhood is cousins with her. So I've had encounters with Amy over the year on a very like personal, like weddings and family events over the years. She's great. Well, it can't be much like Alex if she doesn't criticize her father. I don't think Amy, I mean, in the show, Leslie Nope's dad is not in the show at all. Her mom is like her, the character's mom is, and she's a politician and she's very judgmental. And I don't want to look at you when I say that. Well, the other thing is that has nothing to do with what I was talking. No, about. I was trying to remember if <laughs> the character's dad was in it. I don't remember any episode where the character where Leslie Nope's dad was in it. No, it's more just a shot at Alex for taking shots at me so much. That's pretty much what it. You're such a victim, is what you. Uh, there's no say. question. I've been victimized. It's just, it's painful. You never pick on Alex. You never give her a reason to attack you. I'm gonna tell you flat out. If you ever hear the word victim coming out of my mouth, it ain't about me. No, you're so. 
Oh, Alex makes fun I just of- want to throw out, too, since we're talking Amy Poehler, she has a great memoir that she put out maybe five, six years ago called Yes, Please. So mm-hmm. anyone who is a fan of hers and has not read it, it's a great read, probably a great audio book, too. We, so it is a good book. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I loved it. Her memoir was fantastic. Alex and I both read it because we were both like, let's do this together. And we oh, loved it. Yeah, it was very good. What's the book called? Yes, Please. Yes, Please. All right. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's so funny because I've related to it just because she grew up in my neighborhood of towns, of neighboring towns. So it's just kind of fun to have her sort of reminisce back on that and what it was like in Massachusetts at that time. So do you think television is the best it's ever been? Um, it was. I don't think now it is. <laughs> because of the strike. No, I mean, I'm honest because we, we, we've we turned... We're, we're, we're turning a corner now. Um, you know, if you take a look at what is happening in Hollywood, we have had major downturns, of course, in production. This was the lowest production rate we have seen in decades mm-hmm. because right. of the strikes, um, even lower than pandemic levels. And we are going to see a lessening of content and people have to prepare for that. Now, there's plenty to offer already out there on streaming. It's a time to you know catch up on series that you haven't seen. But it is going to be a slowdown of content moving forward. They're going to look more for quality over quantity in the coming years. uh, Because budgets are very different. And um, we're not going to see probably as many A-list stars jump to television because the budgets aren't there anymore. They're not getting those $100 million deals. So it's, it's going to be a shift. We're going to be able to like mark off the exact year when it happens. I did not realize till today, till Andy started reading the numbers, NBC's ratings are horrendous. Well, their shows are all just, you're talking about quality over quantity. NBC is the exact opposite of that, For a, in especially their scripted shows. There's like, what, three Law & Orders and three Chicago whatevers. But remember, all- that, that strategy works really well for CBS. They can have as many NCISs and CSIs yeah, and the yeah. audience stays. So it's it's kind of interesting. But remember, this fall right now, everything is primarily unscripted television, and people aren't that excited yeah. by it. I'm not. I've never really cared for unscripted television. No, I feel there's, the there's no reason to be. Honestly, it's a lot of game shows, and it's a lot of, they're using celebrities. Celebrities need a paycheck right now, too. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, if you want to know who is over leveraged in their personal lives, <laughs> find out the ones who are doing all like the celebrity wheel of fortune and celebrity <laughs> jeopardy. Right. And they're looking for a paycheck right now. They've got to pay their bills. You know what I was kind of amazed by uh, a few weeks ago. I did not know this because I think he personally is extremely untalented. People love the guy. But one of the producers of Succession is Will Farrell. Really? Yeah. I had no idea he was a producer on that show. A better producer than an actor, I suppose. Yeah, I, I don't enjoy his acting either. I enjoyed him on uh, Saturday Night Live. I'm not going to lie about that. Um, but in terms of his movie career, I love Elf. Yeah, that was a good movie. Pretty yep. much everyone yep. says that Elf is like his Elf. best movie. It's very, yeah, it it's very charming. Um, I find I don't find him that funny. Although people, no. like he was over over the weekend, he was at USC and he was like DJing at his son's frat party. Like people kind of like that part of Will, kind of the personal yeah, side. Like, he's like the cool like dad. That. I feel like he was good. And was it Stranger Than Fiction? That was a a movie he did that I liked. Step um, Brothers. Who's Step Brothers, Step Brothers a lot of people like. Yes, yeah. Um, I mean, he did well in what he was supposed to do for Talladega Nights. Like he, oh yeah, he that role was ridiculous, and he did a good job with that. But then um, I think I think too many of the roles became similar to that. You know, when you start like group. repeating yourself, and you're like, okay, we've kind of seen it. Yeah, yeah it's all the same deal. It's a, I never understood it. I get. It. We have a listener that wrote in and had a question. Um, Aaron wrote in and said, "Can you ask Kristen if she can review?" Uh, for Dick's the musical looks like a lot of fun. Okay, I looked it up too. So looks I first like Dick Sporting Goods. Yeah, like uh, I looked it up because I first I thought, listen, Aaron, you kind of make me say something ridiculous. Um, Dick the what? Dick's the musical. She said it looks like a lot of fun, she, and he wants you to review it. What is it? I don't know. I just saw that it it, it is a real movie. I was a little nervous. I know because you're like, what are we looking at here? Yeah. So yeah, I just. I know I'm trying mm. to see who it stars. Megan the Stallion, Nathan Lane, Megan uh, Bowen Yang is I'm in it. Out. I love Bowen Yang. Uh, I do love Bowen Yang. 
He's one of the SNL guys, the Asian watched, guy. No. I have not watched SNL oh, since the cone has. He's all oh, but Bowen Yang is. You know, I see a lot of him on TikTok, and uh, I always find him really funny. All right, I'll get my hands on Dick's musical. Don't say it like that. <laughs> I'll get my hand on. <laughs> I'll get my hands on it. That's great. It'll look so is that almost as bad hands? as the dildo? <laughs> we have a guest that came in. Yes. Uh, Somebody yeah. should probably greet yeah. our guest, what? I would think. Well, I didn't know if you wanted me to just leave. Go in get the middle him. Of... Well, he's booked for 1030. Okay. Andy's going to do it. He's got it. I just want to make sure when people get here that we embrace yeah, them right. as our, yeah, our guests. All right, texting. Forget texting. Well, I mean, Pretend text. you're a grown-up. Yeah, Tevin. Face to face. I got your text. He'll be standing downstairs if I do nothing. So. Oh, here we go. <laughs> now, when the when the when the guests show up, we got to seat them right away because otherwise, they'll be out there forever. Yeah. So, in any case, Kristen, um, we just. I'm seriously, I think streaming is the best it's ever been, but now you're telling me it's going to cut. It, more it was. Back. I mean, th this is going to. Be, we're not going to see that shift probably until 2024 when oh, we're okay. like, where of our where are all of our shows? Really? Remember, the strike is not over for the actors, and they are, they are right. not at the negotiating table at all right now. And some people are thinking this could go into 2024, which would be atrocious. It would be a tragedy, honestly, if it happens, yeah. if it goes that far, um, because we then we will be stuck with just recycled content through mid year 2024. At that point. Right. I, and I really hope it doesn't because the economy has been hurt. You know, production's down 54%. There mm -hmm. were only two days, two days in the last quarter that people were on a sitcom set. That's uh -huh. it. It's unbelievable when normally there'd be hundreds and hundreds of productions working at this point. So um, it's, it's not great, to be honest. What are they going to do about talk show television? Because it's not working anymore. Do you know who they're bringing to daytime TV? No, Ken Jong. Ken Jong. I saw that promo for that. Yeah. Yeah, he just filmed a pilot for his daytime talk show, and it's expected to debut in the fall of 2024. Um, so he's kind of an interesting voice okay. in that whole landscape. I, you know, I, but I doubted, I doubted Drew Barrymore, and she's turned out to be sort I of know. a breakout. I'm he is okay. So I watch once in a while. We'll watch The Masked Singer because there's kiddos in my life that like watching it. I don't know the over the top silly vibe. I just I, that would be hard for me to watch. And I, I honestly, I guess I, you're right because I felt the same way about Drew Barrymore, and she's great. Um, but yeah, the he, him and The Masked Singer is just corny. I mean, it's which I'm sure that's the job, right? It's the dad jokes. And you know what's interesting about daytime TV? If it this show is a failure, he will get two seasons because that is kind of the typical contract they run for daytime uh -huh. television. Yeah. So if he does not get renewed after season two, you know that it was a total bomb. If he makes it into that third season, that's when you know you have a success. There you have it. I got I, I have to check this because I'm I'm not understanding something. Who posts our guest on the on the calendar? Uh, calendar, I think it's right. the calendar because it says calendar. Justin Sutherland's on from 10 30 to noon, and then the other one says he's on from 11 to 12 30. Mine says there's 11 to 12 30, and they're both yeah. wrong. I only have one. I uh, see, I don't know why there's two on there, but yeah, it's 11, but we're not on till 12 30. This is true. Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess I don't know why. I apologize, I don't know why it says 12 30. So now you have to start paying attention. Is that what you're saying? Can uh, we write yeah, this yeah. in Tevin's <laughs> HR portfolio? Yeah, we put it in his portfolio. Can guys. I ask Kristen something? No, I just want to wrap this up and make sure that when we book someone, it's got to be booked at the right time. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, what are you going to ask who what? Can I ask Kristen a question? Nope, you're out of the mix. Um, are you guys dying over the excerpts of Britney Spears' memoir? We are. And, I, you know, yesterday morning I wrote an article Regarding her dad and how oftentimes he was body shaming her while she was a child and a teen. And the excerpt that I know you're probably referring to with Justin Timberlake, that he encouraged her to have an abortion while they were dating. Uh -huh. She didn't get pregnant and she wanted to have the child. Kind of dropped mid-morning after we had already done like our Britney Spears has a memoir coming out. And I don't think I stopped thinking about that all day yesterday. Because... Yeah. Um, 
to get a little political, and I'm sorry about this, but for women, the Roe versus Wade decision has been, I think, really a struggle for a lot of us, you know, and just having a choice and having a voice and things like that. And I feel like in this situation, and, and people should be able to decide whatever they want. And I feel like the way Brittany described the story, yeah. she didn't really have a voice in that decision. Like it was Justin kind of driving the decision and maybe had she been a little bit stronger, she would have felt like I really want to have this baby and she didn't. Yeah. Um, and then to learn that her song every time, yeah, we no always problem. thought it was about Justin Timberlake. But when you go back and look at the images in the music video, it appears to be her referring to the child she almost had with Justin Timberlake. And it's kind of heartbreaking. Yeah. I think on top of that too is, uh, um, when they were, if, okay, so Justin Timberlake's team, when this book came out, they were like, we need to vet this. We need that. We need to know what's in this. So they gave it to the publisher saying, you can go through this. They like, so if some of this stuff, they like triple had to prove <laughs> that it was either real or like, you can't dispute that it's fake. So like they had a chance where you go, this thing's been vetted through and through and through this book. And if that's true, and he still wrote Cry Me a River about her like that. You go, man, this guy really got away with like not being a terrible guy, but not being a good guy. And that's where you kind of go, man, this Justin Timberlake stuff. No wonder he's falling back on NSYNC being like, yeah, I'll do NSYNC stuff now. Like you can just feel it all out. I heard he's a raging prick. That's he, what I heard. Listen, Sorry, the, the history you're giving, I think you're giving him too much <laughs> slack, honestly. I honestly want to say that he not only has a record of cheating on not yeah. only his girlfriends, but also his wife. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we have evidence of that. He threw Janet Jackson under the bus, and I will die yeah, on that he hill. Did. He did. He yeah. did. And listen, black women have it harder. <laughs> she was banned for almost a decade yeah. on radio stations and from the Grammys and everything else. I, I don't, I don't necessarily go. I, I know Janet Jackson forgives it, and that's the only person that matters in the equation. Yeah. But I'm like, huh? A and then to hear all of this story about Britney Spears, and by the way, he also went on a radio station and talked about her taking virginity. away her virginity, which yeah. again is not his what? story to tell. It's not his story to tell. And, Jesus. but you know what, Kristen, I do have to stop and go that like, if he came out with an actual, Hey, you guys, that was kind of the times asking about virginity is inappropriate. Talking about somebody's virginity is inappropriate. It was a part of the times that we mm -hmm. would ask those things and people would respond and people would have those. And it's like, there is a part of me that goes, yeah, like it's, it's not, it wouldn't make for a good guy, but it was kind of what men were like in the public eye back then is like, how can I get myself away from this? How can, you know what I mean? So like a part of me goes, I wanted to give Justin D Timberlake the benefit of the doubt, but he's just never came out and said much on this where I go, if you could learn from this and say grow, but like you've always been kind of lucky enough to just be a part of the good guy group and never have to be accountable for any of your actions. You're hundred percent correct. He has to be continuously be called to the table on this. And it's, it's like, Hey, it, Oh, we just have evidence of you like video evidence of you and another woman like kind of holding hands and very drunk in new Orleans. And so you have to be called to the table to apologize to that. Oh, all during the time we later find out that your wife is pregnant at home. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? He's constantly, he's called to the table on Janet Jackson. He was called to the table on Britney Spears. And I do agree that was even the celebrity gossip sort of atmosphere at the time yeah. it certainly wasn't right but that's yeah. how we all sort of operated so 100 yeah. he was operating under those norms at the yeah. time thank you but, that's exactly the verbiage i was trying to use thank you no but you're absolutely right on that but but, but we learn and we do better but i don't feel like we should constantly be calling him to the table going justin he should want to. Yeah, he should want to go, oh, my God, I'm mortified by my behavior. I can't believe that I made that music video. I can't believe that I did that to Janet Jack. Like, you should want to. And, like, Tom, you know this. You've been in media long enough. If you don't are embarrassed about some things you've said 10 years ago, you're probably not growing as a person. Like, right. And and you would want to clarify, like, hey, you know, I said this a while. I'm kind of like, I wish I didn't. I don't love that about me. Like, you should want to, to fix that. No, you know? I agree.
I honestly agree too, because I, I even know in my career at the time there used to be like, who's the worst dressed on the red carpet? It was fun to do that on social media. But the more I started to do red carpet award shows and things like that, you never leave the house thinking you look the worst dressed. You don't need people telling you you look terrible or anything else like that. Uh, you know what I mean? Everyone goes out thinking that they're looking their best. Yeah. And even that's like such a small thing. Yeah. But I think small. it's important to do better and just say, you don't have to sit there and say, I didn't like that dress. Move on. Yeah. Just talk about who was your favorite and why you thought they looked beautiful. Yeah. There's a lot of change that happens and it's kind of like, you go with it. I mean, there we've all, like you said, I mean, you've been entertainment reporting for long enough. Like things, things were wild in the early 2000s. Like it was. They absolutely were. And I, I always look back. I mean, it was a really fun time to live in Los Angeles, to be honest. I mean, the paparazzi swarms were exciting to be around and you never knew where like Lindsay Lohan and Brittany and, and Paris Hilton were, were going to pop up. But at the same time, it was really damaging to a lot of young women as we look back on it now. And I, I think entertainment journalism as a whole has really tried to do a lot better. We have a long ways to go, but the, the times have changed. And I think that Justin still sometimes operates under that like boy band era. Yeah. And they always say like your growth when you become famous stops at that year. So like if you became yeah. famous at 18, you're still kind of, you could be 30 now, but you're still kind of like 18 and famous in your mind. Yeah. Thanks, Kristen. That was really interesting. What a woman. That's all I have to say. Alex, you've met him. What did you think of him? I met him at like a, he was sitting at a table with the rest of NSYNC and I was in a room full of people. And you were at an age where you really held him accountable, right? How yeah, old were you? I was but asking the hard hitting questions. <laughs> it's like I'm a thinking. tween. You were like, uh, the, the social construct yeah. of boys' bads in general. Yeah, I was like 10. You're like, maybe. what? Yeah. What's but Alex, how do you feel about yeah. him now, knowing what you know? No, no, no. It's well, foods. Yeah. Justin Sutherland has joined us in the studio, ladies and gentlemen. He'll be our special guest on the Family Hour coming up in about fifteen minutes. Wanted to have you come, man. You look very professor. He's got the glasses. Got um, the there's a ring on your finger that I'm going to at some point need to see. Uh oh, it's, it matches the watch. It's gore. you make my little <laughs> ring look like. <laughs> Is it emerald? So oh my god. Okay, cool. <laughs> so Justin, to close out that uh, that whole story about. Uh, What's his name? Timberlake. Yep, Justin mm -hmm. Timberlake. His Bill, name Timberlake. Is it Bill Timberlake? What's Bill his name? Timberlake. Yes. William Timberlake. I was say, the old William Timberlake. NSYNC came to town, and Alex was ten years old, so she wanted to go and meet them. So I okay. brought she and her friend backstage to meet them, and I will never forget this. It she was like a, a meet and greet thing. It, it wasn't was like I was okay. saying, like, "Hello, Justin, so nice to meet <laughs> well, you." Well, there was only about like, ten people you, there. No, I'd say there were probably forty to was fifty it, people. No. Was it so exciting? You weren't even there. I was sitting right next to you. <laughs> no, you weren't. <laughs> yes, I was. Mom brought me. I was with you because I had. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, here's here's the deal. <laughs> What's the real story? So she yeah. brings Let's her friend Catherine with her. Here. She brings her friend. Where are you from originally? Uh, Apple Valley. Right, right oh, down. so you so understand, so I understand talking around here. Absolutely. Yeah, how people right. talk. So you're going to like this story because Alex's friend get to, uh, gets to ask a question. Yeah, you have to raise your hand and they could call on you. Yes. Her. She raised her hand, called on her. And uh, I said, no, young lady in the front row, what's your question? And she said, very Minnesota-like, what's you guys' favorite foot? <laughs> and he <laughs> went, what? And they all were like. Huh? She said foots. <laughs> she said foots. What's foots. your guys' favorite foods? What's your guys', What's your guys favorite, foods? favorite foods? And they were all they had no idea what the hell she said. Right. Yeah. And somebody was like, food. Well, food. 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 Uh -huh. You guys's like guys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no one says guys's. Nobody What's your says guys's guys's favorite foods. Most Minnesota. Minnesota. And then just staring. Guys. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> just staring Waiting for the answer. And they're like, oh, what? God, we need a translator. What was his favorite food? They all said like cereal. Yeah, what? cereal. You know, because they were just a teen boy <laughs> time, you know, nice. like, and they were really trying to like market them towards I kids. Oh, your I'm phone's yelling at us. Why is my thing. phone uh, every be, morning? I know, and all of a sudden, shut up. I just got a call. Now I'm getting this. I got to shut my phone up. You need to put your phone on do not disturb. Yeah, yeah, I did. Did. He doesn't know how to do that. Here, here's a do not disturb. It's off. There we yeah, go. Yeah, show them. <laughs> alone, show that phone who's off the grid. Off the grid. No, it's true. So anyway, so uh, oh my God, we got to take a break here in a couple of minutes. You're almost done, Kristen. I know, shocking. Okay, we got two minutes. So what else do you want to talk about? 
Oh, one other thing I just want to mention, because I know we've been talking about you know TV and movies and everything. Um, the one sector of the entertainment industry that is killing it right now is what they're calling the experience economy, which is concerts. Um, and because of the success of the Sphere in Las Vegas, they're hoping to do more around the globe. Um, besides, obviously, Taylor Swift and Beyonce, which we've talked about nonstop, um, we've seen concerts this year like Harry Styles, Ed Sheeran, Elton John, Bruce Springsteen. Um, those are the ones that are sort of, it seems to be a post-pandemic surge, but Live Nation is anticipating the next couple of years to be a huge boon to not only um, musical concerts, but they're also saying that stand-up comedy is also going to see a big boon. And a lot of that is coming off of the success of people breaking out on TikTok, which I thought was kind of interesting. But wait a second. All the comedians are dead. Rest in peace. <laughs> Oh, Scott, I lost like seven comedian friends during that whole pandemic deal. Not because really that's a lot. Would any, were, were any of them? I don't think any of them died of COVID. COVID. They all died of no, being comedians? Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> I mean, yeah. come on, like Bob Saget's death was oh, yeah, that so was bizarre. Weird. Yeah, That was really sad. He hit his head. Turned out he hit his head. Do they know why? No, I think they just... don't. And unfortunately, the conspiracy theorists still kind of hound oh, yeah. his widow, Kelly Rizzo, about it because the family sealed the the uh, the documents and everything. Oh, um, yeah. And so they think that they're hiding something because, you know, everything has to be a conspiracy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's like, let it be what it is. Why yeah. do we need to know? Yeah, I don't want to know. That's true. He's a wonderful business. guy. Like, what? It's that weird true crime obsession that people mm -hmm. have. And so it yeah. gets fueled yeah. online. Well, there's also, yeah. it's a very human thing to not be satisfied with the answer of, you know, just a the universe bit. is chaotic, yeah. life sucks sometimes, what do you do? We're talking about I'm this. great at that. You're like accepting that? Awesome I'm great at that. that. Like ignorance not. is bliss. We were just talking oh, about man. that. We're like, hey, if you want to be, if, if be saying that you need the earth to be flat, if you're a flat earther and that gets you to sleep yeah, at night, like, like, fine. Who the hell we cares? get it. I don't know how my computer it. works or my car works. Yeah. And I, so, but it works that's and true. that's good enough for me. If someone believes the earth is flat, it doesn't affect me. It does exactly. Exactly. I, I you know what it does? Happens. It does affect the families because you, uh, you prolong their grief process. And I think that that's really awful. Well, well, here's the thing, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about a personal experience. I think a lot of people knew that uh, Ellen DeGeneres' DJ, Stephen Twitch Boss, yeah. died by suicide last December. He is not only my neighbor, uh, but he was a longtime friend of mine for over a decade. Um, and there are some questions surrounding, like, why it happened, and nobody saw it coming and everything else. But people continue to hound his widow, Allison, yeah. all the time, I that she much. knew something or she was involved in this, and it wasn't a suicide. And... You know, honestly, even with my own grief, it it like reading it online is awful. And I cannot imagine what it is like for Allison and her three kids who are all under the age of 15. Mm. Oh, that's terrible. That yeah. is People terrible. always want an answer, though, no matter what. They yeah. do. All right. Well, behave the rest of the day. I will do my best, but I will see you all tomorrow. Talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Thanks, Kristen. We'll take a quick break. Be right back in a couple of minutes right after this. This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Listen live on the Tom Bernard Show app or at TomBernardShow.com. This is Bob Sansevier, and I want to tell you about Dave Bialki from Bialki Law. Dave represented my wife, Mary, when she had a significant workplace injury. She was very happy with the job Dave did. If you have a work-related injury and have Dave represent you, I'm betting you'll be happy too. Dave is a down-to-earth guy. He grew up in northern Minnesota, rides a Harley, and worked various jobs doing concrete, electrical, plumbing, roofing, and carpentry work. Dave works for people with work-related injuries. If you work construction, or anywhere for that matter, and you're hurt or even just hurting, you should talk to Dave. Let's face it, our bodies wear out. If your body is worn out from work, if your knees or back or shoulders hurt from things you do at work, do what Mary did. Call Dave and talk to him about it at Bialki Law to set up a free initial conversation consultation. The number to call is 763-571-2410. That's 763-571-2410. Or visit BialkiLaw.com. That's B-I-A-L-K-E Law.com. Recently, Jim Paul of Valley Buick GMC was contacted by a company that does on-site sales. Jim was confused. 
Wait, they don't know anything about us. Our staff, our reputation, most importantly, our customers. Hey, pal, no problem. We do them all over the country. You know, get the manager off the roof sale, inflatable gorilla sale, and our favorite, the 13-hour sale with a giant clock that goes to 13. Urgency, baby. We bring our crew because, well, your people are, let's just say, a little uh, laid back. And the pricing? Nothing special, sport. But Jim thought, we price competitively every day. Our prices are special. We definitely don't need these guys. But sale does convey some urgency, so we made a bold decision for his fine dealerships. Announcing the Valley Buick GMC 365-day sale. And we can even extend it a couple years or so. I got the Air Dancer guy, scratch-offs, plastic keys, bubble machine, box. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley or Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Hurry. Why should your business bank with North American Banking Company? Here's Landon and Gavin Miller of D&B Plating. I've always been impressed with their speed of answers to our questions, uh, and that has allowed us to expand and capitalize on opportunities in the market. North American Banking Company has never made us feel like a number. They've always treated us as a partner. For more information about North American Banking Company, go to nabanco.com or stop by any one of their Twin Cities locations. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, Justin Sutherland in the studio with us. We're going to have him on the family show in just about 10 minutes, something like that. But now this is not fair because now I have to like you because I know he's there. You do. Oh, you really? Do. That's, yeah, walk by him. He's a, see, I thought your dad was about your age. <laughs> Every time we're out, people think he's my brother. <laughs> he's aging in reverse, though. I think he's a vampire. <laughs> like he, was, he's, he he's gets younger. So what's he doing? What? How do you know him? I've just known him for forever. Yeah. Uh, just one of those people that you know. I mean, he says it was might have been in a. I don't know. He's all over the place. Might have been in a what? You were going to say uh, one of the life. I mean, he's been with Lifetime for what thirty years now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So you had to be the one right over, right across the street. Yeah, right over at uh, Sam's Park. Yeah, that it had to be that. I was just there, and I said I was coming to see you, and he was like, "Tell Tom to come." Get his ass in the gym. I do. I should go see him. He's <laughs> always been a very, very nice man. Just a great guy. Yeah, he is. I don't know if I'd want to piss him off. No, you definitely. Don't. <laughs> is, is he constantly working out there, or does yeah. he work there? Yeah, he's one of the directors for Lifetime Fitness. So oh, he's, he's we, we opened. Time. Yeah, we opened I'm... the first club together back in the day. He made me lay on. Honestly, God, really? Oh my yeah. God, I'm heading there next to play he tennis. Made me lie on my application when I was 14. <laughs> say I was 15, so I could start working. That's and I haven't hilarious. stopped ever since. Hilarious. So yeah, I opened the first Lifetime with him. So yeah. that's amazing. Now I got to go over there and say hello. I've seen him a couple of years. Well, during COVID, no, right. I just a whole different deal. Yeah, but, but that's probably the last time I saw him was just before COVID. Oh yeah, but right. I've known him. When he started, what about like 15, 20 years ago or something? Ninety-seven. Honest to God, so twenty-six years ago. Yeah. I'm getting old. I forgot. <laughs> you are getting old. <laughs> yes, you are. Can confirm. Yeah. What? You're getting no. Not you. No, I mean, in, in the next segment, we'll talk a lot about you, but this I'm going to dedicate this one to your dad because I really like your dad. No, he's, he's, a, good he's, a, he's a great guy. Well, what's his he first is. name? Kerry. Kerry, okay. Yeah, and I'm, seriously, he, every time I would see him, he'd go, hey, Tom, it's great to have you back in the gym. It's just, you know, just very pleasant. Oh, my God, next time I go there, I'm going to be like, give me Terry right now. <laughs> yeah. I need to talk to I Terry. I got some grievances Kerry, with Justin. Kerry, Kerry. Kerry, I'm sorry. Yeah. What did I say? Yeah. You said Terry. Okay, like well, I need to write this down because that, knowing somebody at Lifetime is like the most VIP thing in the it world. Oh, <laughs> like, we if you drop oh, a okay. Carrie Sutherland at any Lifetime, oh, you'll be well taken care of. Thank yeah, God. I'm heading bad. there next. Yeah, Literally, oh I'm going to go play tennis. Which one are you going to? Uh, Eden Prairie playing tennis at noon. Where's the Eden Prairie one? Oh, there's two, actually. Eden Prairie. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's in Eden, Eden Prairie. Prairie. Yeah, it's over by, I don't know if you know Costco or like by the mall. By Mall of America? No, Eden Prairie Center. Eden Prairie Center? Is that still open? Yeah. There's like a, uh, there's a. It's kind of tucked away in a weird there's, area. There's I weird stuff wildfire. in that mall. Well, Shields is in that mall, so mm -hmm. yeah. There's, I've never been to Shields, but I heard it's great. It um, great. and then they have like paintball. There's some odd things they're putting in malls nowadays right. where they're yeah, trying to weird. make it stay afloat. But yeah. there's Rose, a VR station. Yeah, Ro Rosedale has VR. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. because I mean, everybody shops huh. online, right. so nobody's going there to shop. So you're like, oh, well, you That's can true. come play games and go to the arcade and like the mall of america has go-karts in it they're like, smart to pivot though because i in the winter i will take my one-year-old and we will just walk around the mall and they've got like old-fashioned where you put quarters yep. in the machine mm -hmm. things and i'll just sit there for hours with quarters just like what do you want next girl yeah, we were in a mall in <laughs> hutchinson yeah it was hutchinson we went there there's like a kids play place they yeah. can go to mm -hmm. so we spent like probably a good hour and a half there yeah. and then we left 
And then he spent another probably hour just climbing around on all those things without the quarters in them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just climbing to, onto yeah. each one. Yeah. You had to and go to touch all of them. What was going on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that that did just fine. But yeah. there was, um, even out there, there was uh, like a, uh, what do you call it? Like a LAN. What the hell did they used to call them? It's like, it's a place where people can go to play computer games. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, but they had a VR setup. There was this kid playing some VR game in like a big arena kind of thing. Mm. And this was out in, yeah, far from the city. But VR is very affordable and very accessible now. See? See? And it's, 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 it is true that people don't really go to malls to shop anymore. No. Isn't that sad? It is kind of weird. You're right about that. Because you go to these... Like Southdale, mm -hmm. they have busy times, but they're not always busy. Yeah. But yeah. some of these other, like Eden Prairie Mall, I hardly ever see anyone in there. I go there a lot. I do a lot of really, like, what people would look at depressing walking just with a one-year-old. Yeah, but do you run into a lot of people? No. Well, I just when I was a kid, go. we hung out. I mean, the mall was the so, I mean, you, oh, it was yeah. the place. Your to mom be. could give you twenty dollars. Yeah. You could eat three meals. You could go to the arcade. You could buy something at Spencer's. Yep. You could spend a full eight-hour yep. day oh, at yeah. the mall. And you always knew like who would give you free samples because right. you try to make that twenty dollars last. Yep. Oh my! We used to get dropped off at the Mall of America. Of course. Oh and wow! Then you knew that you couldn't go into the main corner stores because at a certain point there was curfew, and yep. if you go in there, they would stop you. So it was like, okay, we got to stay centralized now. Speaking like, of Carrie, he was one of those. Uh, <laughs> When they started doing volunteer, parents volunteered at ID Kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sixteen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he was one of the guys who stood at the entrance of the malls, bouncing kids. Oh, did Carrie? <laughs> did Carrie also have that loose like uh, morals with age at that time too? When he was telling kids. <laughs> oh <laughs> well. <laughs> I'm just saying, he said, let's, let's lie on your, oh, right. uh, your right. lifetime. You, uh, he, was, he just wanted me to start working. So right. pay some bills. He was like, yeah, yeah. go in the mall. <laughs> yeah, play, exactly. yeah. He's like, you're old enough to work at lifetime, not old enough to be in the mall. <laughs> get, <laughs> out exactly. get, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of work. Just <laughs> so great about my life. I know we got to get going here and take about a five minute break before the other show. But you guys talk about this stuff and I just think about my own life. You always reflect back on your own life. I am still the only person I know. That went to one of the malls and they tore it down. <laughs> Brookdale. Oh, when I was growing up in North Minneapolis, you always went to Brookdale. Mm -hmm. It was the second one. I think Southdale was first and then mm -hmm. Brookdale was second. I had to go to the Hoodlum Mall. They ended up tearing it down. Dang. Mine was Burnsville Center. And that one, I think, is on the <laughs> precipice of being yeah. down. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They have like yeah, six some, stores open. I've heard some terrible things yeah. about yeah. what goes on at the It's Burnsville like a third world mall. bus stop in yeah, there. It's, it's crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's wild. Wild. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> but honestly, God, only I would go to a mall they end up tearing down because too many hoodlums hang out there. Well, you were part of the problem. Yes. I was part of the problem. There's no question about it. Why don't we take a break? Justin Sutherland is going to say, you're going to stay with us. Yeah, I'll stay. This is, I'm very excited to have Justin on. Yeah. This is going to be. Oh, well, so I was going to say. Otherwise, I'd leave. No, because I get he's, kicked out he's responsible for some of my favorite eating establishments here in the Twin Cities. So I'm excited. <laughs> So you, you're using them. That's what you're saying. If, I mean, if a free meal comes out, <laughs> no, I got you a free meal. So, Use me up. Use uh, me up. Until you use me up. I love that song. We will be back with everybody. Well, Brittany won't be here. I'm getting kicked out. I'm going to go hang out with some... Carrie because honestly, like if I could get any sort of rep or he is... any farther, I get... I get looked at like I am the poorest person at Lifetime all the time, and I just need a little bit of love. Go over there, introduce yourself, and if you don't tell me he's one of the most polite, nicest people I've ever met, I'd be shocked. He comports himself very well, don't you think? He does. I mean, he, you can tell he, like he's in a powerful position. And yeah. you can, he doesn't push that on you, but you can just tell that he is. Wow. He carries himself that way. He does carry himself that way, but he will. I mean, I've never seen him not go to somebody and say, hey, you did a good job. It was always a, what a good job you're doing. That's the kind of guy his father is. Oh, I'm excited. He's I'm a ex great guy. I'm excited to meet your dad. Yeah. Now, you're what if you turn out to be an asshole? Though? It's Justin. very fun. Like, <laughs> I think we're, we're headed down that path. You're so, so lovely. I, I also wish I could stay. But I, I work I in ki kitchens. I mean, <laughs> yeah, 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 there you go. Get I'm an off. asshole. <laughs> get pissed off. We'll be back with Justin and everybody else in five minutes.
In a world that's racing a mile a minute, a split second distraction can change everything. I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. Every day we see too many people, heads buried in their phones, unaware of the dangers they're in. Texting and driving isn't just reckless, it's playing Russian roulette with your life and the lives of others. In just four seconds of distraction, you've driven the length of a football field. Is there any text message that's worth your life, that's worth the lives of others? I've been fighting for the rights of the injured for over 30 years, but I'd rather you never meet me in a courtroom. So hear me now, stop texting and driving. Pay attention. Value your lives and the lives around you. And if you won't, know this, at Bradshaw and Bryant, we're relentless. We won't back down. We bring justice to those that need it. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. With my client on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. You need to know a guy for your auto repairs, legal issues, banking, and more. The same goes for investment advice. You need a guy to help you be successful. Someone you can trust who gets results. Well, I got a guy for you, Josh Arnold. Josh gives you straight talk, not sugar-coated advice about your financial situation. Josh has seen it all when it comes to economic and market conditions. And Josh can make sure that your retirement objectives match your investments. Do yourself a favor and call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll get a different point of view for your investments. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That is 952-925-5608. You'll be glad that you did. And tell him his his guy, Tom, sent you. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take personal care dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Tom Bernard is back. Every weekday, you'll hear Tommy B, Brittany Arneson. Yes, that Brittany Arneson. Along with Tom's pals, Kent Herbeck on Fridays, Bob Sansevier, Mike Stretch Gelfan, Tim Lammers, and from Channel 5 Eyewitness News, Chris Eggert and Kristen Burt on entertainment and pop culture. It's Tom and the crew with opinions on news, opinions on life, opinions on entertainment, and of course, opinions on opinions on other people's stupid opinions. The Tom Bernard Show is a podcast, so you can listen when you want to listen. In the car, on the way to or from work, at home, on the job site, or wherever you need your Tommy B Show fix. Hear the show on the Tom Bernard Show app in your app store, as a podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts, or see it on YouTube on the Tom Bernard Show channel. Ooh, I got to clear my throat on the air. I do that constantly. That was good. Yes, you do. That's what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show with Alex Barfard Rasmussen. Co-host, Catherine yeah. Brennan. Uh, these are Let's really loud. Again. These are really loud. I can't help you. I can oh, help you. Thank you, dear. I think it's this one. <clears throat> We're going to start all over, Andy. We are? Much yeah. better. Oh, uh, I don't even know if I can do that. Oh, if you don't want to do it, it's no big deal. What happens if I press this button? <laughs> Great. No. That's great. I would hope the engineer Sounds would like know. Me trying to figure out turning on and off the lights in the kids' classroom. They have like the most confusing light switches. Yeah, there's three of them, and yeah. they're you like have to our push old house twice. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I can't. I can't. 
You can't get it done. Is that what you're saying? Get it done. Was that Justin coming back in, or did he just leave? Not quite yet. Now I have two yeah, cameras. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> You're covered. I just never know what's happening in this place. I always just wave my hand in front of one, and I'm like, "This is the one that is oh, the lights on, computer. so it's got to be the right one." All right. Yes. Anyway, welcome Anywho. to the family with Alex Brandt, Bernard Rasmussen, co-host Catherine Brandt, our special guest. Say it. Uh, say me. <laughs> Justin Sutherland here. Good morning. Yay. We do. Kevin Pittman. <laughs> And Danny Brant Bernard. <laughs> there, we're all back. We're all in studio. Everything is good. Everything it's is wonderful. Good. We like it. Justin is with us. Catherine, you know Justin's father. I do. <laughs> she goes, I'm very do? scared. <laughs> who's, your, who's your dad? Who's your daddy? <laughs> who's your daddy? <laughs> <laughs> who's your daddy? Uh, 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 Carrie Sutherland over at Lifetime. Oh, okay. You know Carrie over there. I, yeah, I know her, yeah. Great. Him, him, him I mean, sorry. Her. <laughs> He's like, I'm Carrie. familiar with her. I'm sorry, I'm not in the right headspace for doing Clearly this at all today. She is very yeah. close. Sorry. <laughs> How fine. are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm great. I understand you've got a. This is yours, your creation, this cookbook. That that is my book. We Northern Soul. Yeah. Oh, a different little take on from Minnesota Southern Soul food. You got any collard greens in there? I think I have the best collard greens uh, anywhere. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> where do you buy those though? You, yeah, do they have collard greens at Byerly's? Yeah, you can get them anywhere. Can yeah. you really? Yeah, they've made yeah, a, they've made a big resurgence, Absolutely. I think. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. very good oh, for you. They yeah. really are. Like they super are. fibery and, and, and yeah. stuff. Yeah, they're great for you. Yeah, we just saute them with butter and garlic. That's all you need, really. I mean, yeah. Tasty. Uh, he's like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> we can ramp that up. You can we ramp can. it up, pal. <laughs> Make it a little more That's exciting. Like, no, no, yeah, we spent time. I spent a lot of time in Florida. Okay. And so there's a lot of Southern cooking down there. I just got back from the Keys two days ago. You oh, did? Yeah. Oh, nice. Where'd you go? Uh, was it Isla Morada? Oh, the island over there? oh yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Sort That's of midway midway yeah. through. Right midway mm -hmm. through. Exactly. Where did you stay? Uh, it's called the Postcard. I don't know that it's one. A, I don't know it's that a one pretty, either. I mean, huge resort. I mean, they got like yeah. 19 yeah. properties on the resort. But... Isn't it amazing how what, what they can fit on that I tiny know. little <laughs> sandbar? They're <laughs> like, where? Really? how are you putting all this stuff here? Well, not to mention how they have to rebuild it all every like five years or so. Yeah. And all the houses on stilts. And, yeah, yep, you can yep. jog from one side of the island to the other in five minutes, and mm -hmm. still they have a giant resort. I don't yep. understand. Basically, well, they did finally reopen uh, uh, Little Palm. Little Palm. Yeah, but now it's forty thousand dollars a minute. So yeah, well, I don't there think is. we're ever going back. <laughs> there. Have you, ever, you ever been at that place? Just yeah. what's that? Uh, it's Little, called Little Palm Island. It's I down just. It's about thirty miles. Up Little Torch from Key. West. Key. Okay. And then so you take it's a boat. past Al Morada. Yeah. It's a little bit past that one. Okay. Yeah. But I may have been through it. I mean, I've been down to, to Key West. So I'm probably no, driven. this is like a fancy schmancy. Yeah. You got to take a boat to it. Yeah, I was not, I was not that fancy. <laughs> yeah, <it's> fancy, fancy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have to take a boat to it. You can't just. Matter of fact, yeah. it's the island that the Kennedy family bought to shoot the movie. Uh, PT. PT 109. Oh, wow. Okay. They bought it. He bought the, bought the island. island. Put you electricity, know, plumbing, all that stuff <laughs> right. out to the island. Isn't that amazing? That's yeah. The amount of money you have to have and like yeah. to buy an island, buy, yeah. buy an <laughs> island, get electricity, plumbing, all that, just to make a movie. Well, yeah. Little Palm is booked from December twenty second through April, so you can't even get in. I'm pretty sure fine. the billionaires have taken have, over, have, oh, have, taken yeah. over, because nobody else can afford to be there. No, there's no, no question way. about it. Yeah. No doubt about it. All right, let's see what the rates are here. Let's uh oh, we're, we're gonna, gonna go see the rates of Little Palm. Yeah, we're gonna go in April. Be uh, cheaper in April. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's that's wedding season. That is wedding season. Okay, so how many people are in? One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll include Dan and Melissa. So that's eight people. We need our own bungalows. Yeah, one hundred percent. Four four rooms or five rooms? Should we go? Let's, Let's go, go five, five rooms. Five. Okay. Why not? Five rooms. Live it up as long as we're spending but this kind of money. But they're not rooms. They're they're. Well, they do have some. Alone. They do oh, have do they? some rooms. Because you yeah. can get your own cabin. I'm going to need my own cabin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I need my own they hotel. I'm sorry. I'm not sure. What do you got, Andy? <laughs> um, I'm guessing 6000 a night. No, not even close. What? M more? They're, no. Their really? highest. 3500 The Island Premier Suite, 3600 Hey. That's just a small. The lowest. Five is what I'm saying. Their lowest is 2500 The Island Escape Suite. So I was right. In April. Okay. Huh. Well, this is one room for two adults. So multiply that by five, and you've got yeah, it's like twelve thousand dollars a night. <laughs> five people to so, go. So you know, mm -hmm. nice. 
It's going to sell a lot of cookbooks. And yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, Hopefully this thing doesn't really... Be... You know what? You could have them do an event and let there you we... stay for free. I mean, that's what go. I would be working All on. All right. <laughs> call, my, call my PR team. Yeah, get, we... get, get your people on that. I like this. The nightly rate is subject to a 12.5% fee. Oh, my which God. Which includes, though... A welcome cocktail. You get your Gumby Slumber there. Mm -hmm. The Gumby Slumber. The Gumby Slumber. Non-alcoholic mini bar beverages. So, Ooh, oh boy, it's like a three hundred dollar oh, can of Coke. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you could have as much Diet Coke as you want. There you go. Yeah. At three hundred bucks a can. Yeah. Fitness center access and water sport amenities. Ooh. So it's, it's so, so all the gonna... normal stuff you should get at a hotel. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> they, they do board. set you up like if you wanted to go fishing, there are just fishing boats with right. fishing poles yep. and yep. bait and everything, and you can just take that. There's also you guys walking down the right. beach that'll take you out for, yeah. you know, <laughs> for a rum and coke. The uh, they still don't allow people there under what is it 18, Andy? I, I think you have to be over 18 to even get on the island. I like like that. Little yeah, those are my island. kind of resorts. Yeah. <laughs> the, thing, the thing that they have that you'll never find anywhere else in the world that I know of are they've got these itty bitty. Key, key deer, deer. Yep. they're yeah. oh, like the God. size of maybe a great dane mm -hmm. oh gosh, and they come right up to you and they'll nibble your watch and they'll nibble your mm -hmm. ear and they'll can them... i please have the lemon out of your drink <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're adorable i want one you feel like you're in a snow white <laughs> yeah. episode right. yeah we were feeding them flower petals well no they would chew on them and then be like i don't like this and yeah. then spit it out and then go to the next one and chew on it and like i don't like this and spit it out like so they're they not very it. bright yeah no well they're deer oh, they're, they're so very sweet my favorite was we watched florida and they're from Florida. A deer yeah. from Florida. We uh, watched a wedding on the beach. So this couple got married. Yep. They had this big arch made entirely of flowers. Mm -hmm. um, once the wedding party cleared out, the deer immediately just ate the entire arch. <laughs> <laughs> Which is yeah. true, yes. What year did we go? It was 10 years uh, ago, wasn't it? was probably 10 years ago, yeah. Is yeah. I married yet? I don't think so. No, we had your it's birthday. It's our anniversary there. today. Oh, oh happy today. anniversary. That's right. So, Alex, you was that 10 or 11? It was your birthday. And I know because she started tearing up because they, they put us out on the beach and put a bunch of rose petals on the yep. ground. And these deer it showed up. Nice. The key deer the showed key, up. And yep. Alex was all teary eyed because they're so cute. I'm a crier. So, <laughs> you're a crier. Cry really, so they're, like, they're like, what, maybe two feet tall? No, they're bigger than that. Not I'd say much, they came up much. to there. I have pictures. I just don't remember when. Key deer, we went. let's see, uh, about two and a half feet. So, yeah, not very tall. True. Not very tall at all. That's a shoulder weight or shoulder height, of course. So, Justin, of course. where did you grow up? I grew up down in Apple Valley, Burnsville Apple area, Valley, in South Burnsville. Suburbs. Yep. And how did you get interested in doing what you're doing and learning all these great things about food and all the rest of it? You know, honestly, it was, I mean, I loved food. Eating was a big part of our, well, everybody eats. <laughs> food was a big part of our family. I mean, you know, but both my grandmothers were great cooks. Um, so, I, I mean, I fell in love with food very early, but doing what I'm doing now was very much a, a late in, later in life, you know, kind of transition. I went to Minnesota State Business Management. My whole life goal plan was on track to go to law school and be a lawyer. Oh, really? So that was, that was one track mind for that for a while until... I finished college and was getting ready for law school and realized that I was going to have to go to school for like at least six more years yep. and yeah. sit in an office and, and be a lawyer. research. Yeah. I, mean, I would love to be, I want to be a trial <laughs> lawyer so bad, but I was done with that. Um, so it was actually Carrie was the one when I was, was actually selling mortgage um, at his mortgage firm he had uh, briefly back in the day when everybody was selling mortgage. Yeah. And I was cold calling people and sitting in a cubicle. And I remember just coming home being like, I, this office life is not going to work. Yeah. I'm about to blow my brains out. <laughs> not, yeah. So he yeah. was like, try culinary school. You've loved food. So moved to Atlanta, went to culinary school and fell in love with it there. And the rest is history. You got all kind of cool uh, cocktails in here, too. A lot of cool cocktails in there. Yeah. Too. This looks like fun. Bourbon my, wife, my wife turns right to the booze page. That's nice. <laughs> I like your photography. Did, did you do it or somebody else? No, no, no. We had a, a local a local girl did it. She was fantastic. Yeah, really nice. Asha, yep. She had a little bio in the back there, but she's amazing. Yeah, pimento cheese. That's a southern thing. They love that pimento cheese. Indeed. It is good. Indeed. Emmy nominee. Ooh, we start with Emmy nominee. That's how the whole thing Look starts. What do you think of that action? I was that was pretty wild. Um, I, yeah, I bet. I, I mean, I when I got the got the call, I was like, "What? You're the right guy?" But no, I'm, it was quite the honor. So no, no question about it. Emmy nominee Justin Sutherland is a nationally recognized celebrity chef and entrepreneur who is the co-host of the syndicated Fast Foodies, True TV, and the Food Network. 
an executive producer and recent uh, Emmy nominee. Emmy shows up twice in the first pair. You know, I, oh, I, 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 I gotta be proud. <laughs> gotta be proud. You gotta lead with that. I like that a lot. Uh, Emmy nominated host of the Taste uh, Taste the Culture of True TV and HBO Max. As a matter of fact, a judge on Guys Grocery Games beat Bobby Flay. Kid, so you're with you, you. You pop up everywhere. Yeah, I mean, if, if there's a food show, I'm I'm on it in some capacity for sure these days. And that's a good thing. That is a good thing. It's way better than kitchens. And how'd you get your first? like television role like was it something you kind of just lucked into or was it something you were looking to do yeah so it's about nine years ago I opened my first restaurant which was handsome hog um and then it was a year after that i remember after service i was sitting in the office my cell phone mm-hmm. rang um and they said this is a producer from food network we've been watching your career do you want to compete on iron chef i thought that it was one of my somebody punking me i i, <laughs> I hung up on them i was like i don't have time for this and, like, hung up, and then Bring back to no, we're serious. Can we schedule a Zoom call? This and that. So they actually reached out to me, um, did a Zoom meeting with them, and a couple week, a couple months later, I was competing on Iron Chef. Did and you find out who recommended you for that? Did they just they watched you? Just happened upon you? Yeah, I mean, now that I'm kind of immersed in that world, <laughs> yeah. you know, they you know they have scouts that do you know, that, that go out, yeah, and pick true. different cities. Sometimes you you know look up who's up and coming, this and that. They'll go eat in town. So at some point, some scout somewhere, some you do something. And by the way, I just looked down and at the bottom it says Justin is currently an Emmy nominee. <laughs> hey, you know what? My PR, my PR <laughs> team is great. I didn't even read the bio, but I trust them. <laughs> uh, Emmy, that's at least three, that's and I got a couple three. more paragraphs All to right. read. So, so you know, I'll, I'll pay them more. This is my favorite <laughs> really? cocktail recipe. I drink and I know things. I just, <laughs> that's the recipe What's that from. I know that. Hands down, our most popular drink at Handsome Hog. I, I've never heard a complaint about it. I've really? heard that line before. What's that from? Uh, well, that's from uh, Game of Thrones. The, right. The short. Yep. What's his name? Yeah. Dig, Dig, Peter Dinglish. Yeah. Tyrion. Tyrion. Yeah, there you go. I've never Peter actually watched the show. Ooh, but. bourbon mussels. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine. Wow. Apparently, we know who's going to be leaving with the uh, cookbook. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Thank God I live with her, so I'll, I'll get to enjoy it. It'll be wonderful. No quite. Look at her. Look how happy you are. I love food. <laughs> I come from a food-driven family. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, you do. That's There's true. some good stories and anecdotes in there for the reading oh. as well. And that just pissed off everybody that's watching YouTube because Catherine, oh, I love to eat, and she weighs about four pounds. <laughs> yeah. I don't weigh four pounds. I already did the first. <laughs> I know. Buy this book. She's <laughs> almost Buy five ten. the book. <laughs> Honest to God, it, it just so now when you were growing up, did yep. you enjoy great foods and all? Is that what drew you to it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think I mean, I came from a very multicultural background. I've got a grandma from Japan um, and Carrie's father. I'm um, sure, you know, relatives from Mississippi, much a lot into soul food and southern food. Um, and then my, my grandfather was a six foot five Viking of a Norwegian. So, I mean, we had lefsa collard greens and sushi on the table wow. at the same time. Wow. Um, so I just, you know, ate a lot of food, um, a lot of different cultures and cuisines and food, you know, just a family meal was just such a big part of growing up. We've always um, kind of been that way too. Yeah, we yeah. have. We've always eaten really weird stuff. Yeah. We oh, yeah. Love I've been eating my, sushi since I was, yeah. I can't even remember when I didn't eat sushi. Yeah. And my kids eat weird stuff. And like anytime I have to feed other children, I forget that kids usually don't right. eat That's very true. much stuff. Ethan's you know, favorite. What do you want, pizza or chicken fingers? And then I know. if I give them, if I say chicken fingers, it's the wrong chicken yep, fingers. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, right. I'm dinosaur sorry. shapes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I don't uh, know. Where you shop, the exact chicken, I tried. I kid. gave you apples, carrots, and chicken fingers, and they're like, it's all wrong. We yeah. did not I go out to carrots. eat, though, at all. I mean, it was. No, oh, you didn't? We, we didn't either. If it, no. was, it was Red Lobster, uh, TGI it's... Fridays. Mm. All, I mean, Olive Garden or Red Lobster, that was like if somebody graduated and was yep. celebrating, that's yeah. like the fine dining place that, you know, and did everybody you got of, one biscuit. Did you have a lot of kids in the family? Yes, yes. I mean, my oldest of seven. Actually. So, yes, that's yeah. why they didn't go out to dinner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, no. It's too much no. work. Too much money. No. And every and time we sat down, Carrie was, they will all have water. There was no <laughs> conversation. <laughs> we got that well, he's a health guy. Yeah, uh, he right. wants you to be healthy. Right. He wanted his wallet. Well, about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that too. That's very, very true. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Oh, God, these days, up. seven people, you order one drink each. What's that, like 150 bucks? At least. Yeah. 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 I have a friend with six children, and I, like, I'd say one. Once a day, think how do they pay for yeah. anything for real? Yeah. Like what? Yeah, for all that stuff. I that watch families great. on the plane going to like Disney World with like like five kids. I'm counting. I'm like, you're this probably, is twenty thousand dollars walking through the door right saved now. Up for ten years. They probably did. So yeah. Once in a lifetime experience. Did. Yep. Yeah. You start saving up when you have the first kid, and then you finally yeah. go. 
12 years later. I've got the Disney fund and the college mm-hmm. fund. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because, you know, growing up the way I did, my father gone, my mother was always working. We hardly ever sat down at the table together because, you know, he was long gone. And like I said, my mother showed up and she was tired and all the rest of it. Uh, she I, it did not me. like to cook, really. And she say. did not she, like to she cook She was around all. food all day as a diner <laughs> yeah. waitress. I think the last thing she wanted to do is cook dinner. Right. But the funny thing about that is, is I'm reading all this about, you know, family sitting down to the table. And, of course, Thanksgiving was a very big deal and all the holiday meals. But there is no better time for a family to sit and talk than at the dinner table. Nope. I mean, is that's that's still true, I'm assuming. I would. I mean, I don't have an immediate family that I sit down. Right. I sit down on the couch and eat by myself. But yes, I think so. I can say yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I just my like, two children, my husband and I, sit down every night and have dinner. And you love most it. of it. Yeah, and like we ask weird questions. Well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's when all the weird stuff comes. We do a lot of out. "Would you rather," and then it turns into conversation. Oh, do you really? Oh yeah, we've always played "Would you rather" because then the kids come up with stuff that doesn't even make any sense. Like, would your I rather be a light bulb or would you rather <laughs> eat a computer? And it's like. <laughs> The light bulb, light bulb. <laughs> yeah. light bulb, light bulb. Whatever the first thing you say. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh yeah, Sage is always like, what? Something about a water bottle if there's one in front of him. Well, wait like, until okay, they're teenagers. You'll get all the information on everybody in the car. Oh, absolutely. And mm-hmm. at, wait. at the dinner table, it's you'll be great. get all the information. You'll be like, they did what? Oh, I know. <laughs> no, have human beings always been that way, or we always heard of you know your religious person? There was the Last Supper, and it was always about sitting at the table eating i've never read the bible maybe i should one of these days but <laughs> there, it's a Some lot about sitting like down and eating breaking and breaking bread, bread. Well, something you have to do exactly multiple right. times a day or else you die so yep. you know but we, it's a very very special time we used to have to do with all those kids we would fight i mean they're obviously so one of the kids was always <laughs> fighting with somebody else yeah. uh so we would have to do what was called unity dinner um, and everybody have a plate of food, and you got to take one bite of food and pass your plate to the left, and we would eat dinner like that. <laughs> really? And, and, and to make us all have to interact with each other until uh, the fight was over. And then hey. did you leave the table then in a much better situation? I think so, because it was so freaking ridiculous. That we <laughs> it was I done. Forgot we forgot what, what we were fighting about. We're just like, you were, yeah. you were, you were Shut crazy. up, or we'll do unity dinner. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember the very first thing you ate that you said, man, I got to get involved in this? Oh, man. That's a tough question. I have to think about it. That's a very tough question. Yeah, you can think about it for a while because you just think about that. For me, my mother made this. And by the way, looking back, it was not very good. But I, we all thought it was wonderful. Oh. That chicken noodle dish my oh. mother used to make. It's so oh. bad. It's really. It was terrible. I mean, God, God bless your mother, but she was no cook. No, she was not a, she she was was like a good over, server. Overdone egg noodles. Oh. Overdone egg noodles. Oh, yeah, so it was just noodles. mushy. Mm-hmm. We were but they were a- homemade. No, no, she no never there's no her way. Her she was noodles. rolling out pasta. No, no she, she was not. used to. Was, <laughs> no, you were never around for that. There's no. 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 We used to roll out, she, and it was about that oh, thick. Okay, so it was like eating oh, a handful. I did not of know dough. that ever happened. <laughs> did. That was when I was young. When I was when I was younger, it must have been then. Yeah, it must have been. <laughs> must have because yeah, there's no way. No, that or she just did. in another lifetime. I remember one time we were on a trip and we were at um, a roadside stand in Texas, and they had these beautiful, you know, those gigantic avocados oh, God, that taste sort of nutty and they're delicious. And we we bought a few and we had made guacamole from it, from it, and it was just so good. So I brought some home, and I gave her one, and she's like, "Oh, thank you." And we were over there two weeks later, and it was in the crisper, all shriveled up because she had mm-hmm. no, she didn't even know what it was. <laughs> Afraid to ask. <laughs> didn't even know what it was. I'm like, I love I'm it. touch the avocado. She's like, what was I supposed to do with that anyway? I'm like, right. eat it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I would have a... never given her an avocado, <laughs> knowing what I know about her. I don't. I wouldn't have been like. Well, she loved when an I, avocado. That's when I didn't that's know weird. that she. And then one time we. She would have us over for dinner, and she would have these roasts, and they would be mm-hmm. about that oh, big because they were so overcooked. <clears throat> and so one time we're like, oh, you know what? It's probably just because she buys really cheap, you know, cuts of meat because she's used to being frugal. Right. So we bring over this, like, really nice, expensive roast, and sure enough, it was <laughs> the size of a cat. It was, she didn't want any flavor or no. juice in there whatsoever. Not jerky. More. <laughs> it was more like a jerky. That's just, she was not a good cook. Well, people have to understand, too, it's like walking down Plymouth Avenue with my friends when I was a kid. It was never, say, we should stop and buy some avocados. 
Yeah. We didn't have any avocados in North Minneapolis. Right. I'm sorry. No, it didn't happen. Rich? They grow on trees. They're not. That, that was that definitely gross. the sign of the rich family oh, growing up. Like if they had the bowl of avocados <laughs> on the table. <tablet. laughs> Mom, I'm having dinner at their house tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can go to Chipotle and get a burrito, but you better not get guac. They're five for three dollars at Trader Joe's. Sometimes they're cheap. Now, 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 yeah. now. Yeah. it's yeah. a lot that's easier true. to that's get an true. avocado in Minnesota than it was. That's yeah. true. That's is this true. something that's continuing? And uh, this is, you know, kind of an odd question, but I do hope the family dinner is still happening. But I don't know if it is anymore. People are all headed off in these different directions. I will say that. So I have a seven-year-old daughter and a five-year-old son. And my daughter does competition dance and there are people that, who, I mean, their kids are doing something every single day right they are, are, yeah. of the week because they're yeah. in dance and they're also in soccer and they also play violin and then they also snowboard and they also do this. And I'm just like, when do you have time to just sit and talk to your kid? And they're in school wow. all day, five yeah. days a week. And I'm just like, when are you just sitting there eating dinner? Like, what do you eat? Just microwave stuff i don't know because there's no time to make anything decent mm. like i tell people what i make for dinner and yeah. they're all like what <laughs> you have to prep yeah yeah you you do a meal planning i don't think a lot of people do that i think a lot of no. people just nuke something just eat yeah, yeah. like just, 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 just there needs yeah. to be food. i used to pretty much yeah. always make dinner yeah oh well, you always, always did yeah. Always. yeah and that's yeah. what I, I i'd say i make dinner at least yeah. five days a week. i never made breakfast because nobody would eat breakfast and nope. lunch we you guys were gone yet. so yeah dinner we i I pretty much cooked all the time. Yep. Okay, Alex, you got to tell Justin the story about what your kids said leaving Seavers. Oh, um, <laughs> you know, Seavers Fall Festival. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, my daughter, her name is Fawn, asked to have an ear of corn on the way out. And I was like, hey, can I have an ear of corn? We'll get you an ear of corn. And she was eating it. I was like, how's the corn? She went, oh, it's like heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and then my five-year-old son was like, well, can I have a bite? And he took a bite. And he's like, wow, it is like him. <laughs> a piece like, of corn. It's like a badly That's written a, ad. It yeah. is a badly From written ad. This corn is an like ear of no. corn. So it's like, you know, an ear of corn. You got to love it. Yeah, the simple pleasures, though. Exactly. I mean, oh, yeah, absolutely. And it was like the fun, because that's the thing with food, you know? It's like the fun day doing all the fall things, and they were in a giant pit of right. corn. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Like the sun's out and it's so fun and you're with your family and then you leave and you're eating and you're of corn and you're like this is just great. It could have been though. Like, have you ever had a perfect like oh, when it's sweet and it crunches yeah. and pops yes. in your yeah. mouth? Yeah, Good I mean there is that's corn. a chef that's talking right there. Yeah. I mean, sometimes yes. corn can be like oh, yeah. it's absolutely. But it's like I feel like experience adds to food so sure. much. You For know, sure. apple tastes better at the orchard. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, that is true. The, yeah. the fresher, the better. Absolutely. Right. Uh, yeah, but I do hope that people are getting back to going, but they're not. You said the kids are just too busy. They don't, not a lot of family meals I, anymore. There are food people that are like, I will make dinner and we mm -hmm. will sit. But right, then there right. are, everybody else is just running around mm -hmm. doing, I don't well, know I, what. I grew up Jimmy with John's in, tons of my friends. Their kitchen table was never an inch of open space ever. So oh, they really? clearly never ate mm -hmm. dinner right. at the table mm -hmm. together. Oh, sure. Yeah. And that was 30 years ago. There's a lot of families who are just never like that. They don't just sit down at the table and yeah, they sit eat. in front of the TV and eat. Well, and it's yeah. like you have to... A or lot they of people, eat in their rooms, whatever. Yeah, a lot of people mm. just don't care that much about food. No. You know, who are like, these people? I, I, I don't understand at all. Like, our, I have an aunt that said if she could just take a pill every right. day and never eat, she would. I'm like, what, what? is wrong with that's, you? Yeah. But like what Tom said, it's, it's more about the food, though. It's that it one is. of the only times a day where you sit yep. down with your family, yeah. you all living independent lives you look yes. each other in the eye you sure. either air your grievances tell your stories you know figured that's how you you know have some sort of family bond right yeah well the great thing about that is let's say the world sucks like you read the news we are all hate one let's another say the world sucks yeah let's say the world sucks <laughs> you know so to to spend time with little kids who say this tastes like heaven right. to sit down with friends to sit here around this table talking I mean, that's what life should be like. Sit down and have a little dinner together. Calm down. Mm -hmm. Calm down. We ever going to get there? Uh, I mean, no. right now? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> it's not I, looking good. It's not, I don't know. I think well, we there's just keep think, expanding your own circle. Well, there's that right. bring whole, people in. I don't know who said it, but if you want to change the world, start at home. Right? Yeah. 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 I don't know. I just it's such an important thing. Food and, and well, meals, not just food, but meals are a very, very important thing. And it seems to me I, like, Tevin, do you now your family doesn't live in town? No. Nope. 
So do you get together once in a while with family and just go have dinner with them? Not as often as we should. Yeah, but yeah it's definitely yeah. it's more just yeah communication. But my family, it, like whenever we do get together, like my mom and probably from her Amish heritage as well, like cooks a ton of food. So I it's keep always forgetting your mom was Amish or is Amish. Yeah, like well was I Why guess. Did you get hit by a wagon? <laughs> no, I was scared of horses. So, like, <laughs> no, so it they, didn't work. <laughs> but yeah, like every family gathering, like is whether it's holidays or just random birthdays or yeah. days of the week, we get together. And it's always spent a hundred percent almost in the kitchen cooking mm. and things like that. So all of my childhood memories revolve around food. Like I should really be that's one pounds. That's <laughs> like, I should be here. Do you like to cook? Oh, I love cooking. Yeah. And like I've like anytime I have friends over and I like I'll always cook and like you actually like take the time to like you don't just make your pasta like you actually make pasta sauce instead of taking it from a can. It's like very therapeutic. I'm just gonna say that it's so therapeutic. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you, you always you, well, you, you like can. yeah you would yeah, chop no. vegetables and I'm like just use the food processor yuck with and you're like it's more it's meditative <clears> therapy yeah. yeah like I I we were given a KitchenAid mixer for our wedding and I we didn't register for it but somebody was like this is something you give people when they right. get married and I've mm -hmm. used it like five times because I'm like I love stirring things yeah. like when I make meringue and stuff I'll use it because who wants to do that yeah, sure. I like but, bringing out all the hardware right? yeah you love hardware <laughs> and like kitchen gadgets and Mix I'm like it, no juice it I let them all out I'm like I have one large bowl and a spoon and I'm happy I don't know mm -hmm. I don't yeah because I find it it's like meditative mm -hmm. yeah and, and even then when you like mess up you're like yesterday I made this like try to make a new gnocchi a la rosa sauce dish and yeah. it turned out very average yeah. and i was Aww. very disappointed but i was like it's still like when you create something it's like yeah, yeah that experience of cooking it from start to finish i still felt good about it, even though it didn't i'm like thinking what you could right. do for just next and time it's a, yeah. 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 it's a learning process yeah, yeah. yeah. just yeah. put yeah. pepper flakes in it yeah. That's yeah. 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 Add, more, add more garlic that fixes everything Catherine, by coincidence by the way uh just last night Kath and I were eating dinner and I could only eat about half what you put out. She gave me way too much food. So I said, well, I'll just, I'll just eat the other half of it tomorrow night for dinner. And she said to me last night, Tom, you do realize that you could eat three times a day, 365 days a year, Italian food. And yes. it's true. Yes. I could yeah. eat you pasta are, yeah. every meal of every day. 100%. <laughs> I love that stuff. It and is, Italians seem so, so healthy for all the pasta they eat and cigarettes they smoke. They <laughs> they're they're <laughs> beautiful. They live forever. <laughs> and all they do is drink wine, smoke cigarettes, and eat pasta. It's, so I think they got something. There's something, <laughs> there's something to it. Well, Japan smoking is huge in Japan. Oh, yeah. Yet their yeah. lung cancer incidence is quite low, and people can't figure out why. It's the, it's, I think it's the rest of their life. So my grandma's from Japan, so we get over mm -hmm. there quite often. Mm -hmm. I mean, every Everybody in my family over there smokes. Yep, but everyone smokes. They, they have that vice that Japan will always smoke, but they also have such other, so many other things in their lifestyle that I think counteract that. I they mean, walk everywhere. Their, their physical activity, their meditation, mm -hmm. their, mm -hmm. you know, their work cycle, just everything else. So maybe that, you know, off, offsets the cigarettes. I don't yeah. know. But they're so pretty your, healthy too. Your grandmother is from Japan? Yeah, my mom was born there. My grandma's from Japan. Your mom, your mom was born there as well. Yep. Okay. Do they, because generally, from what I understand, I have a friend that's in Japan right now. And the Japanese don't really like it if you stay too long. That's what I've heard from everybody. That's so it's true. I, I mean, I guess uh, I've always had family there. So, yeah, so it's yeah, no, they, yeah, they definitely don't want you to come uh, move there. For sure. <laughs> like, come see Mount Fuji, ride visit. the bullet train, yeah. but then get out of here. Yeah. Then go home. Yeah. Give us your so, tourist dollars and leave. Yeah. So that is true. They don't want you staying there. Their population. It's, it's phenomenal. Yeah, there's no space. There's no, yeah, there's no room for extra <laughs> people. I mean, yeah. well, I suppose that's true. Yeah. Well, it depends that's on where you go. True. Tokyo, absolutely. Is not. that where you go, Tokyo? I mean, we've been all over. I mean, but yeah, I mean, you definitely got to see Tokyo. But I prefer more the countryside. Kyoto is probably my favorite place there. Well, Kyoto. Yeah. I've always said that if I go to Japan, I want to go to the country, particularly Hokkaido. Yep, Hokkaido has been there, amazing. Mm -hmm. It's crazy riding the bullet train from like Kyoto to Tokyo, where you go from like the year three thousand, and then it like takes you back in time to temples and yep, geisha, right. and it's just wild the dichotomy. Did you ever do any of the temple pilgrimages? Uh, uh, I don't know if it was a pilgrimage. What, what do you mean? Well, like there's this one, um, there's a famous route uh, in the south. It's like many, many miles that you're supposed to walk on foot. Did not do that. None of that. No, I'm more of a train. Uh, <laughs> yeah, most, <laughs> train I'm, I'm most train. 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 You lost me at miles train. on foot. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have to go. No. Oh, that's right. You got to hit so the road. Go to oh, my God, Alex. You're going to be late. No, if I leave here by 11. 
40, I'm fine. Okay. So I go, then I just go right to school. Sometimes I want to leave early and I want to go home and. Oh, like, that's why you do drop it. my Tupperware off from the lunch I ate in my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. All right. We'll see you. I don't, I don't know about tomorrow, but the, this no, weekend. We're going to Duluth. MBA oh, that's weekend. right. You're going up. I mean, that's right. You're going to be gone the whole weekend. Yeah. Duluth. Duluth. Going up to Duluth. And yeah, like our big plans are where are we eating when we are there so where are you gonna eat <laughs> before you go you gotta tell us where you're gonna eat um scenic cafe oh um, i was just gonna so the amazing. scenic is, right. time I go north scenic is wonderful so that's, that's two harbors right yeah i think, I think it's, it's even like in past, 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 past two harbors, past two a, little harbors a little bit yeah, yeah. it is a great yeah. place it's amazing you have, yes. to go, you have to go to okay. omc what omc it's a barbecue place i would not go there i'm a vegetarian but your um, family isn't but but your family isn't <laughs> right that's not a ball about <laughs> you know, so bread and beans. <laughs> yeah. um Duluth and Cafe okra, your family can eat the real food another good one amazing at sarah's table is a favorite of mine and i we always had italian fitters. one that's right on the what like oh yeah the water. Which, we tried to Something. go there last time we went there was impossible it's really small so. but it's what about really valentine i can't think of valentine that's the one we tried to go to. and then oh, you couldn't get in no um, why don't you call me i don't want to do that why not and i always go to fitgers and get the wild rice oh fitgers yeah really good. It it is is good. Good. it's like called perfectly like, cooked onions and mushrooms and wild rice where do we go like grandma's or something like that grandma's like uh yeah you go and you have a weird Grandma's is where the kids got to sit at the bar. Yeah, they got to sit, they let them sit, them sit at the bar, and then yeah. everywhere we went, like, can we sit at the bar? I'm like, no, no, no. no. you're not legally only allowed. allowed to. To. <laughs> and maybe Wisconsin. Oh, yeah, definitely yeah. Wisconsin. <laughs> okay, well, it's nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Yeah, have a good rest of the show. We well, are going to do it. There's no doubt about it. Do you think, uh, Justin? I'm just a, a tick or two older than you, so I'm talking about a different era. The food in Minnesota used to suck when I was a kid. It was not good. And I don't know what that was all about. The restaurants, there were maybe two in the entire Twin Cities right. that were any good. What happened? You know, I, I, I don't know what happened or where that switch happened. But, I mean, we have one of, you know, arguably one of the one of the greater food scenes no in, doubt in about. the country. It's and definitely it's, changed for I the mean, better, thank God. Changed. I mean, from... Yeah, from the restaurant concepts to the chefs, just to that whole community. I mean, it's it is fantastic. I don't know what changed. I mean, generally, you know, we Midwest can kind of fly over for a while. Maybe we're just a little bit behind the behind the eight ball, yeah, but you know, yeah. we're always a little bit behind. You know, New York, LA, when things happen. So I mean, maybe it was just us catching up or being on our own pace. But right now, things are amazing. They, are, I mean, we had Murray's, which is still there. Thank yep. God. Charlie's was phenomenal, yep. but now it's a tower. They tore it down. There were a few good restaurants. Yeah. And some little neighborhood restaurants, like uh, the Chinese restaurant up on Broadway in North Minneapolis was really good. So there were places to mm -hmm. eat. But now it's, I think the food here is every bit as good as anywhere else I've ever been. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Which I think is great. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. <clears throat> I was just going to say, is a local scene because they are, I feel like anytime I go through my phone trying to figure out a place to eat, it's like, oh, I got a, I have a list a mile long of places mm -hmm. I need to try. Is the local scene among chefs like more competitive or is it more collaborative? Like what? No, I would say it is probably one of the most collaborative and, you know, family unit, you know, group of chefs mm -hmm. there, there is. I mean, you know, back when I was first coming up, it was it was competitive, that, but I think things have changed. But it's like we have such just a supportive and, and connected, Good. you know restaurant industry in general here That's i mean nice everybody does pop-ups at each other's restaurants helps each other and it's yeah it's great let me ask you a question because i did it again on monday night um but my mother was a, a server at a diner for 53 years I yeah mean, that's what she did the whole time i was a little kid busted her ass worked really hard no doubt about it so when i go to a restaurant if i enjoyed it i like to stop by and talk to the manager mm -hmm. and i was at baccio on uh, on monday night okay. <clears throat> with some friends and as we we're leaving, I, I walked up and I said, are you the manager? And she kind of backed up because I think whenever anybody asks her, are you the manager? It's never good it's to complain. <laughs> it's to complain. Yep. I said, are you the manager? She goes, yes, I am. I said, well, I want you to know that Natalie did a great job and the food was terrific. And uh, I just wanted you to know that mm -hmm. she could. Could you come back more often? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it's a, she was shocked. Well, I think I did that. we're still I mean, especially <clears throat> management and, and servers, people that are customer face facing in restaurants are still suffering from a, a lot of PTSD from oh. that pandemic time. I mean, <laughs> yeah. too, where people lost their damn minds about how they how they treated people, the expectations of restaurants. I mean, it, it got pretty, pretty bad. I mean, we lost a lot of people, a lot of, yeah. a lot of people in management <clears throat> were like, I am done with that industry. 
Um, so yeah, it's understandable that you probably flinched a little bit and then was very uh, pleasantly surprised <laughs> by your, but I always do that because of what my mother did. I yeah. always appreciated the work she did. If it's good, particularly if it's really good, I would always tell the manager that server does a great job. It's good food. You should be proud of yourself. And yes, I will be back. Right? <laughs> yeah, it was right. one of those deals. So I guess not a lot of people do that. Say, hey, no, I'll enough. tell you how what a bad job you do, but they'll never tell you what a good mm -hmm. job you do. Right. Why? Right. I've never understood that. And and why with unless you're offering, you know, constructive criticism, why when it's like bad? I just don't even see the point of yeah, just complaining really. just yeah. for the point of complain or just going online to say, hey, this sucked. You know, well, I mean, we want constructive criticism. We want to know if your meal was so we can correct it next time. Sure. But if you're if your entire, you know, end game with that is just to yell at somebody and that's why, why that side either so what i want to do once i get really old is i want to start doing that like complimenting the chef say hey can i please speak to the chef right so the chef comes out i tell him how great my meal is and then i slyly palm him a one dollar bill <laughs> <laughs> they'll chase you out and say clearly you need this more than I do. <laughs> that's, that's so true. Funny. how is tipping going and how is that going and you people still tipping uh as far as i know yeah i Yes, people are still. I mean, well, it depends. A lot of you know restaurants have dabbled in the no tip thing. Yeah, you know, adding the service charge. Yep. It's still that's still some uncharted territory. But when we talk about outside of restaurants, I think tipping has gotten out of control. I think now oh, that God, yeah. now that everybody has those customer facing POSs and they flip, them. they flip the screen, you're like, I literally just bought a pack of gum at the gas station. Why am I tipping? Like, why do your yeah. screen say? Tip yeah, the before? default <laughs> options are like 20, 25, and thirty percent. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, right. It's not five, it's little, ten, fifteen. Yeah. No, yeah, you're right about that. Remember, um, Ann Ahmed, she has lap 14 of your. Oh, yeah. Thing. No, yeah. I know her very well. Oh, she's, yeah, she's great. I love yeah. her. But she was she's telling us person. a story about somebody came into her restaurant at lap 14 on Highway 55 in, is that Golden Valley yeah. still? Or yeah. Plymouth? Mm -hmm. Anyway, she said, "Oh, so these guys came in. They're oh, Tom Bernard was talking about this restaurant, so we're gonna we're gonna eat here on his recommendation." They sat at the bar, and they ordered all this stuff, and they ate every scrap, mm -hmm. every scrap, and then tried to get out of paying for it because the food was so terrible. Mm. Oh, just, people are the like, first of all, don't that, drag huh? your name. Yeah, thanks a thanks, lot. Thanks for dragging my and name. Then they, into and it. then they eat it all and say it was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> that is well, wild. That's the thing. It's like a very clear lie at that what point. Right? Just, yep. I mean, you please. Ate all of this and yeah, ate it? yeah. If it was so bad, what were you doing eating it? People well, then are again, there is a phenomenon, a well known phenomenon on the internet where people online will review games. And it'll be like hours played, five thousand rating, bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I've dedicated what? my life to this yeah. game. I've playing this it. game eight hours a day for the past three years. If you hate it so much, that but people wild. people will do that. Yep. So there is that. Oh, um, some people are just a pain in the ass. My yeah, favorite, my favorite complaint from people like working in the service industry as a manager was like, you get people that would change the recipe essentially to the dish. They'd be like, oh, I want it without this, or can I substitute yeah, this yeah, in? Yeah. And then they go, well, that tasted horrible. Yeah, well, that's why our chef told you to make it this way instead of the way you wanted it made. Oh, yeah. man. We have a question from the chat. Oh, very good. Uh, she says, if you wish to answer, um, can you tell us how you are doing after your accident? Absolutely. Thank, uh, thank you for asking. I'm, I'm assuming we're talking about my, my accident. Yes. Yeah. No, yeah. Just kidding. Uh, no, you're you, talking about me hiring Kevin. What an accident that was. <laughs> That's, well, it's coming to an end. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, no, thank you. Thanks for asking, Wendy. Um, uh, doing fantastic. Um, I had some amazing uh, surgeons and... You know, it was a rough, rough year, but I'm, I mean, I'll set for a couple of cosmetic things we'll do down the road. Pretty, pretty fully recovered. I'm still doing some physical therapy on my arm, but uh, I am doing miraculous because it should have and could have been a lot worse. Yeah. It, Would you drink too much and fall down the stairs? Oh, so yeah. For Catherine or anybody else that <laughs> yeah. doesn't know you, she a clearly boating, doesn't have yeah. any There's a boating accident. About. Yes. Yeah. It was oh. just, just a little over a year ago today, July 3rd of last year. Uh, was on yeah boating accident took a oh. propeller to the face oh, oh jesus what? oh yeah. yeah well it didn't cut you up too badly I don't you, know, want, you want to see were you I'll swimming you in the it, and somebody ran no i was dry i was i was driving my boat um prop was running but we were kind of we were idling and another boat came by and kind of made a wake and at the same time a gust of wind came and kind of blew my hat and i just reached and was a little off to reach to see if i could catch the hat it was a little off but it balanced my right foot and when that wake oh. came it oh. took me oh, over the side God. The, uh, oh my yeah. God! Boat came tail end around, and the propeller. When I was swimming back up, Ugh. propeller right to yeah, the face. Yeah, boat propellers right scare the, the crap out of me. As soon as yeah. you said boat accident, my heart just dropped because <clears> I have <throat> a friend who had. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> 
You look amazing. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> you look amazing. See that How yeah. do you look this, this good <laughs> after that accident? Jesus. Thanks. No, I got the technology. Sure, well, wait a second. Yeah. Spooky I can't season. even see anything. No, I got a little scar right across, but no. But you not. can't. I no, like. No. I can't see it from here. I mean, no. I mean, yeah. I can't see your scar. And that was just last well, year. Four, yeah, that's yeah, about fourteen amazing. months ago. Wow. Did they think you were gonna you're gonna die? Oh, 100 percent. I would think yeah, by looking 100%. at that, you look like you're gonna die, man. Well, I, mean, I, I spent, remember it was what three three weeks in the ICU, but a couple months in the hospital. Oh my God. Woo. You are lucky. See, yet another reason I believe in God. Yes. <laughs> but that, that's you got to be eternally grateful that you were tough enough to get through that. I mean, yeah, great, yeah, great, grateful. I mean, that's one thing I think when you come out of something like that, especially when the doctor's like, you were probably supposed to die. I mean, people don't walk away from stuff like that. Yep. Um, yeah. So yep. Where were you? Uh, on the St. Croix. Oh, okay. yeah, where we've, I've been boating for, for my, the last eight years. For my friend lost her legs yeah. in a boating accident. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, so a when lot you of, said lot boating accident, I'm instantly like, oh my God. How's she doing now? She's, well, she's been a double amputee now for, geez, many, many, many years. She's doing fine. Yeah. Was that Andy was trying, trying to find her legs? Remember that? Yep. Yeah, I kids, sure kids do. do that all the time. It's one of my earliest legs. memories. Andy actually. Went under. You were like two or three years old, maybe. Yeah. I would have had to have been. Yeah, kids think older that, than that kids think when they see a double amputee that they're, they're sitting on their legs because they, mm -hmm. you know, they just don't know. Oh, right. right. Yeah. So, we're out for so dinner. They're, one they're always like looking, looking under the chair legs. and stuff, oh. looking for her legs. And she's like, I'm used to it. It's fine. Yep. Yeah. She handled it very, very well. Yeah. Andy went under the table to find, try to find her legs. Yeah. yeah. No, you couldn't have been. He, I think Two he was around three. four. Was he around I must four? Have been, I remember it, so yeah. I must have been at least. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Probably at least yeah. four. So how do you look at that now? It's a little bit off topic, yeah. but to have gone through that, I mean, has it changed your faith in mankind at all? Or it's, I mean, it's it, something like that changes you. Sure. I mean, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I mean, in so many different levels. Uh, you know, you speak of gratitude, and it's just, you know, you just yeah. look at life in a totally different, totally different way. Um, you know, grateful for every day. Um, you know, the amount of support and people that came that helped out, you know, financially. I mean, it's healthcare is insane. Um, oh, but I mean, an accident God. like it that, is. I mean, you have no idea. Um, you know, you're pushing a million dollars on, you know, in, in a minute, in medical bills. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so, I mean, just everything, just thank yous all around and, you know, feeling uh, lucky you. to be alive. And you just kind of take every day a little bit differently these days and appreciate the small things and, yep. and the people. So do you ever get in like a, somebody's pissing a money called me the wrong pronoun? You go, really? Look at this. <laughs> yeah, shut up. I know, right? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> There's no, I mean, that's, that is great. Do you think your, your toughness got you through it as well? It, what, Cause something else had to happen there. You should not have lived through that. Oh no, absolutely not. I mean, it's, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think, and you know, you find out what you're, what you're capable of. I think you, you know, you maybe have a rough idea of who you are just based upon the amount of life that you've lived. But until yeah. you're in a actual, you know, life and death, near death, you know, situation and just the, you know, the toughness it takes, you know, mentally and physically to get get through that. And I think the mental part is is honestly bigger because, I mean, once right. you once you realize you're going to live, once you realize, you know, they're going to sew you back up and this and that, I mean, the stuff that goes through your mind when you're laying in a hospital bed for, for two plus uh. months. Um, just, you know, you reflect yep. on a lot of things, yeah. a lot of, puts you know, things in perspective, puts so many things in perspective. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's some toughness and there's some, some learned toughness, I guess. And I bring this up on the show quite often because I don't know if there is a God or there isn't a God. I don't disbelieve. I, I don't Didn't believe. You just say, this is why I believe in God. Yeah. Like five minutes it's ago. Fluid, but that's fluid, what I'm going to say situation. again. I don't know if you had to jump on what I was saying there because, mm. you know, it had some great impact, but no, it has no value <laughs> at all. But no, I, I would have to believe that if I went through what you went through, I'd lean a little more toward there is a God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, there's, yeah, if there's a God or there's something. And yeah, something. There, there, there's yeah. something. I mean, and outside of that, I mean, it really... You know, and just the the gods in all of us, the the angels and the people that were there that just you know did so much to help get me back to where they I all went today. in the lake and game went after you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I that's was cool. I had you know it's eight friends on on the boat with me. Oh, and a couple okay. of them jumped oh, in. Oh, that's lucky. And, yeah, very mm. lucky. And so I mean, a lot of things fell into place that you know that got, made it made it happen. But yeah, there's there's definitely something because nobody should have walked away from that. No, there's no question about it. Okay, I'll change the subject to get it. Because Catherine's going to tear up if we don't. <laughs> Thank God. So in Japan, yes, I have always heard. I've never been in Japan. Yep. Nope. I've always heard that a lot of places in Japan consider it an insult if you try to tip them. 
Yeah, they don't do any any tips in Japan. That's they're, what I've heard. It's like that in the most of the world. Most, oh, is it really? Really? Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. Europe yeah. is there's almost no tipping. Well, they they, in Europe. they include the service charge and mm-hmm. they're, they're included. In their checks usually. Well, yeah. it's, it's not even a service charge. It's just they pay their employees a living wage. Yeah. It's not like here's half of what you should make. Now go hustle for the rest. <laughs> <laughs> it that is, is a very strange concept. concept. Yeah. It's like such a weird. It it's a such a weird concept. concept. Yeah. I mean, I. If somebody does something above and beyond and you want to give them something extra, that's on you. But mm-hmm. but yeah, in Japan, I mean, they pay people very well. And I think that's that's why every I mean, they just put perfection in all of their jobs. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter if you're pumping gas, if you're working at the grocery store, or if you're, you know, mm-hmm. running a million dollar company. I mean, yeah. everybody puts that much effort and takes that much pride in their job. You go to a Japanese grocery store. I mean, it's absolutely insane. I mean, every piece of fruit and everything is just lined up perfectly. And the oh, person really? stocking that fruit take so much pride in their job and making their whatever their piece of world is you know perfect and you know they strive for perfection and everything well they start that from a very young <laughs> age uh they clean up their classrooms after class yep. as kids they do the they, they don't have janitors yeah no no, jan- no schools. janitors what? the kids sweep the kids sweep mom really right yep. do everything before they go home it's all the kids every day i'm gonna do that on this show from now on. <laughs> I, people would leave a lot less messes you're the right youngest around. person here Get after that vacuum. I remember when I was really <laughs> mad at this. There was this very popular girl in school, and she was just an asshole. <laughs> she was okay. a horrible person. Okay. And everybody loved her. I don't know why. And I remember her throwing garbage on the floor. Mm. And I remember saying, hey. And she said, we have a janitor. I'm like, why do people like you? <laughs> right? I just don't understand. <laughs> Oh, but like like, anybody likes you. Even if you do have a janitor, people now have to walk around your garbage until the janitor gets exactly, to it. And, yeah. and that's the best case scenario. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. Yeah. No, yes. I got to ask you a question both. And again, just because you, you brought it up earlier, you guys consider yourself lucky in that you have a view of the world from a different place because you, uh, Tevin, are from a couple of different cultures you're from mm. like three different cultures mm-hmm. do you think you're you're lucky to have been in a position to be in the position you are not having to go i'm one thing and this is the best thing in the world you're many different things that's got to be a great position in your head for me i mean absolutely and, and i think i think that uh you know that comes to light maybe a little bit later in life you know i think you know especially i think things mm-hmm. are probably different now with kids i think people have a lot broader and accepting yeah, view. Yeah. you know as, as a kid you know 40 years ago, you know, not, you know, every, you're white, you're black or this or that. And it was just one thing. Yeah. yeah. Everybody was one thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not having that one thing to fit into was maybe slightly confusing. You didn't know at the beginning, but then after you, after this light bulb goes off and you're like, wait, no, I'm everything. And I, you know, you, I I love it. I think it's, we were very, very blessed, you know, to be able to grow up with just, you know, a different worldview from traveling and just having experienced so many cultures at a young age and having so many different cultures within me, um, mm-hmm. that I can pull from. I, I couldn't imagine uh, being just one thing. Well, that's what's so wonderful about food. It's like you, you can really share that with anybody. Right. Yeah. Every yeah. culture's got their own yeah. food. Yeah, and everybody sure. likes to, sh- well, a lot of people like to share that. Yeah. That's Not great. everyone. So, Devin, your take on Oh, yeah. I mean, I agree 100%. And as a young kid, like when you don't really understand like why you might be getting made fun of because you're, you know, quote unquote different. And then, but once that light bulb goes off and you're like, Oh no, actually I'm dope as hell. Like the things that everybody <laughs> is making fun of me for, like I'm way cooler than what you're making me seem to be. So I, once that light bulb goes off, yeah, it's it's a lot better. When it's and, kids, the dumbest things will upset you so much. Getting made fun of mm-hmm. for things like I remember this one time I was at camp and this kid walks up to me and he's like, Are you a dude? And I'm like, I sometimes and he's like a dude means an elephant's butt hair yeah and i, and I was pissed off for like six months after that. <laughs> for six months it, it was a, it was a pimple on a horse's butt when i was exactly like, oh, like it was just not even real i don't even know it's a real thing but oh, like, my God. You're a dude. just the injustice of this kid calling me this thing for right. no reason i was I so mad for that. so long and but that's how kids are it's like you know the littlest things will make you so mad for so long and then eventually you realize it's like what does it even matter? Right. I grew up in a very white neighborhood. Almost everybody was Catholic. And yet I was tall, skinny, and I had red hair. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I was just like, the, I was the weird one yeah. in my neighborhood. It's like, oh my God, yeah. look at her. Oh, I do remember when I was a little boy, because my, my father was pretty much English and my mother was German. And when the families would get together, they did not get along. Hmm. Like we are German. Well, I guess oh. World War One, World War One, World War Two. Yeah, back in the uh, World States, War Two, yeah. England and uh, Germany 
very, very bad. Uh, yeah. And and I know we're about to wrap up here shortly, but yes. Justin, so you obviously own multiple restaurants in the Twin Cities, but there is one that is no longer with us, sadly. Side Chicks. Yes. I'm devastated. It was <laughs> the devastated. greatest. Like over the pandemic, there are restaurants that you know, obviously shut down. Muddy Waters was one that yeah. was like, oh, that sucks. I really like right. that place. But Side Chicks, it was like the greatest chicken sandwich in Minnesota. And it that's was, what you told me. You also and, me. Yeah. And it was here one day and gone the next. Mm-hmm. And so is there any hope that, <laughs> that we can get a revival? Sandwich. Do you have a recipe laying around that I can have? Well, speaking of uh, <laughs> recipes, uh, I can get my new cookbook, Northern Soul. Um, <laughs> no, but actually we, Show uh, the picture, Catherine. so uh, <laughs> side chick was a, was a consulting deal I did. Um, okay. So, I mean, I was a part of it for six months and then I had moved on after that and I did the recipes and everything. They didn't end up making it. But if you do any traveling, we just all of those recipes. We just opened Northern Soul Fried Chicken in the airport. Yeah. Okay, um, oh, and excellent. it is um, go all it is all of those yeah. sandwiches uh, that were on Perfect. the side chick menu. So now we are we are in the airport. We just opened on in the main the terminal in, or whatever yeah, it's in, called in the, now in, in the main mall in the main terminal. Do you know where uh, if you've been to the airport recently, um, where Smack Shack used to be? Yeah. So it's the old Smack Shack. So oh, okay. We took Smack Shack closed. We took over that. I didn't know they closed. What's that? Just that one. I didn't know they closed. They, well, just the airport. Just but the airport. I, what, what, I wonder why that would have happened. A lot of people what? can't staff anybody. It wasn't staffing. No, no, it's just, I think, especially coming through pandemic and then with the financial times the world's in, it's hard to convince somebody to buy it for, and in the airport, yeah, I mean, a $42 lobster roll at the That's airport. That's a good point. Yeah. I That's mean, it's, right. you know, it's yeah. $38 at the restaurant. You know, you jack that up to airport prices. It's just... Yeah, they got all those fees and taxes. All those fees and taxes for airports. So I think, I mean, they told me that was part of it. I don't know everything, but either way, Mm -hmm. I love Smack Jack, but I'm happy they closed in the airport because now we got (laughs) got Northern Soul Fried Chicken. (laughs) Thank you so much for coming in. So great because I I had no idea that you were the son of a friend of mine. Yeah. It's so great to have you in. Tevin says wonderful things about you, and he usually just rips people to shreds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, you know, yeah. Well, that's his brand. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> that's his <laughs> brand. Off brand for I, make it, I make an exception for good food. So. Hey, Catherine, do you happen to have the book you could hold up to the screen one I, more time? Okay, one more time. One more time. And there's the Wendy book. already there's bought the it, title. by the way. I'll say we're Wendy. Wendy. You've already there's sold one. Andy. Said, Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> uh, where do they go to buy the book? Um, I mean, most most major bookstores around town, but Amazon, um, Amazon is the is the least expensive and fastest way to get it. Isn't um, it amazing? You know, you can you order it now. Amazon will get it to you tomorrow, and it's cheaper than any of the bookstores. I mean, although support your local bookstore, but yeah, you can you yep. can you can get it pretty much anywhere. Good. All right, we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Where where should we go? Which restaurant of yours should we go to? You know, honestly, I would uh, my new restaurant, Big E in St. Paul on Grand Avenue. Um, it's a sandwich shop, uh, an egg sandwich shop, but not, not breakfast. We just put an egg on everything, but we have, uh, amazing sandwiches. So and where is it? It's on, it's right next to Grand Old Creamery. Oh on, yeah. On yeah. Grand Avenue. Oh yeah. yeah Cause Andy yeah. used to live over there. I sure did. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, definitely right go there. check out Big E and, uh, Northern Soul Fried Chicken when you're at the airport. We'll give it a whirl. Thank you so much for awesome. your time today. Thank you guys so much. Thanks. Tevin, good job, pal. You I'm keep this right. up. I do all right. <laughs> you all right. All right. Talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Every time I get to see it reminds me how you talk in my door.